Well, guess what? We're live. Welcome to the Smart Hustle Survive and Thrive Growth Summit. My name is Ramon Ray, your host for the next five hours, not two hours, not one hour, but five hours. And I'm so deliriously excited to have you join me today. Some of you will be joining us for all five hours. Hello from Massachusetts. Susan Shapiro, what's up, girl? Some of you are going to be with us for five hours. Some of you will be in here for two minutes. Some of you will be in here for an hour. Some of you will be watching this in the replay. We are so glad you're here. This whole event is all about one thing and one thing alone, and that's you. And that's specifically focused on how to help you grow your solo business. And by solo business, I want to be very clear from the front. Solo business means A, you're literally a solo individual. It's just you. And hopefully by the end of tonight's discussion, you'll realize that it's not so great to be just, just you. You should get a little bit of help, no matter how you may consider that help is an executive assistant, an online business uh, coach, or however it may be to help you. But one other person that can kind of help you a little bit and you're not paying them full time like an employee, but that's what we mean by solo. It's either just you or like me, it's smart also. We have a small ninja ninja team and with that i really want to thank everybody that's helped make this event possible and i must say many of you see the face of ramon ray but hey there's a lot more to ramon ray than just ramon ray and keep sitting the hellos keep sitting the comments in we got a few minutes of introduction so love seeing it cow what's up so glad you're here pump for part two love the one this morning i'm so glad you're here cow with us today big thanks to jamie Thank you, Jamie, for being an amazing, an amazing COO, executive assistant, project manager, online business chief, muckety muckety officer, however you want to call it, Jamie. But thank you for being the wind that really drives and helps me uh, produce all things Smart Hustle, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Big thanks to our entire team, Liz Caruso and Jennifer with the amazing Taxi Talk team who are helping producing this event. And I've worked with Liz and team to produce all Smart Hustle events for many, many, many years. Thank you to John. If any of you saw uh, the graphics, that was John's work, Josh. If you saw the videography, that was Josh. That was like baller stuff. I have the best video graphics team on the planet. Big thanks again to Constantine. Thanks to Sandeep. Thanks to Dan. Debra, and I'm sure, I'm sure I'm missing one or two people, but we have an amazing team to help us grow our businesses, myself, and as uh, somebody said, Laura Langmeyer said an event I was at, it's oftentimes businesses who work with other businesses that help us uplift each other. So I'm having a good time, and I'm glad you all are here, and I really, really want to thank you all for being here today. I have a challenge. I have a challenge. Jamie Freyer said, Ramon, you say amazing so much. So as of right now, 4 or 2 p.m., we're going to have a contest and we're going to run that, reveal that contest tomorrow evening, or maybe we'll have to reveal it Friday morning. You're going to guess by the end of the night how many times Ramon has said the word amazing. We're going to see how many times that you think I say it. The one who gets closer to that, I will send them a cool Smart Hustle gift box. That's what I'm going to do. Probably send you my book that I'm going to unveil soon and some other goodies that we'll send as well. So who can now, how many times Ramona's is going to say the word amazing tonight or some version of that? Tara, what's up, Clubhouse Queen? So glad you're here today. Greetings from the Windy City, Chicago, indeed. And by the way, those of you hearing the sound of my voice on Facebook, Thomas, what's up, brother from another mother? Don't forget, go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Hey, Udine, so glad you're here. StreamYard.com slash Facebook streamyard.com slash Facebook to seal the integration between StreamYard and Facebook so we can see who's chatting and who's doing that. We'd love to say hi to you for sure. And while we're at it, we're going to have some fun right now. Blow up the chats. Let me go over to the chat section. I think I can. Oh, yes, the comments are here. Yeah. Where are you from? What's your business about? Who do you serve? Let's blow up those chats right now for a few minutes. And don't forget to do the integration, especially those of you on Facebook. Go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook so we can then see who you are. Or you can just type your name at the end of it. But again, Tara's here and Udine is here. Thomas is here. Cal is here. Susan was like one of the first person to greet me and say hello. And I see a lot of excited to be here. So make sure you put your name at the end so I can call your name out because I can't see it. I enhance your operations efficiency so you can be more productive. That's Susan Shapiro. Awesome. Jennifer says, hi, Ramon, tuning in from sunny Cleveland, Ohio. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The state of my birth. Collaboration expert, another Facebook user. Don't forget to get that integration done. We have people from all over the place. Let's pack the house. 
You know it. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm glad that you all are having a good time. Accounting and bookkeeping, absolutely. Bonjour, Tara. <laughs> Why do we always say bonjour to Canadians? I don't know. Uh, in New Hampshire, accounting and bookkeeping for sure. Accounting and bookkeeping is so important. And on and on and on, the room is blowing up. Lori, hey, hello, Ramon. Tuning in from Savannah, Georgia. Lori, we are so glad you're here at the Survive and Thrive five-hour live experience, all to help you grow your business. And I don't know why I'm screaming. I have a microphone right here. I just get so excited. And not a hi, Ramon. Thank you so much. Jennifer, tax accountant. Thanks for being here, Jennifer. So appreciate you. Accountants are so important. And my man, Thomas, Charlotte, North Carolina. It's 75 and sunny today. Fractional CMO, marketing consultant. Thomas, it's good hanging with you at Traffic Conversion and other places. We're so glad that you are here today. So listen, we're gonna have a good time today. Orlando floaters in the house. Keep the comments coming, keep the comments coming. And for another few minutes, for sure. Love seeing him, it encourages me and inspires me to keep going. Before we begin the uh, event today, wait a minute, I gotta stop. Joel Z is in the house. My brother from another brother, brother my brother from another mother, extraordinary musician and extraordinary in so many other areas. Joel, I love you, man. It's so good to see you here. I'm warmed that you're here. And Udine, I didn't know, Trinidad and Tobago as well. So keep the comments coming. We'll flash them on the screen, but I'll take five minutes and in a minute, I'll share the story of really why we're here today. For those of you launching live, listening live, and for those who will be listening after, it's important to set the stage of why we're here, why I'm doing this, what brings us together from all over the world? Hello from Nashville, Monica Ricky. What's up, Monica? From Nashville. It's so good to see you here, Monica. And again, those joining, don't forget, go to streamyard.com slash Facebook to tie that integration so that we can see your beautiful faces and smiles and all that as you join. I am doing fantastic. Definitely, Facebook is in the house. So why are we doing what we're doing. Why are we doing especially survive and thrive? I will tell you a story. In March 2020, when COVID happened, as it were, I'm not talking about the months before or from Asia or wherever it came from, anything like that. No, but meaning in the USA where President Trump at the time, where he was like Ramon, or he was like world, we're shutting down America. We're going to close things down. I was thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? My livelihood's largely a part of flying around the world, inspiring and educating small business owners to start and grow small businesses. This is what I do. By the way, anybody wants me to fly somewhere and speak at their event, just email me and let me know. DM me and let me know that you want me to speak somewhere. I would love to serve you anywhere in the USA. Ramon at smarthustle.com. So I was thinking, what am I going to do? How am I going to serve people around the world? How am I going to make an impact if I can't travel? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to buy gas or food? And so I was sitting there thinking, I went to a Wednesday night Bible study and I said, you know what? I prayed and I was inspired. I said, why don't I create something that's never been done before quite like this, a five hour. And why do I always go like this five hour? Because five plus five is 10. Let me put a hand away. A five hour live experience. No tape, no recording. And many events are recorded. That's cool. But I wanted to do something different a five-hour live experience. And I did. And lo and behold, we're doing our fourth, I think it is, our fourth Survive and Thrive event. We've served thousands and thousands of people. This is what we do. This is what we do. Regina, what's up? Thanks for being here, Regina. And Cal says, done a lot of work for small business. I want to establish my own brand. Shout out to the Main Street Organization, Central Texas. Indeed, Cal. So that's the genesis of this Survive and Thrive Summit. We've done it about once or twice a year. It's kind of crazy because it's all live. Some speakers can be on time. Some speakers may be a little bit late, but this is why we do what we do. And I'm just going to say right now, I'm going to talk about it later, but some of you are saying, Ramon, why do we see the Grow Your Solo one there as opposed to Smart Hustle? I'm going to be launching something brand new, still part of the Smart Hustle community, but Grow Your Solo is a new offering because people ask me all the time, Ramon, can you help us? Ramon, you talk all the time about things specifically for solo business owners. Can you help us? And I always say no, not in a mean way, but I say, no, I don't have anything for you. Go see somebody else. But I'm tired of that. And so that's why you'll see, and I'll dive into that in a bit in a minute. But that's why those of you who want to peek, you can go right now to growyoursolo.com and check it out. It's a brand new offering been working on for a while, growyoursolo.com. And you'll see a brand new, and I'm going to launch it formally, but I just excited, a booklet 
and you're going to be getting the PDF and some other cool things that I'll talk about a little later on. But if you want to peek and check it out right now, growyoursolo.com, you'll see three things right there. The book, a cool audio experience and workbook is level two and three, working with Ramon. And that's brand new. So get ready, working with Ramon. So let me move on. Thank you so much, Lisa. And I always love to look at the comments as I go along. Lisa, thank you for your kind words. Thank you, Carl, and so many others. Lisa, I appreciate that. Love the name. Grow your solo. Thank you, Lisa. I do too. It's pretty cool. The hustle is not a hassle. Proven results live now. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. That's the genesis of why we did it. That's the genesis of why we did this event, why we're doing it tonight, to bring it to you. That's what happened. So you may ask then, that's the, the genesis of survive and thrive. What is smart hustle all about? And let me touch into this in a bit. Many of you may know, some of you may know, I've started four companies, sold two companies. I'm an author of four, no, five books. And I help thousands and thousands of small business owners around the world over the last several years. Oh, I like that question. I will answer that. Tell us what it means to you. That's a great question. So done that for many, many years. And that one of my companies before Smart Hustle was smallbiztechnology.com, which is a blog in essence that I sold. And that was focused on technology for small business owners. But I was kind of tired of touching on tech for small business owners because frankly, I don't think there's a lot of cool tech for small business owners. Let me clarify. Let me clarify. There's tools like Canva that are designed software we all use. There's financial tools that we all use. There's spreadsheets and, and web browsers and things. But over time, the technology doesn't change drastically very much. For the small business owner, we're not investing in the smaller level into AI. It's the big companies that are embedding that into their applications and doing it to us or for us. So I said, let me get out of technology for small businesses. And I sold that business about three years ago. And I had this yearning desire in me to help hustlers. And now Seth Godin talks about kind of hustlers in that, you know, negative way. You're in the hustle trying to uh, uh, grind people or scam people. But you all know, I don't mean hustle in that way. I mean, hustle, you're in the grind and working hard. But then I said to myself, it's not just enough to have the hustle of entrepreneurship. We all do that. Jamie Freyer hustles, right? Her amazing company that helps people build their funnels, build their marketing and more. You have Liz Cruz of Texas Talk that helps people like what I'm doing now build amazing events. And this is just the basic that Liz and her team can do. We're hustlers. But I said, it has to go beyond hustlers. It has to be the smart of entrepreneurship. And that's when I combine that word and put smart hustle. Ooh, Lisa, smart hustle means movement with intention. Lisa, can you do me a favor, Lisa? Can you please remind me or email me or DM me? I want to send you a printed copy of Grow Your Solo, Lisa, a special signed printed copy of Grow Your Solo. In fact, Lisa, I'm going to sign it right now. I really appreciate that comment, Lisa. So I'm going to sign your copy right now to Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, there you go. Thank you. I'll put a little more words in there in a minute. Karen's here as well. What's up, Karen? Good to see you. So this was the genesis of a smart hustle. I wanted to create a, an experience, a movement, a content. You're so welcome, Lisa. That was more than just small business, but that was about the hustle, the smart hustle of the journey of entrepreneurship. That's what I wanted to do. Jamie, Thanks for being here. You know how I roll, Jamie. Thank you. So glad you're here. So that's what I wanted to do. And that birthed smarthustle.com. And today, about five years later, I launched it in 2015. We're a small boutique agency that works with very large brands to help them better serve small businesses and get noticed. There's that outlet of Ramon Ray being a speaker around the world, helping to inspire and educate small business owners to start and grow successful businesses so they can live the lives they want, they can support their communities, they can provide for their families. And now we have launching Grow Your Solo, part of the Smart Hustle family, Grow Your Solo, which is content specifically designed, premium content that you can invest in yourself into to grow your business. That's the power of Grow Your Solo. And I encourage you, let me stop putting this book down. <laughs> I encourage you to definitely check out Grow Your Solo uh, to download the PDF, Get the ebook experience. And some of you may want to go a step further and say, Ramon, 
We'd love to work with you closely, Ramon, and help and have Ramon help us grow our businesses. So you can grow with Ramon and all that you can find at growyoursolo.com. Kyle says, I love movement with intention. I've always said urgency with a purpose. My kids <laughs> hate it. Yeah, kids sometimes do that, but don't get it, Cal. Thank you so much for that. So that's the journey of what we're at at 415. I'll transition into my keynote talk in a minute here, but let me see what else I missed. So that's what Smart Hustle is about. And I do encourage one more thing. Don't forget Smart Hustle Nation. Many of you right now are already into Smart Hustle Nation, but I encourage you, those who are not yet into Smart Hustle Nation, Smart Hustle Nation is our group to help you grow your business. There's no cost for it. It is free. And you can check out Smart Hustle Nation to help you take your business to the next level. Many of you are already in Smart Hustle Nation right now and are watching this inside Smart Hustle Nation, our private or public, I'm not sure what it is, Facebook group to take you to the next level. You can ask each other questions and ask me questions as well. So that's the genesis of it. The time is now 4.15 as I'm going to try to stay on time. And I invite you to join me for a journey to talk about growing solo. What are some key principles that you need to know to grow your solo business. Before I begin, I'm curious, what are you doing right now? Who's watching the kids? Who has me on a double screen watching a TV show? Who's washing some dishes? What are y'all doing? I forgot. I got to go to the private chat too. Okay, good, good, good. Um, good. I mean, at least, you know, there's a here. Good, good, good. Let me go to the chat right now. Good. I keep forgetting to go to the chat. Okay, good. So um, where's AI? Yes. So key principles of growing your solo business. And I'm going to talk to you until about 445 in that. But before we begin, I'm curious, dinner for hubby. I love it. I'm at work, working out at Planet Fitness. Love it, love it, love it, Tara. My kids are doing their homework, I hope. <laughs> I'm doing commercial carpet inventory. Love it, Cal. Absolutely love it, love it, love it. So we a lot of people doing a lot of things, and I'm honored that you're taking the time to join me today. You could be doing something else. I hope it's been entertaining. But I hope more importantly, you're learning as well. Playing hooky in my office. I love it, Jennifer. Gene Stafford. Thank you for being here, Gene Stafford. My dear sister, it means a lot to see your smile here, Gene. Whether you're here for a minute or five hours, I'm so glad you showed up, Gene Stafford. Riveted to watch it. Oh, thank you, Monica. Double screen. Kid just got home. Clean my calendar to be here, Lisa. It means a lot. And guess what? You got a signed book from Ramon can beat that. So let's dive into what it means to grow your solo business. And I'm taking it from the pages of my new book. It's not a big, thick book because a lot of things that we small businesses need for success don't need to be thick. But I took the time to put it in these pages and there's an audio experience. The audio experience is freaking cool. That's something you want to watch on the listen on the plane as you're driving, whatever, the audio experience. But I want to walk you through what it means to grow your solo business. Thomas is in his office while waiting. We're writing an employer employer branding uh, plan for a client. Thank you, Thomas, for being here. It means a lot to me. Time is important. So let's go through the Grow Your Solo playbook and what it means to take your business to the next level in the time we have. First thing I think that's really, really important, very important, in fact, is to ask yourself, why are you in business? Now, you may have heard this many times before. Why am I in business? Ramon, we know this. But I think sometimes we forget, and there's two principles to ask, why are we in business? One principle, what are you running from? Some of you may not, but I've been running for some things, and I'll share with you in a minute. Oh, what are you running towards? And there's things I am running towards. Why are you in business? Wow, thank you, production team, Texie Talk, for having that in the lower third. That's so cool. So why are you in business? For me, I remember when I was fired from the United Nations for having my own business. Why are you in business? What are you running from? And I was working at a company. United Nations is a great organization. But I realized that my wife will tell you, a traditional job is just not a fit for me. It's just not a fit for me. Making sure no fires, looking at my phone here, making sure everything's okay. Good. So it wasn't a fit. So one thing I'm running from is I want to have economic and entrepreneurial independence to run my business as I want, to work with who I want, Jamie, Liz, Jennifer, John, Josh, Constantine, Sandeep, our little ninja team at Smart Hustle, to work with who I want, and more importantly, to serve who I want, how I want. It's a choice. 
This is why I do what I do. And I must say, I love serving you all. As I scroll through the names here, Gene Stafford and Thomas and Lise and Monica, many who are in the Breakfast with Champions community that I've met recently. And we'll have a member of those communities in a few minutes coming on board. But I've met many people and I love the service that I'm doing. Thank you, Tara. I appreciate it. I love it. Nothing like being on a stage to light me up serving thousands where I've spoken in auditoriums across the world or sitting at a coffee table and just pouring into three people or having people pour into me. So that's my why. This is why I do what I do. And it's important to know why you do what you do because when times get tough, it's important. So let me tell you what I'm running towards. And thank you, Jennifer. Your servant, I was evident this past weekend. Jennifer, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So that's what I'm running away from. I, I don't want a necessarily a traditional corporate job. I don't want that. I want the freedom and independence that I have. And I'll say Jamie Frey the same way. Jamie knows, you know what I love? I love when Jamie says like, Ramon, it's Friday or Thursday, whatever day she wants. I'm checking out. I'll see you, dude. I'll be gone for three days. Goodbye in a good way. And that's cool because she knows what she has to do. I know what I have to do. I love it. This is why we do what we do to live the lives we want. This is why we do it. So that's what I'm running away from. But let me tell you what I'm running towards. Four key money buckets. The reason I say money, money is not everything, but money clarifies a lot of the things we're doing, right? And Cal says what's serving him? He wants to serve and support small businesses and NPOs in his community that deserve to succeed. Yes, Cal, I'm with you on that. Amen to the core. So what am I running towards? I want to earn a bit more money for my family today so we can do a few more things for our family. Two, I want to earn a bit more for retirement. Scott Simon and so many other people, Brian Hess, I've learned from over the years, over the last few months on Clubhouse especially, talk about this. Earn for from retirement. So me and my wife, we're old and can't work anymore. We just want to have fun. We can do some more things, right? Absolutely. Tara says it best. The money allows for more service and impact. Yes, yes, yes. Point number three, I want to have more money to give to my kids. When I'm when I'm when they're at now or when I'm older, whatever it is, I want to be able to give my children a legacy. But the fourth point, the fourth point is the bigger reason why I want to do what I'm doing. The fourth reason, I want to be able to have wealth to give to others. Everybody's not cut out to go through the pain, suffering, and misery, what it takes to be an entrepreneur, to be a small business owner, and build wealth. That's not for everybody per se. That's not, and that's not bad. But I want to be in a position where I can tell somebody, you know what? I got you. I'm paying three months' rent. It's okay. I got you. I'm paying a year car payments off. That's what I want to do. Tara, I love it. Amen. That's right, Tara. I'm a business to have freedom to work. I love that. You have the freedom to make unlimited income. Love it also to help young women around the world to be independent and financial literacy. It doesn't matter what the situation you're in. As a teenage mom, I want to give them hope. And I'm reading from the screen. That's a beautiful share. I love that. Yes. So this is tip number one of what it takes to grow your solo business. Know why you're doing it. Yes, you're doing it for some money, for sure. But there has to be something that often, for me at least, my experience that I'm running from, what I don't want to go back to, and something that I'm running towards. It excites me to go to a restaurant and by God's grace and humility to tip somebody $100, $500, $1,000, $20. It excites me to go to a shop at my local store and be able to stand in line and quietly tell somebody, I'll pay your groceries especially when they're old or maybe living on social security. That's what excites me. And I know I can do that. If I serve you all, you all will vote for Ramon, as it were, not only with your attention, not only with your likes and feedback, follow me on Instagram and Clubhouse and all these things, but you also vote for me by, by you have to invest in somebody to help grow your business. Why not me? So grow your solo is an extension of that. Let me dive deep and to help the smallest of small businesses on the journey that I've been at. Thank you for saying about the mentorship. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I see I'm starting a business to help people with anxiety to overcome it. Woo, I love that. Anxiety is a powerful uh, a, a challenge for many people. So that's 
Tip number one, let me keep moving along here. Understand why you're in business. Second thing to consider is your mind set for business. Do you have what it takes to have the mind set for business? I love those lower thirds. And again, Tara, I love what you're saying. That changes someone's life and it ripples. Absolutely, Tara. So a mindset, here's what I mean by mindset. As I look through the Grow Your Solo booklet, right? As I look through the booklet here, I think it's in the table of context here. It may not be in the right order here. So, uh, but mindset for business, yeah. So these things are there. Be physically and mentally healthy, it says here. Invest in business and self-development, right? All these things are here. And again, the audio version's available. You have the uh, PDF version's available. Or some of you may say, Ramon, we want to grow with you, Ramon. We want to join you and have you help us grow our businesses. And you can find all of that at growyoursolo.com. So the second thing is, do you have the mindset? The mindset. And what does that mean? Most often, especially as you're starting out, business is going to be filled with a lot of no's. A lot of no's. Steve Harvey talks about it on his journey. I'm sure Glenn Lendu is going to come up here, talk about his journey. Amelia, right? Brian Hess, Sarah McCord, Scott Simons, Coach Isaac, right? Julia Pimsler. All these people are going to pour into you in the next few minutes, in the next few hours. You need to get used to hearing no. No is a hard word. No. 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 Even as I'm saying it, I bet some of you are getting chills as I'm saying it. No is such a crass, tough word. But you need to have the mental fortitude to accept that no. As my friend uh, Alexandra Carter says, I want to uplift her, her book, Ask for More. Met her recently on Breakfast with the Champions. Great book you all should get. You all should really get that book. But you need to get used to hearing no sometimes because sometimes, as she says, a no is saving you from a bad yes. I've been in massive debt before. I was scared wondering how am I going to get my next check to pay my rent. I know what it's like being fired from the United Nations, only have a certain amount of money in the bank account, and have my wife and me looking at that account every month, a drawdown. Boop, 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 boop. On the way to zero. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like, that pain. And so do you have the mindset, oh my God, it's so good to see Amelia in the green room. Oh, Amelia. <laughs> Oh boy, thank you really for being here. So my point is, is that, do you know what it takes? Do you have what it takes? Do you have it? And some of you, I must say, I'm not saying it in a bad way per se, but some of you may not, should not be in business. Some of you should hold your head high and get a great job and go serve that way by working for someone. Maybe you want to work at one of Car Simon's dealerships, Carter Myers Automotive. Maybe Amelia is hiring people for her team. Maybe Glenn's hiring people for her team. Maybe Sarah is. Maybe Coach Isaac, whoever may be joining us today. Maybe Liz is hiring. No shame in that because it takes a certain mindset to do it. It takes a certain mindset because you can't successfully grow your solo business, right? It's hard to grow your solo business if your mindset's not in the right place. You're right, Lisa. Saving from a bad yes and tear. I got that from Alexander Carter. <laughs> so I give her credit for that for sure. So let's move on here. And then I'm going to go back and recap some of these things. But mindset's important. And I must say, two of the things I want to get at, there's something called entrepreneurial depression. Now, to be clear, I'm not talking about clinical depression. I'm not a doctor. So I say that because some people get a little fuzzy on these things. But I did a talk at South by Southwest. By the way, um, South by South, did a talk at South by Southwest some years ago about entrepreneurial depression. And in fact, if you go to smarthustle.com and just look on the word depression, you'll see it come up. But that's a real thing. Why? Because as business owners, we feel that people don't understand us. We feel that we have no one to turn to. And in some ways you don't. You're the husband trying to do your entrepreneurial venture. Your wife is working a steady, great nine to five job. Or maybe she's staying at home, mom, whatever she may be doing. She's rocking her world, being the success she can in herself. She may not understand entrepreneurship. Maybe you're a lady out there running your own business, rocking your entrepreneur business, and your boyfriend don't understand what you're doing. He's like, what? You're going to risk $17,000, $20,000, $500 to go to an event? Some of you went to the recent Grow for God conference, right? We did. 
Your boyfriend may not understand your hustle, your vision. So it's lonely. It's lonely journey. But it doesn't have to be. You got me. I'm here. I'll embrace you and all of our speakers coming on tonight. So this is why the world of entrepreneurship can be hard for some of you sometimes because you don't have the mindset for it and you're not ready to accept the pain that goes with it. And it is painful to a degree. It's not easy. So that's point number two, I think it is. The mindset. Point number three, there's so many things I can get into. Point number three is scaling and staying small. This is scaling and staying small. Now, I can pull out tons of books from my bookshelf here about scaling. And many of our speakers have done this to billion dollar brands. But the principle even for the smallest companies is the same. And I'll tell you how we do this at Smart Hustle. Some key things that have helped us at Smart Hustle. One, are having some simple systems. And this is what Jamie has honed into me over and over again. That's not my skill set naturally. I'm just like fire, ready, aim. But you got to have some repeatable systems so that you can remove yourself from the job and other people can fill in and do it. Repeatable systems, even for small companies. What happens when you get a new client? You get a new client, you add them to your, your, your CRM or whatever system. You maybe have an onboarding call, right? You send maybe a thank you note to thank you for hiring them. Maybe in a, two months later, you do follow-up and then maybe you send them a thank you gift. Whatever it is, simple systems. Ontario right, simple systems. Doesn't have to be complicated, but it should be documented. Something that you can do. Big thanks to our sponsor, Thrive, who's going to be talking to us a bit. All about systems or other things we'll talk about, but systems are important. Make sure you have the right software to do it. So what are your simple systems in your business? By the way, if so far you're picking up what I'm dropping off, you are learning from this, can you put yes in the comments? And I know Tara's doing it and Lisa, but put yes in the comments if you're picking up what I'm dropping off. And let me um, see here. Good, 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 good. Okay, I'm reading the comments here to make sure I'm good. Yeah, and, and Liz and team, I will follow y'all. Whatever y'all roll, whatever y'all put in there, I will roll with it. Cool. So good. Yes, yes. Lori says yes. Tara, Cal, Joe, my man, Monica, and others. Good, 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 good. Glad that you all are learning and enjoying this. Appreciate it. So simple systems. Number two. Thank you. This is amazing. And I get this from Jim Collins. He talks about the flywheel. The flywheel. This is important to understand what is your flywheel. That's what Jim Collins talked about. I think it's Jim Collins. Let me just look. I keep running my bookshelf. Yeah, Jim Collins talked about his monograph, flywheel. Okay, why is flywheel important? Flywheel are one of those repeatable things that you do that make your business work. Thomas, thanks. Totally following you. Cool. Share this out, lovely. I appreciate it, Tara. Thank you, girl. What's your flywheel? So Nike has a flywheel. I'm going to use Nike because they're a big, big, big company. We can get it easily. And here's how I understand it from Jim Collins' book. Nike does expensive research to produce a shoe. They then find a celebrity who may want the shoe, and they endorse, the celebrity endorses the shoe. After the celebrity endorses the shoe, it has a huge surge of interest from other people. After this huge surge of interest from other people, the price lowers a bit, and Nike does it again. They invest money to create a cool, fancy, high-end shoe. Celebrity endorses it. Millions of people buy it. And they do it again and again and again. This is Nike's flywheel. This is Nike's flywheel. So the question I have to ask you and ask for yourself, what's your flywheel? And I'm showing that I'm getting low connectivity here, but it's back up again. I'm not even on Wi-Fi, so I don't know why it shows low connectivity, but I'm on uh, broadband. But hopefully it won't crash out or be gone. So that's cool. So. Um, Moving on, what's your flywheel? You should ask yourself, what is your flywheel? In fact, thank you, Tara, for putting that. If you want to put you out, putting the flywheel may be a little too complicated, but I want you to at least think about it. Know what your flywheel is. And here's why knowing your flywheel is so important. Once you know your flywheel, you know the basic cores. And again, this is just for solo businesses, not just what meaning I'm giving you the simple things you can do to rock a solo business. I don't have a billion dollar company. I can't help you get a billion dollar company. That's not me. I can't help you get a company that's hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. But there's one thing that I can do. I can help you reach a business that has hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue because I've done it many times. 
and I sold two companies, started four companies, so I can help you grow your solo business. That's what I can do. And that's what I'm giving you, the principle that I've done over the years that have helped me grow my solo business. So you need to understand what's your flywheel. I'll tell you the flywheel for Ramon Ray. There's no secret to it. Here is Ramon's flywheel. And let me pause here. I love this comment. Systems thinking is the way to go. Check out Peter Sand on YouTube. He says more in three minutes than people say in a book. He started 25 years ago, and he's a regular. Love this. So thank you. Systems thinking. I love that. I'm going to check that out. Systems thinking. Great. Thank you so much, Liz. Y'all can see me. Okay. I appreciate that. Good, 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 good. So what is your flywheel? This is important to understand. Because if you don't know your flywheel, it's not something repeatable that you can do. Oh, what I was saying is, here's my flywheel. Who wants to know? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> this is slight delay, so I'm just going to go ahead. My flywheel, and I have a few flywheels, but one is Ramon produces a lot of social content. Educating, entertaining small business owners. Many of you see me all over the place on social. I'm not well-known like Oprah Winfrey. I may not be well-known like you know Simon Sinek, whoever. But that's okay. For my audience, for my community of small business owners, my smart hustlers, I'm known enough. And by the large, large tech brands that I work with, I produce a lot of content. From that content, people say, oh, Ramon, we like this guy. Or we don't like this guy, but we like this guy. We want to follow and be a part of what he's doing. That happens next. Then what happens after that? Large brands see that and be like, wow, we want to get some more Ramon and work with him because he's reaching so many people. And then I work with them on some cool things to help them better reach small businesses. That's my flywheel. Four simple things. And there's tentacles to that. We have new offerings we're doing for you all, like Grow Your Solo. Definitely hope you're going to growyoursolo.com, downloading the booklet, getting the audio experience for some of you and saying, we want to work with you, Ramon. Some of you, right? So we have some new things we're developing and doing. But this is my flywheel. So ask yourself, what is your flywheel? All of you should know your flywheel. And if that's something you're struggling with, let me help you do it. In fact, you can post it in Smart Hustle Nation. Why don't we do, actually, why don't we do that? I'll look at it tonight and tomorrow. Hey, do, do a post, an original post. Hey, Ramon, my flywheel is, and put that in there. And Tara's right. Rinse, repeat. Thomas. Thank you, brother. Thomas just said he bought Grand Solo. Thank you, man. I know many of you are doing it as well. Thank you, Thomas. I appreciate it. So next thing comes up, delegation or your team. This is important. Now, it may be ironic for you to say, wow, Ramon, you're talking about Grow Your Solo, but now you just said to have a team. Well, here's what I mean. When I say Grow Your Solo, what I mean is you don't have to have a 25-person company with 24 employees. But the delegation and team aspect as what has been able to 10X, 5X, triple X, Ramon Ray's brand. I'm one person. And I know by God's grace, by God's grace, what I'm good at. I'm good at probably two things, maybe more but two things. One, I do like to sell. And part of selling, what that really is, my ability just to connect to people. If it's not for you, that's okay. But if it's for you, I'll show you how what I'm, whatever I'm selling can benefit you and help you. So that's one, connecting with people. And then two, is I like sharing on the, on the public stage, entertaining, being engaging, and connecting with people in that way. So maybe that's really one thing. That's what I do. But everything else, I have people on my team who do it way better than me or who can do it faster than me, who they've given their life to do it, and so they can do it much more expertise. Take a look at this event. I'll just call it, I'm taking you behind the scenes to how we roll at Smart Hustle. Can I use StreamYard? Yes. Can I do graphics? Yes. Can I produce an event? Yes. Will the event come out busted? Yes. Will the graphics come out busted? Yes. Will it take me a longer time to do it? Yes. That's what I call Liz and her team. Done, boom, boom, and bang. End of story. Can I do funnels? Can I do email marketing? Can I do websites? Can I do all kind of fancy integrations? Of course I can. I'm a techie to the core. But guess what? Jamie, my COO, my executive assistant, right? Online business manager, she can do it much faster than I can. That's her gift. That is her genius. Like an Amelia, right? That's her genius. So as you up level and delegate and work with others, you'll find your business can go much faster. Better. I like that. You go, Jamie. <laughs> That's true. So this is the power, how you grow your solo business. 
delegate, build a team. And I must say, we use technology up the wazoo, task management systems, your calendar. In fact, some of the things I'm reading from, grow your solo, right? Grow your solo. Look at the table of contents here. If I can find it here, yeah. Delegate, task management, start the day right. Glenn Lindy's going to touch on this, right? And I have some bonuses in here too. Your dream 100. Ooh, time is short. So I may go back to these, some of these things. Saying yes to publicity opportunities. This is the playbook to grow your solo business. There's the PDF, the audio experience. And some of you may say, Ramon, I want to work with you. I want to work with you and be able to ask you direct questions to help you grow your own solo business to get you to the next level. This is what I want to do and help you for the next several months. I love this. I'm going to see what somebody's five with. I'm just looking at the comments as well in the private chat to make sure nothing urgent that I need to know. So it says, my five will is the original meaning of beauty. Ooh, beauty going back to play. It was about you, the person. Beauty is the act of responding to your own calling. I'm trying to listen to what my heart is saying. Whispering is okay. So let me tell you this. Whoever said this, your flywheel, thank you so much for being bold enough to publicly share your flywheel. Let me help you tweak that a minute if I may live. This is a good start to helping to define your flywheel. But as I hear it, and I could be wrong, as I hear it, this seems more like your purpose, what gets you excited, what you're really helping people do. What I want to see is now what are those things you do over and over and over again that make the business run? You feel me? So the beauty person in here, feel free to refine that and send that to me and let's see how that looks. Okay, somebody's telling me to remove the video quality is getting lower and lower. Ah! So team, let me know if that's like really bad on there. I do see that. I am on a hardwired connection, but if it gets really bad, we'll just come back into the uh, thing of a jiggy. But um, okay, so is it still bad, ladies and gentlemen? I'm showing high bars. Let me pause here for a minute with the team and just make sure we're serving you all well. Let me know how it's going. I don't have any Wi-Fi at all. In fact, I'm on a hardwired connection, but you know how things go. So is this okay now? Um, can you guys uh, hear this okay? It freezes. Ooh, you keep cutting out. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I'm going to keep rolling. But if I see Jamie call me, that means that like it's a nuclear war. So it may keep coming out for a bit. Um, sorry about that. I am on a hardwired connection, but it is what it is. So thanks, Brian. We're good now, but I'm going to keep going and it may cut out every now and then. You know what I think? I think there's forces who don't want us to grow our solo business. That's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me keep rolling here and see how we go. So that was delegation your team. That's so important. And the fourth thing, and there's so many things we can talk about, but the fourth thing is this, a maniacal focus on your customers. A maniacal focus on your customers. It may sound simple and cheesy, but you're asking what's the number one thing that has helped me grow my business to grow my solo business? It's been a maniacal focus on my customers. So one of my customers is a large telecommunication company. They said, Ramon, can you do a webinar today which ends at three? That's one hour before showtime serving all of you. Guess what I said? Now the team and I were cautious about it. 3 p.m. is cutting it close to game time. But I said, yes, they're a longtime customer. They've invested a lot in me to enable me to invest in you. So I said, yes, when it comes time for the holidays, you know what I did? I bought, I think, 20 or 30 customized cutting boards last year. 30 cost me about $100 each for my customers, especially my large tech customers. You know, I have a lot of different types of customers, but for the large tech brands that are investing a lot of Ramon, I sent each of them a personalized cutting board with the name on it, right? I mean, wouldn't you like that? It says Amelia on a cutting board next time you chop it up some meat. Or it says Hess on a cutting board next time you chop it up some broccoli. That's what I did. So my point is a maniacal focus on customers. If you do that, you cannot lose if you're maniacally focused on your customers. This is what it takes to build and grow a solo business. The time is now four, it's 44. So I'm gonna take a little, not a break here, but I wanna get some time to pause and reflect. And I know you all heard this, chopping broccoli, maniacal focus. Again, I'm Ramon Ray. Those of you who wanna get more of this solo stuff, definitely check out growyoursolo.com. Definitely download the booklet. Get the audio experience, Little click a little bonus there, audio experience, a workbook. This is the playbook that you can use to take your business to the next level. And some of you may want to say, Ramon, I want to work with you too. I want to work with you, Ramon. And that's cool too. 
So, hey, if you like what you're seeing, you see what it is, I'd love to uh, work more with you. So that's the steps to grow your solo business, to take it to the next level. This is the five-hour Survive and Thrive Summit. We are four hours and 45 minutes into it. I've been having a good time. You've been having a good time. I'm getting the DMs, the dings. People are signing on. It's, it's a great experience. We're going to have people even listening to it uh, uh, after this, but I'm so glad that many of you have decided to join me for as long as you can on here. Tara, it's been great to see your words of encouragement. Regina, Thomas, Joel, Brian, coming up soon. Susan, thank you so much. And so many others have been here throughout the day today. Lori, many others as I scroll back, really appreciate you here, and I'm glad it's helpful for you. So we have coming up next to the next, yeah, one minute or about now, Grant Freeman of Thrive is coming up, and I think he's ready because I didn't hear anything in the negative. So whenever Grant is here, what's up, man? What's up, Ramon? How are you? I am a fantastically blessed man. You look nice, man. I like the whole shirt. I like the vibe. It's nice, man. It looks penguin, good. Penguin, man. That's penguin. It's no joke. It's a Thrive Penguin. Good. I love it. I love it. I love it. Where are you um, uh, uh, beaming in from? From, uh, from from Austin, from Iraq, nope. from Netherlands? Where are you from? Where are you beaming in from? <laughs> I'm from Hotlanta, where it's not too hot right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm in the South. Uh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, sir. I love it. Well, listen, Grant, I'm so glad you're here and your team. I know you guys have a lot going on today and I believe yeah. tomorrow, but let me just uplift you a minute. Grant Freeman is the Chief Customer Officer at Thrive. His primary focus, besides hanging out with Ramon Ray, is accelerating revenue growth for the cloud division. Grant is responsible for software sales teams and client, I like this word, Grant, experience, in addition to retention and so much more for Thrive's software clients. And actually, that's all of you. So he serves, he works for you. So this is great, Grant, to have you here today, Grant. I'm excited to talk to you. You have a conference coming up now, which I had the pleasure of keynoting earlier this morning, I believe it was, yeah. Connect 21. Tell us about that, why people should be logging in right now, signing in to join the rest of it tomorrow, Grant. Talk to us about that. Yeah, absolutely. And first of all, Ramon, thank you for kicking off the conference this morning, man. Your opening keynote. This guy's a keynote speaker, in case you didn't know. His energy, his passion, it got the conference started off on the right foot. So thank you, sir, first and foremost. Secondly, you ask about why people should tune in. We have dedicated our lives to helping small businesses not only succeed, but to thrive. There's going to be so much packed. It's going to be tomorrow day packed with information uh, to just help small businesses, help them modernize, help them achieve their goals, their aspirations, their dreams. Talk about scalability, right? Like I heard you mention, I took some notes, sir, uh, systems and automation so you can achieve scalability. We're big time with our customers and entice our clients to do the same, being maniacal with their focus on the journey they put their customers through and delivering an exceptional experience. You're going to learn about all that. We also have industry leaders, sir, like Merrill Lynch, like MasterCard, sharing their knowledge on how to better manage your business, how to communicate with clients in the modern age, and most importantly, achieve financial success in today's digital environment. All big talking points, all things that small businesses need to learn, need to really understand. And then we also have some software sessions sessions to show uh, how our Thrive software can really help them achieve that as well. Getting back to what you were talking about, systems, automation, so vital in this day and age. I love that, Grant. And to the people, the few people, hopefully, who are not familiar, well, in a way, a lot of people, because that means it's a big opportunity, however you want to look at it. Yeah. But the people who may not know about Thrive, unpack not so much Thrive, the software yet, but at a high level, talk to the small business owner. You know, they got Google contacts. They got their email. They're doing as best they can. You know, they got some, probably some business cards, you know, lined up around. The yep. customer oh, called yeah. them and said, come and mow my lawn or do my accounting. And they're, you know, you get this, this scenario. Good people. What, what, are, what are they missing? And then get to Thrive specifically. What are they missing? Well, first of all, we really solve one of the problems that you just set forth. And that's that you got your email over here. You got your MailChimp over here. You got your text program over here. We're an all-in-one business solution for small businesses. And to make it really simple, Ramon, we help people win business, keep business, and grow their business. Those are the three things we do, totally automating them and modernizing them. So things like having a fully functional CRM, having the ability to, to receive payments, having the ability to do estimates, invoices, having somebody manage your social, having a, a modern-day website, you name it, Thrive has the power to really help you modernize your business be more efficient, and give you the opportunity to scale and grow like you wish that you could. I love it. And that is so important, especially for the smallest businesses, because I think, uh, Grant, you know, it's it's true every day. But I think today, if somebody's trying to do it all manual, you're already behind the eight ball. That's, you know, what I and, think. And, and remote, as you know, man, nothing's more difficult or frustrating than having 
different point solutions that don't talk to each other. So I got to enter this here and enter that there and, and nothing's, there's no cohesion. So it leads to a waste of time. And, and these small business owners, they're the CEO, the CRO, the CMO, every chief on their own. They don't have time to mess around. They need automation. They need things that sync and talk and communicate, you know? Absolutely. And that's, and by the way, just for those who don't know, that is Thrive. We definitely want to look at Thrive Connect, but for sure, Thrive, I think, is the mothership, T-H-R-Y-V. Yeah, we spelled, it, we spelled it wrong to be cool, baby. That's, that's what we did. <laughs> I love it. Spelled it wrong to be cool. I know a few things are important to you, uh, um, Grant, and feel free to take this conversation wherever you want to go. We don't have to go by some things I had on my mind. Feel free to throw that out. But I know one thing is hiring, and I think whether that's hiring on a contractor level is, is yeah. challenging, but definitely hiring on the employee level. Me and my wife were at a local restaurant down the block, and you're thinking you just read it in the newspaper. They said, no, we've shut down the front area. No one is here. All we have is one dude or one gal in the back. The line's like all the way to Kalamazoo. Talk to us about that, Grant. What are some tips? Why is this happening? Help us understand this. Yeah, so, I, I mean, this has been in the news a lot lately, and it's really impacting small businesses. I think there's two different things that are really important to consider here. Number one, it's the expectations of your customer. So the, to all the small business owners that I'm addressing right now, your customers, their expectations of you are not going to change whether you can hire or not, right? It's a consumer-driven marketplace. They have choices. So that may sound scary, like, Grant, Ramon, what am I supposed to do if I can't hire? Automation. You have to find systems and processes that allow something to act as if it's a secretary, as if it's a team. Like, like Ramon, you spoke passionately about having a team. If you can't hire a team right now, you need to get software. You need to get in the cloud. You need to make sure you have something automatically updating social, or you have somebody that's a third party updating your social for you, right? You have some mechanism that's automatically generating reviews or that's automatically sending out thank yous or that's automatically remote going back through your customer base and trying to sell them ancillary, secondary, tertiary products and services. You got to do that, especially when it's tough to hire, right? I mean, that's a big deal. And as far as the tricks to hiring in this day and age, what we found, we, we have over 2000 employees. So we do our best to retain them, take care of them, covet them, love them. But when it comes to hiring them, it's about culture. Yeah. In this day and age during COVID, right, people want to have some work-life balance. We need to be understanding of that more so than ever. We need to meet them in the middle. You know, there's a lot of people that got very comfortable, you know, being around with their kids, for example, or taking care of their mom and dad. Yeah. We need to find a way where they can still be productive and work for us. And we say, hey, we're not going to blow up your life to come work for us. We're going to pay you well. We're going to take care of you. We're going to give you insurance, right? We're going to help you out. But I'm not going to blow up your life. Let's do this together. That's really helped us. With the, we, we've adopted a work from anywhere policy. So we have people that used to have to go to an office in Dallas, Ramon. Right. Now they live at the beach. They work from the beach. Beautiful <laughs> life, man. You know, they do all their stuff from the beach. And, you know, and I think that, that thinking about ways where you can really help somebody live their life to the fullest will be how you can get the workers that are out there. I love that. And Tara says balance, which is so true, important. Grant, you said two words that are important. I want to you know, uh, dive into that a bit more. Reviews and selling more, in essence, to your existing customers. That's so important. I mean, one, can you, as best you can, unpack reviews. A, are reviews complicated? There's Google and there's Yelp and there's all these kind of things. Do you ask for it? Do you wait? Do you do you manually? Give us, a, if you can, like a little master class of reviews. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, um, you should be selective about who you ask a review for from right like if you if you have somebody that was screaming at you i wouldn't send them an email asking for a review right let's be smart about this let's be smart like big business some kind of a vetting process but also it has to be automated mm -hmm. you know you have to have your crm you have to know who your happy customers are who your best customers are and then you have to have a system that automatically sends them an email or sends them a text where they're one click away from leaving it's all about simplicity it's all about being easy to do business with and making it easy for people to help you so an automated system, you can't just ask somebody for one. They'll say, yeah, absolutely, Ramon. And then they forget because life happens, right? You have to have an automated system that continues to remind them uh, about reviews, you know? And then the other thing that you mentioned, which is something I'm going to be speaking about tomorrow morning, uh, which I think people will get a lot of value from, small businesses. And I've dedicated my life to them, Ramon. So 22 years, that's all I've done is help small businesses either get leads or modernize their systems, uh, automate, et cetera. They're always chasing the next customer. Yeah. The focus is always on win a customer, win a customer, win a customer, win a customer. You know what the difference is between that and big business, the billion dollar businesses you alluded to? What the billion dollar businesses realize is it's so much more important to focus on keeping the customers once you yeah. get them to really get the highest yield from the dollar that you invested in order to win them from Google or from Facebook or wherever you paid to market or advertise yourself. You can't just serve them once. You got to keep them coming back. So you have to communicate effectively. You have to understand through having a detailed CRM 
what they like, what they don't like, and serve them that. And you you said it was amazing when you said um, um, how important it was to, to really covet each client. Yes, yes. You know, with maniacal with focus. Clients. Yes. Yes, sir. And, 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 and you took important. notes of my talk, Grant. I'm humbled. I'm blushing, man. I learn every day from everybody. I learned a lot from you today. It was fantastic. I always get on early. I respect people like you that help small businesses bring energy and passion and infuse it into the ladies and gentlemen that are on this call now. You, you're really making a difference, Ramon, and, and we all appreciate it. No, I appreciate it, Grant. One more time, guys, just so everybody knows this grant of Thrive. I do suggest you check them out, thrive.com. They have a live event happening uh, or an event happening uh, today and tomorrow. They've had it. Grant will be speaking tomorrow and some things. So definitely check that out. And I think you're right, Grant. What, what do you say to, I guess, is there anything that you find, Grant, why people are not getting some of these tools and services to help their businesses? Because I personally think, you know, as a technologist, the big there's two big two of the biggest competitors mm -hmm. that companies like yours face. One is doing nothing. That's I'm not being cute. That's a real thing. And then two is Excel. Great software. Nothing nagging the the publisher of it at all. Great people, but it's just Excel and doing nothing. Why? Hey. <laughs> well, I, I, I think there's a fear of change. And I think that there's, uh, unfortunately, sometimes there's a lot of peace that comes with complacency, right? Uh, people don't like to be disruptive. They don't want to have the who moved my cheese. But I'm going to tell you this to everybody listening. We have we have about 45,000 software customers, small business customers across the country. So we're big, very big. And I can tell you this, they end up really, really impacting the other people that do what they do in the same communities who haven't adopted tools, who haven't modernized. The consume, it's a consumer-driven marketplace more than ever. You have got to make yourself easy to do business with. Many people say, I've been doing this 10 years, I'm fine. I've been doing this 15 years, I'm fine. And there's no doubt that all of you have tremendous products and services that you offer, mm. but do you make it frictionless for people to do business with you? Are you easy to pay? Are you easy to find? Do you communicate effectively? You know, Those are all the little things that they're not nice to haves anymore, they're must-haves. And Ramon, to answer your question, some people just don't understand the why behind it. They think they should adopt mm. this or modernize, but there's fear. I'll tell you that at Thrive, we have people based across the United States who help the onboarding process. They teach and coach the software. There's no limitations, no limitations whatsoever on the amount of time that our human beings will spend with the human beings on this call to truly help you strategize and implement software so that it fits your needs exactly and alleviates any fear of change that you may have. I love that. I think that one, just to repeat what you said, the implementation process is important that you get help yep. to do that. And I think to shout out Susan, you know, I've known her for a while. What Susan said, sometimes it is a, it's an interesting problem, but I think she's right. Sometimes you just hear, oh, they use it, they use it, which is good in a way. It's good to ask, but hey, because Jenny uses X, you really need to think, is that really useful for yourself? You know, do you, do you really, is that, you know, you may need something different for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, anything inspirational you want to say, Grant? I'm not sure you're prepared for this, but if you if you were on a mountaintop or somewhere, you're talking to thousands of people, your customers, you know, as we do this live, we're towards the end of the year. It's November. Some yeah. people have been hurting. Some people are kind of meh. I know for me, by God's grace, I'm thankful. My business has gone very well, Grant. So I, I'm not one yeah. of the hurting people just yeah. due to, you know, how some things are. But what are your message to small business owners? I know it's a big message, but what does Thrive say? What does Grant say as we especially end this year, Grant? I would say that you can do it. I would say that in the two decades I've, I, I've experienced, I've seen plenty of small businesses make it and make it big. Focus on your clients. You're all already an inspiration. The guts and courage and sheer veracity that it takes to say, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to go build something from the ground up like yourself, Ramon. You've already done the hard part. Now seek advice, seek counsel, let others help you. Let others take you from good to great. You've already done the tough part just by opening your doors, man. You're the backbone of the American economy and you always will be. You're what makes this country and the world of small yeah. businesses fantastic. And you got this, man. And you got people <laughs> that are willing to support you. That's what I'd say. I hope that's not too cheesy, but you got this, man. You, you, I know there's a lot of dark days, right? Yeah. There's a lot of hard days, hard days but you're going to come out on the other side. We just need a soundtrack on that, man, like a soundtrack and some flags or something. Man, I love that, Grant. You the Rocky, Rocky Balboa, maybe something like that. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to my girl, Tara, who I've gotten to meet on Breakfast with Champions. She asked, are you a global company? Do you have things for Canadians? And by the way, uh, Tara or Jamie, if you can help me connect with Tara, I want to make sure I send Tara a copy of Grow Your Solo. Uh, mm. She's been so active in here. All of you have, but I can only pick a few at a time. But can you just, uh, yes or no, that is uh, Canada cool so, or is it only US? Uh, no to Canada yet. I would say really soon. We're in the middle of a 
massive global expansion. We are in Australia. We are in the United States. Um, one step at a time because when we do it, we want to do it right, not fast. So, I love it. And probably when you're looking to grow, you may say, Tara, can you help us grow? Yeah. I don't know. I'm yeah. just saying. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Grant Freeman of Thrive, Thrive.com. It's been an honor and, and awesome you spending time with us today. Uh, those who are watching this live, definitely check out Thrive.com. Definitely go to the Thrive Conference, which took place today. I keynoted. I'm sure yeah. that's up there. And then yeah. tomorrow, Grant will be speaking. But Grant, reach out anytime. Hey, and, and oh, you know, let me give a challenge. I challenge everybody. What's the best platform for Thrive Grant? Is it Twitter, Instagram? Any favorite? Do you know offhand anything? Uh, as as far as you know, where, where social it's about us? Yeah, like what I want people to do is take a selfie and then tweet at you or IG at you or something. Oh man, we love Insta. We let's love do it. Insta, heck yeah! So those who want to take a selfie uh, and just say hey, something, say hi to Thrive or something like this, I'm gonna pick somebody out and I will send somebody another book of uh, Grow Your Solo. Jamie, thank you for your patience, for reminding me to do that. Grant. That's great. Thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Take care, brother. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Everybody, that was Grant Freeman. That was amazing, amazing, amazing talking about how we can grow our businesses using the power of CRM, and that was Thrive. And again, thanks for joining me at the Survive and Thrive Growth Conference. Yes, Regina, double fire. Absolutely. I am more excited than you can imagine at our next guest, my friend, Amelia Antonetti who I have followed, Amelia, who I have followed her career for years. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, yes, and that's a good way. Y'all ladies need to stop. That's a good compliment. And she was doing some things, if I can say it, on radio. She hasn't said it so much on radio even. And I would like listen. I was like, who is this chick? Who is this girl? So Amelia, thank you for being here. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I just, I just love listening to your voice. I literally just walk around just listening to your voice. So thank you for having me. I'm so excited about being here. And I am just as passionate about you are about small business owners. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing opportunity right now. So I love that we're leaning in. Absolutely. Thank you, Amelia. Let me uplift you. If I get some of this wrong, you can correct me. But Amelia Antonetti is one of the most sought after human behavior and strategic advisor experts in the world. She's done so much, but what's really <laughs> cool that you all will like, she has appeared as a regular business and behavior expert on The Oprah Winfrey Show, The Steve Harvey Show, my personal favorite guy who I can't wait to meet one day, and Dr. Phil. She's built billion-dollar companies, sold billion-dollar companies, and but her passion, I must say, over the last several months, especially getting to know her, is for us regular peeps, and she said yes to Ramon. <laughs> so. Amelia, thanks for joining us today. Let's get right together. Here, we Amelia. rise. I say this all the time. Together we rise. I love it, Amelia. Amelia, listen, I have a lot of questions to ask you, Amelia, for sure. But I think that I would like to give you space if you don't mind, because you do this so well. Just talk to us, Amelia. You've been here for a bit. There are small business owners that are struggling. They're trying to grow. What's your advice, Amelia? What have you said in the last few months that you think everybody needs to hear? Because I know you dropped some amazing gems. Do you mind, Amelia, if I could just give no, you the space? No. The floor is yours. I am so transparent. You know, so I think the first and foremost, which is really hard for all people, right? But especially small business owners, is that from where you are to where you desire to be, although we tell ourselves the myth, it's time, it's money, it's resources, it's all of these outside elements. It's really not. What's between mm -hmm. you and where you want to go is a behavior. It 100%. All of the companies, 53,000 employees, all of big famous people that I've worked on, the root of the problem was always within their own head. Mm -hmm. And and then it's easier for our spirit to say, if I had more time, if I had more resources, if I had more money, if I lost 10 pounds, if I married a better person, if, 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 if. It's none of those things. It's internal. And that's why it's such a challenge, right? And so... What you have to understand innately about human behavior, like just baseline 101, mm -hmm. is that each of us are rooted in either pain or gain. It's why most people avoid conflict like the plague, because conflict is rooted in pain. That's yeah. really what we're saying. It's why we, you know, I do conflict resolution and people go, oh, God, that stuff. And I'm like, not really. It's the biggest key to unlock everything right is to get into a state of flow of like what's really going on in conflict all conflict means is that your 
expected response Mm. doesn't align with it is right. So I was expecting a yes and I got a no. So I'm in a momentarily state of conflict. That's all that's happening. That's it. So the tool is to move from that to a gain. Now, some people are wired innately by gain. We live in a state of gain, but that doesn't mean that you can't learn how to transform from one to another. I will say most business owners, especially Mm -hmm. small business owners, two out of three, if you want to talk about stats, are wired in the state of pain. So why most businesses fail is the pain tolerance gets too high Mm -hmm. and they opt out. It literally is a pain equation. It's not that they didn't have enough money. It's not that they the pain got too hard and they're like, I'm out. And so these behavioral modification of how to move from one to another is what unlocks success. How do I stay in a pain, in a state of gain longer than anybody else? And then you, you, you win, right? I can stay in gain forever. Doesn't even matter what's happening. I'm in a state of gain. And so those are the little games that we can talk about because I think it's immediate uh, gratification, but immediate tool building for the small business owner, right? And so I shared a lot of these at Grow for God. And it was amazing how many people came up to me like, oh my God, the pinky swear. Oh my God, the four rules. And I'm like, yes, these are called behavior modifications. They're not scary. They're easy to implement. And right away, it puts you in the state of gain, which is a state of flow and nothing, money, resources, right? Conflict and gratitude can never exist at the same time. Never, never, ever, ever. So if you're like, I want more money, okay, but you're in a state of pain, not a chance in hell. So what do you do then? Well, take that example. I want more money. I'm in a state of pain. So what what do I do with that then? How do I, what do I do? Yeah. So most people, and I listen to Breakfast with Champions all the time and Clubhouse, Uh (laughs) most people are experienced collectors. They collect an experience, they collect an experience, they take a lot of notes, they collect an experience. Okay. Mm. You're collecting pain. Because what is it subconsciously doing? All these people are doing all this stuff and I'm not. So it's a pain of pain. It's FOMO, right? It's the worst place for you to be. Right. Is reinforcing in your head all of the note taking, right? Because remember, if you hear it and then you write it down, it imprints and you're imprinting, I'm not good enough. Mm. That's not working. Right. But if you take the exact same thing and that exact same experience, and yet now you analyze, what am I getting out of it? Right. So even if I say, okay, between you and I, you and I are hanging out. Yep. For no Just reason at all, you turn around and punch me really hard in the face. <laughs> okay. Not like you would never do that. And I would go, well, that's interesting. What am I learning from that? Mm. Well, if you push Ramon a little too far, he gets physical. Mm. Or maybe I go, well, he's a physical person and that doesn't work for me. That experience for me is a game. I am so happy you did that because now I know. So if, wow. if you're learning from every experience, you're not attached to the outcome. If you're not attached to the outcome, you're in a state of gain. If you're not attached to the outcome, money flows to you. But if you're going, oh my God, I have to get this deal. Oh my God, I have to get this deal. Well, you're attached to the outcome. It's not going to happen, right? You're spraying and praying. And so what I'm trying to understand is that the mind sets the intention, but the body in alignment from here to here sets the energy of what can happen. And so small business owners, because we're all over the board, right? Yeah. Yes, we are. I, I am Amelia, raising my hand. I'm all, of, that's all me. over the board. <laughs> well, that creates chaotic, chaotic yeah. energy, conflicting energy. And that means you make money and it goes right out the door. Comes mm. in, goes right out, comes in, right out. Because there's no stability in the experience. But when you ground and say, These are, now it depends on who you listen to. So Warren Buffett, Steve Jobs, I can go on and on, say there is one thing that you need to do, time blocking, Mm -hmm. right? I use the power of three for a lot of reasons. I love the trilogy. That's kind of my shtick. It's my thing. So three, I accomplish three things without fail every day. If you have more than three things, right, on that list, you're, you're guessing because the list is like the never ending hallway. Yeah. 
So when you have a list that has more than three things on it, you are subconsciously in a state of pain because what are you saying to yourself? I never can get this done. I never finish. I never accomplish. You live in a vicious cycle that's saying you're abandoned. You're not good enough. Or you're not worthy. That's what that to-do list is listing. My, I keep a to-done list. Done. Wow. Right? So these things are done. So what I say to people to build confidence, to be mm -hmm. able to stick in it longer as a business owner, always measure backwards. Don't measure from today oh. to tomorrow. That's a state of failure. That's a state of less. That's a state of pain. You're saying, if I lose 10 pounds, then I'll be happy. That's measuring right. forward. If I get more money, then I'll be successful. Horrible. No successful person does that. If you measure from today into reality of yesterday, yes, I got up this morning. Woohoo. Yes, I took care of my hierarchy of needs. Woohoo. Yes, I made the call that I need to. You're in a state of gain of actualities. Right. Always measure backwards keeps you in a state of gain. Always learn from every experience keeps you in a state of gain. Here's my other big one. Never solve a problem alone. Mm. Never, ever do island thinking. The minute I write conflict, I go, ooh, that's an outcome I wasn't expecting. I get a buddy. I'm like, hey, Ramon, you're actually a better networker, people, sure. salesperson guy than I am. Let me run this thing up by you. What are you thinking? But this, Amelia, one thing, this means though that you have to surround yourself with people that you trust. Let's take that example. Amelia's going through something in her company, whatever it is. She's not going to post that in the New York Times or put it on Facebook. No, she, no, right. no. I don't have to trust you. If you are the expert, I always go to the expert. Okay, okay. I don't go to people who are make-believing or pretending to be an expert or sure. guessing and figuring it out. I go to the biggest sub subject matter expert I know. Got it. And I ask the person who is actually doing what it is I want to do. It doesn't mean I trust them. It doesn't even mean that I like them and I want them to come to dinner. It means they have demonstrated with real receipts, they're doing mm. what I'm trying to accomplish. So I'm like, hey, yo, this is what I'm struggling at. How do you see? What would you do next? And then I analyze why was my instinct to do this and their instinct was to do that. So I'm in the experience learning. Remove all that emotional BS. Emotion has nothing to do. I don't care if you trust me. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Right. I can open up my bank account. I can walk you around my houses. And guess what? I tell you and say this, open up your wallet. I'll tell you how smart you are. Yes, yes. Do you have to like me? No, most people don't like me. Most people don't like me and that's okay, but they respect me because I'm yes. very good at what I do. That is true, Amelia. I'm curious then, uh, Amelia, and I see the questions coming in. This is this uh, chat is being lit up. <laughs> Somebody's like, I want to go to Amelia's home right now. Stop the conference room. Let me go right a lot of people have been here. A lot of people right. from Breakfast with Champions have been here. Yeah, so Amelia, indeed, that was, a, that was a fly party. So indeed, listen. How do people start, Amelia? And I say this, talk to the Ramones of the world. I see my friend uh, Tara's here. You know Tara's well. Oh, you know the name. Love you know, Tara. she love knows, me some Tara. Yeah. yeah she, she knows these things. But Amelia, as you may get a sense, Ramon is that tactical, practical guy. I've only been newly, Amelia, introduced to this way of thinking largely because of Breakfast Champions. So my point being, talk to the person how we start, how we unlock, if this is relevant to it, yeah. our genius. Yeah. How we unlock this, those who are I love new people to this. like you, okay? You. I love the tactical thinker, right? Because here, I'll fix this for you right now. Okay. Has it ever really been a tactic that stopped you from success? No. No, because you can Google how to do anything. That's right. The question is never how, the question is always who? Hmm. who do you know who have demonstrated what it is that you're trying to do or that you're struggling with? Who do you know hmm. that knows how? If you're asking how, you have already failed because you don't know how. Wow. If you knew how, if you knew the tactics, Mr. Tactical, you would be doing it. So it's not tactics that stops people from success. Yes. People stop themselves from success. People. And so that's why I'm saying I am a master at people problems. You know, you've heard me say this before. You cannot perform your own brain surgery. You can't see it. 
right? And so you have to go to somebody so that you can see your reflection. That's the whole point of Genius Key. All it's showing is your own current thought state, your current reflection, and then you choose, is it working for you? And if the answer is no, then you drop into the learning module to pick up the key that will work for you. And then here's the big part, and Tara is a master at this, is what do I have to let go? You Mm. can't keep shoving all of this in your brain without releasing because that causes stagnancy, right? Confusion of, I don't know what to do. There's so much in here. I don't know what to do. So when you learn and know better, you must remove what no longer serves you, whether that's thinking, whether that's people, whether that's environment. So every in must have an out or Mm. you're setting yourself up to get stuck. So every new thought that I have that I go, wow, that's awesome. Then I go, okay, how does this new awareness conflict with what I knew a moment ago? Right. What do I have to move away from so that the new information can imprint and I don't repeat what is more comfortable, which is my habit, as I practice something new? Again, this whole tying it all together is not what small business do. They run, 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 run. Right. If they would spend, literally... If they would spend 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the night setting up the brain for success, and then what I call as a mind sweep in the evening, what worked about today? What didn't work about today? And what am I going to do differently tomorrow? Start, stop, swap. What do I have to start doing? Because today some things didn't work. What am I going to stop doing? Because I absolutely know this is a pattern. I'm this, I've seen this movie before. And what am I going to try to swap that I'm going to do differently? I do it every single day. I oh. also do one, one, one right, every right. day for 35 years, 35 years. I've been doing that same behavior. That's why I, everybody is in my network or know somebody in my network. Cause for 35 years, three, five, I have called somebody and said, Hey, just checking on you. I want to know if you're okay. I don't want anything checking on you. Two, I give a gift every day, just like you're doing. You're giving out a book. Every day I give a gift in some form. Doesn't that be crazy? Sometimes I just buy somebody a cup of coffee. I buy them lunch. I send them a book, whatever, a gift. And then I make a a, a connection. I call somebody and I say, I really think you need to meet Ramon. Mm. And that consistency allows me to, with confidence to say, If you don't know somebody who knows me, you're full of shit. Because I've been around that long. Yeah, yeah. That long. And you are well, and you are massively well connected. Amelia, I want to package this in if it's a fit genius key. Somebody said in the chat, I did the G I it's great. I'm glad I did the genius key. Well, some people don't know what the genius key is, so I feel very left out to some people. I mean, <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want you to go back and end this on these things, but I want to sandwich in okay. the genius key. As I understand it, because I've taken it as well, I've signed up as a member. Um, it can help with a lot of these things, I believe. Can you help us understand why this genius is so important? But then, p- particularly, what is the genius key? And then people can go to the app store to download it. Can you talk a bit about that so we understand that? Please, I know sure. it's a very important part of this. One hundred percent. So, what is identifying? Right, identifying part of your identity. Right, is what your genius is rooted in, right? What makes you a genius, right? It's the thing that you do that takes little to no effort. It's the thing that you've always been doing. It's not something that you were taught or you were learned. Right. It's innate instinct to you. And what are those keys and how do they apply to what it is you're trying to do? Right. Then it also identifies keys that are not going to work in your favor of what you're trying to do. So I'll give you an example about me. Okay. I have probably one of the fastest and strongest pace keys. I run very, very You sure do, Amelia. You sure do. (laughs) But it feels normal to me. That's my state of normal. And so prior to understanding this, I would wonder why people would burn out. I would wonder why they were like huffing and puffing, right? Because my normal is a stretch for somebody else. For sure. So I needed to learn that in a team environment or on some projects like financing, legal, systems, fast pace, not to my best interest. Mm, Not to my best interest. So I put somebody who's got a slower key in front of me to lead the pace of the project. 
Now, other things like hunting, sales, hunting, not farming, hunting sales, I'm awesome at, yeah. and I lead at my pace. But what I let the people around me know is, listen, we're going to sprint the next 10 days. It's going to be uncomfortable for you. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel overly tired. I need you to take care of your heart, high acre needs because what I require at this pace, you need more. So that we're clearly understanding that I'm asking more than their natural state. Right. What they're asking me is to go a little bit slower than my natural pace. That causes me to trigger my survival. I think I'm dying. Ooh. Yeah. So it means I feel like, whoa, hold on. What do you, why? Right. And so this knowledge of your keys of what's working for you, what's not working for you, more importantly than anything else, it gives you team, right? Your project mm -hmm. to team leader, which member of your team needs to lead and why? Yeah. And what does that mean for everybody else? Even if you're a solopreneur, right? I love this game. I literally used to have a jacket, a sweat. I had all these little dress up costumes mm -hmm. in my office of party of one. And when I needed to be the accountant, I put on my blazer and I would do my bill collection, <laughs> right? I'd be that, that sure. I would be up, right? And then when I needed to be sales, I was like, had my little letterman sweater on like, hey, how you doing? I put on the different roles to get my mind in the frame right. of what I needed to do. Like I do this with doctors all the time, the white lab coat, right? Super yep. professional, but that will kill you if they're trying to run their business. Right. right? You, so they have to put on another persona. Right. And we've talked about that. A lot, a lot of people have nicknames sure. for the different personalities of what they want to do. So Genius Key is giving you insights of your current thought state. So you know what is working and what is not working and then who to pair with so that you can have a stronger impact and a shorter road to the success in that one area. So ideally, if somebody was a team of two, team of three, team of five, whatever it is, people should take it as a group, as it were. Don't cheat and, you know, but look at it as a group and then come back, maybe have a discussion or something like that and say, hey, what's your key? What's your key? Now we can fit better here. Or here's why there's so much conflict. We're matched yep. wrong. Is that yep. And we're doing right? free decoding sessions on Wisdom and in Clubhouse. Literally, Genius Key, come in, you tell me what your results are, and I'll tell you why it matters to you, what to keep, what to stop, what to swap who you need to partner with. Like we're giving out all of these answers on how to do that. And then the next uh, download of Genius Key, if you're signed up in the apps, the next iteration is coming and we have a thousand and eight layers to come. Wow. Wow. This is powerful. And so I recommend people go to the app stores, the best place in Melee, correct? Oh, 100%. Don't they go to any websites. Either yep. go to Google Play if you're a droid or the, the Apple store if you're uh, an Apple user. And I have mine here, but Genius Key, and I think if in case I think there's in case there's more than one Genius Key Institute is where you'll find it at, just so people know. I just want to pull this up here. Yeah, this Genius um, Key is going to look like a little gold head. Yeah. Here it is. That's, That's it. Head. Look how good you are. Of look course. I, listen, I, I'm, I'm all into Amelia. So one question I'm having, Amelia, you see that high performers, thank you. Jennifer says that sounds awesome. Absolutely, Jennifer. Don't forget. Take a look at the Genius Key. Go to your app store, and Emilia's going to cheer. And Regina's Genius here, key. too. Hi, Regina. Woo, Regina's Hi. here as well. Take the Genius Key and, and see Amelia. She's giving these sessions out on Wisdom, which is the audio app, and on Clubhouse, and that she can help you with that as well when you take it. I'm curious, Amelia, is this unlocking this self-awareness, what high-performance people have, such as I've studied them, not a lot, but I've read a lot of books and a lot of movies and documentaries, Navy SEALs, yes. possibly – the Michael Jordan's, the last dance, something like this ish. Is this kind of what they've been able to unlock probably with help from trainers? Is this it, Amy? Yeah, because so very high performers, their mindset is to do one thing better and master it, mm -hmm. right? They're not generalists, right? High performers will tell you they do one thing. It's the messed up school systems that we're in that try to make us generalist. We're not wired as humans to ever be a generalist. That's what technology does. Technology right. rinses and repeats. A human is meant to live at its highest and best self, which is right. innovation, problem solving, right? Interpersonal, all that is where humans are meant to live. Right. But we're, fi we're, for we're fighting the mindset of if I made all A's and one D, right? Everybody tells you get better at that D. No, hire somebody. Turn the A into amazing, 
right? That's where you need to focus your efforts. Same thing with your children. Don't do that to them because you're creating them to live in pain. When you grade yourself, that means you're comparing and comparing is the kiss to death. I am the very best Amelia and I suck at being a (laughs) Ramon. I guess that's true. (laughs) No, you're right, Amelia. So, So those listening today, Amelia, those listening today, for sure, people should get the genius key on your app store. You've made us aware, and again, it's not fair in a 30-minute discussion. You made us aware that we probably have some limitations that we need to get around. Is there anything else we should be thinking of or doing? Or do you think, Amelia, by the fact that we're even more aware of it, that that may be one of the keys to helping by the fact that we're a little more aware today thanks to your comments? Does that make sense? You know, like the boss today may be aware of it. The the number one thing, if you hear nothing else, and and I don't care if you download the app or not, right? In this solar solo panor space, being solo, you will fail. Mm. You will fail. Mm. You have to lean out of your comfort zone and ask for help. People, all people, 99.9% of people want to help because when they help, they feel worthy, right? And so you just have to lean in and say, hey, listen, I'm seeing your social. I think it's amazing. Could you look at mine and lend some advice? Hey, I see that you're incredible with systems. I would love for you to take a look at my business and and share, right? Trade services, right? If you're good at something, trade it for something else. Never solve a problem alone. It Mm -hmm. is the epitome of the master mind. We are greater together than we are by themselves. I do nothing alone. Nothing alone. I'm always leaning in and going, this is what I'm seeing. What do you see? And then I always go, tell me more. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Tell me more about that. That's interesting. Tell me more. How did you come to that conclusion? What experience did you have that led to that conclusion? Get really curious. The more curious you are as a small business owner, the more successful you will be because in the state of curiosity, you are not alone. Wow. No, you're right, Amelia. I'm curious and if, if, if this is a relevant question, but you've done so much in your years of experience and working with some big name celebrities. Maybe you work with people even you can't tell us you work with. Um, <laughs> can you just tell us any stories on that? Meaning, I guess my question would be, how have you done this? What, what was your genius? What was your key that enabled you to be in some of the places that maybe people listening were like, wow, she's done so much. Yeah. What's so special about Amelia that caught, I know you've done broadcast television, radio, you've done mm-hmm. celebrities. Help us understand Amelia and what we can learn from that, if that makes sense. I think that, you know, and I've, let me just tell you, I have had some very painful lessons. I mean, like knock the wind right out of your sails, like in the fetal snot cry position going, I have no idea how I got myself here and how I'm going to get out. Like, let's be clear for every win you see on my resume, there was Mm. 10, oh my goodness failures. So I win big, but I fail even bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what I will tell you is what I had to learn the hard way. I will say this is my $11 million lesson. I had to learn the hard way that none of this is about me. None Mm -hmm. of it is about me. And I am fortunate that I am now surrounded with people who are committed to the work. I don't care if you ever know who I am. What I do care about is that you know my work Hmm. because my work will continue. I always tell my people, if I get hit by a bus today, carry on. The legacy is about the work. The legacy is to heal unattended pain. That's the reason why I'm doing this. So when I removed Amelia and the I, 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 and I made Hmm. it about you, my whole world changed. That is powerful, Amelia. I think that's powerful. And I think that I, 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 I've been amazed to see how you move, how fast you move. And I think one other question I have for you, Amelia, why is it so important? I know some key people in our mutual lives and other things that you've flown to and met people in person. Mm-hmm. You spent time with people. Why has that been so important to you, Amelia? I'm sure you're not doing everybody you meet, but it seems like there's some oh, no, kind yes. of gift picking with a thread. <laughs> yes. yes, it is. So I, my belief system, this is what I've learned about people. Right. Like it or not like it, because I'll just prepare you before I open up my mouth. Everybody here is going to go, oh, my God, I can't believe she just said that. Um, I spend money 
and time with people very quickly, right? Mm. Time is your most valuable asset sure. and money. And so I spend money with people to figure out who absolutely is full of crap, right? Mm. And what I mean by that is, you know, people say they're this and that they're the other thing. And then I hire them. And then that $5,000 saved me millions, mm. millions. And so just even in our little world, I've spent money with a lot of people that sure. <laughs> and guess what? They're not on my team. I wonder why. I wonder why. There's yeah. a reason why, yeah. right? Now that's not to say I'm better or worse, but for what I'm trying to do in my business plan, right? Where I'm going, the pace that I'm going, it wasn't a good fit. So the yeah. sooner you know that, the better, because you would rather have a hundred dollar lesson, a thousand dollar lesson, because it's going to cost you the longer yes. you're in it. So don't wait for the $25,000 lesson, because every one of those lessons that I've had, there was a sign along the way that it wasn't going to work, right? It's that hope. You hope more for others than they're willing to sacrifice. Sure. So when you have to realize that I can't love you more than I love myself. I can't believe in you as a teammate more than you believe in yourself. What I can do is I can be honest. And I can go, I see so much potential in you, but here's what I believe might get in the way of our relationship. Right. How do we think we're going to handle that? Wow. Amelia, that is, somebody said it here. I'm going to find it again. Mic drop moment. Hi, uh, thank you. I don't know who said that. <laughs> that was uh, Lisa Conda. You can oh, thank her. thank you, Lisa. Thank you, thank you. Listen, this is a hard journey. It is. Yeah. Okay, this is for the road less traveled. But we're in, we're in the gig economy now. Starting a business now is the smartest thing that you can do. So if you don't want to have uh, all of the load to carry, if you don't sure. want all of the pain points, if you don't want to do it alone, and that's okay. Listen, we're partnership animals. We're really not meant to do anything alone. Team up with an entrepreneur that is a little bit ahead of you, mm -hmm. right? There's power in partnership. There's power right in the the collective. So get together and figure out what your keys are, who's going to lead what and run hard together, together. But now is the time. Now is the time because you're ahead of it right now. You're ahead of it in a minute. It's going to be very noisy and very crowded. So do it now, right? Like what you're offering Ramon to, you know, you, to, when you get side by side with people and your community, you're side by side with other people yep. that are just like you, yep. Yep. just like you. And you can go, Hey, you can't talk to your employees. You can't go, listen, I'm really wondering how we're going to do payroll. You can't do that. Right. You can't do that. And I remind people that I say, you're not an entrepreneur until you've charged payroll on your credit card. When you've charged payroll on your credit card, you call me, right? Because that is entrepreneurship. That yeah. is what it is. That is when you're sitting there going, I have no idea how Friday payrolls gone up. Not a clue, right. not a clue at all, right? And so when you're in a network like what you have with other business owners, they're saying to you, here's something I've done, here's something I've done, here's something. Right. I mean, I've even been in communities, my forum group, which God bless my forum group, where I'm like, hey, listen, can I borrow today and I'll pay you tomorrow so that you can do my payroll and then I'll, this is what it is. You gotta get side by side with yes. people who are committed to figuring it out, not quitting, Figuring it out. Keep pushing. The answer is there. Well, Amelia Antonetti, you are a uh, treasure trove of gold, diamonds, and platinum and everything else. I thank you for your time. You, you, The fact that, I, I'm not going to cry right now, but you said yes to Ramon. I adore you, Ramon. I, listen, I think you are a superstar. I, I, I always that. say that there is nobody who responds faster than you do. And that's part of your character. I know that if I ask you something, it's done. And that will give you respect all the way up the food chain. Because remember, we all know each other and we talk. And so when somebody says something about Ramon, I'm like, oh man, that man is Johnny on the spot. Yeah. If he says so, it is. You can take it to the bank. And that type of reputation, it's golden. It's golden. So thank you for all that you do. And I am honored to call you friend. Amelia, wow. I'm going to I'm gonna put that on replay and just have my morning alone. <laughs> Amelia Antonetti, everybody, thank you so much. Definitely check out all she does, Genius Key. Download, download the app. Download the app. app. Genius Key Institute for sure. And we'll be pushing that out later on. Amelia Antonetti, thank you, my dear.
appreciate your Thank time you. with us. Thank you. Tonight. Blessed to know you. Okay, bye-bye. Everybody, that was my friend, Amelia M. Thonetti, who I've gotten to know a lot on Breakfast with Champions on Clubhouse that I've been telling everybody about for the last four billion years. You can see the passion she has for people. I would say business success now. It goes beyond that. Amelia has the passion for people for humans. And she's done so much. And I really mean it. Her saying yes to me means a lot. In fact, all of our amazing speakers saying yes, it means a lot. They could be doing something else with their time, but they say yes to Ramon. That means a lot to me for those listening live to us today. And we'll be having these recordings blasting them throughout the internet as well for those who can join us there. We have our next speaker coming up in one minute, but why delay? Because I see the absolute amazing my brother from another mother, Brad Caldwell, is here. Brad, I remember, Brad, when we first met, I think it was the first time in New York City, Breakfast Champions. Yeah. We said, was that? Yeah. Yeah. We said hi to each other. And the one word I heard you say, could be more, was about listening, Brad. Was that, is, mm. that how, is that correct, Brad? That's probably something you would have said? Oh, yeah. No, no. I think listening is uh, probably the most fundamental trait of a good leader. Yeah. So, Brad, I'm so glad you're here, man. Thank you for being here. Uh, Brad owns his own branding, marketing, I'm just call it listening agency. And I must say, new leak of this public news is head of marketing at Breakfast with Champions. So, yeah, Brad, thank thanks for being here, brother. I'm glad you're here. And I have a lot of questions I can ask you, but I would love for you, please, just to take a minute or two. What's your best advice for the business owner, Brad? If I can just leave you space just to talk, because I must say, when I hear you speak all the time, Brad, it's amazing your shares, your knowledge. And I said to myself, I want to bring Brad Caldwell to the Smart Hustle community to share this man's knowledge and experience. So, Brad, I'm here to listen, but I have a lot of questions. But can you just start off and share with us something about, especially what you've learned about small business, especially solo business growth? Brad Caldwell. Yeah, man. Gosh, thank you so much. I think, um, first, brother, congratulations on Grow your solo and uh, all the great work you've been doing, man. And this event, this is fun. I've been listening in since the start. Um, it is going to be distracting for me to see chats, especially when friends pop in. Hey, Tara. <laughs> Good to see you, dear friend. Um, but I, uh, but man, I think, uh, well, you nailed the first one. I think good, list good leaders listen. Mm. Um, more than anything, I actually shared in uh, Breakfast with Champions today. Uh, I was speaking at an event and I stopped speaking kind of to do like the pregnant pause, you know, like you're trying to be a really good speaker and you're just like, and then, you know, feeling really good about yourself because yeah, you did yeah. something clever. And, and then I heard off kind of in the distance, three or four people just talking amongst themselves in a room of about 450 people. And I realized that in the silence, I spotted a distraction. I spotted a dislocation, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I think in order to properly assess what I think is the second most important thing, which is alignments, you have to be able to listen Yeah, because we're not all in tune with our businesses like we are with our body. Like I don't have to hear my knees say, ouch, because there's a lot of nerve connections. When I get up in the morning at 41 for my body to be like, whoa, go back to bed yes. or my man, you did that wrong. Like, like, like reverse. Yes. You, you rolled in correctly. And, and instead, since I don't have all that acumen, I haven't walked with my business. Like I've been walking with my physiology, my mm. anatomy, my entire life. So I don't know normal and I don't know change and I don't know progress. I need to listen. Listen is how you hear the distractions. Listen is how you really understand, especially when you are by yourself, but you are connecting to a consumer whether it's B2B or B2C, mm -hmm. you have got to be able to hear them in order to reach them. And wow. I think so listening and then alignment, I mean, nothing is harder to deal with than uh, dislocation. I always use the analogy of my own shoulder, which I did dislocate pretty bad. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's the debilitating trauma of a dislocation. There's the, the more major trauma, but not debilitating. And then there's the minor. And if you don't know the difference in the kinds of dislocations you can have in a business. Uh, you're going to dress every wound in your business like it's an amputation. Mm. Or you're going to underwhelm the stress of your business and keep doing the same basic tactics as if it's, I got to I gotta set my alarm for 548 because 6 mm. o'clock just don't do. Mm. Well, that's minor, friend. 
that's just a little, you, you click your alarm clock or you play with your Apple watch or whatever you do and you fix your alarm. But when it's, I can't keep good talent, that's entirely different. I can't generate, I can't close. I've got, I saw the guy from Thrive, saw Grant earlier. I've been listening the whole time, buddy. And, Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and, and what he said was, you know, we can get you the leads. Yeah. But it comes down to the owner, to the leader, especially when you're down to the one to close. And oftentimes the problem with our closing is that we can't adjust because we don't see the misalignment. So listen, align and execute, man. Those are the, I love that. I think I love those that. are the three keys, brother. I don't know, Brad, if you're prepared to do this, but you talk about listening alignment um, and the third one again, <laughs> Clo close. Close, yeah. yeah, execute, yes, sir. Do you mind sharing, there's nothing confidential or anything like that, but I've been on Breakfast with Champions for months, as all my community knows, I rave about it. You may see yeah. my IG, I tell everybody about it. It's up-leveled my life. You as CMO, as it were, Glenn, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Brad, can you share a bit what you're doing? And I say this, not about BWC in general, but this is brand new. It started from 100 misfits in New York in the top of a hotel. Nobody knew each other. Brad's a dude. I'm a dude. Now we're building something. So what I'm trying to ask is, can you parlay that to the small businesses listening? Yeah. Many of them may be recently fired from their job, trying to build from scratch. So if, the, if you understand what I'm trying to align here, what you're doing for yeah. new, how can we learn? Go ahead. How do we learn? Yeah, so I don't want to distract from the from the opportunity that Glenn's going to have when he, when he speaks to you guys. Sure. Or in Sarah. general, high level. Yeah. But if you think about the, the beginning of, of smart hustle, if you think about the beginning of spark, yeah. if you think about um, the beginning of breakfast with champions, which really you would say it was a seed that was planted. What are we at now? 1,005 days ago when rise and grind got started. Yeah. And then from rise and grind, something developed. So I think maybe the first takeaway is, the baby that you think is beautiful right now might not be the baby you're walking with in a couple of years when you learn your chops, mm -hmm. you know, like my first business is my current business, right? My second business did not make any of the mistakes my first business made. So now I got two kids and I love both my babies, but man, this new one that's launching later this year, it's always, she's pretty. Oh, yeah. uh, it's, well, it's, it's seamless. Got partnerships and alliances it's partly manufacturing. I, I assess manufacturing costs, things that three years ago, entrepreneur wannabe Brad was like, um, how do you LLC and what does that stand for? <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> you know? and, so, and so having come from the corporate world, it was it was a real shock to the system. Yeah. And now as Breakfast with Champions, which is, I mean, really, man, it was a clubhouse inspiration, right? right. And it was a new thing on a new app that no one knew. And, and then six, seven months after its inception, a bunch of us misfits as you really accurately I say that in a funny way, you know? Yeah, yeah no, it's real. Yeah. I know the crowd is misfits. Um, and we, we all kind of matriculate in and yeah. give kind of some fresh wind to the existing fire. Yeah. And I think it um, ignited this idea that there was more, and we could reach more. Yeah. And so now where we're at now is really looking at Breakfast with Champions as a media opportunity, right. a media company. How can we capture social media? How can yeah. we capture digital marketing? How can we capture event spaces? How can we capture one-to-one -one communication? How can we revolutionize things like coaching and accountability and messaging and inspiring people at all levels of engagement. Sure. So whether you just, you know, if you're not in the clubhouse streets, you don't know this phrase, but if you're a party hat yeah. in the room and you just felt good for 10 minutes because you heard Ramon and the ding and the ding and the ding. And now you're looking up a bunch of articles. It's about five dings, Brad, five dings. Get it right. Ding, 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 ding. Uh, and I, I, I couldn't possibly replicate Ramon. <laughs> now, you would be someone, I would, I would watch that sketch. I want to. I want a Ramon Ray impersonator. If anyone <laughs> on here is a Ramon Ray impersonator, I will give you my my personal email is Brad at SparkBusinessStrategies.com. You email me right now. I will. I, I'll give you books. I'll, 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 I don't know. I'll give you. I'll give you kids. We have three. I'll give you an extra one. Um, man, I we. I want to see that because uh, I couldn't. I couldn't possibly do it. But that person yes. who gets it, who gets a, a little bit of juice. 
from that segment that, yeah, you and I planned it, but we speak all the time. So we're prepared. We're prepared. So we're ready to give our 25, 27 minute talk and then move on. And it was good for someone for a moment all the way to to Tara, who is going to be mentioned, apparently, this entire event. And when I met her in New York, that's perfect timing. Oh, that is marketing brilliance, Ramon. Yeah. Nailed it. You and your team, golf clap. Very yeah. good. But when when she connects with me face to face and yeah. says, Brad, let's stay connected. Well, connectivity means something so entirely different. Yes. And so does that mean, Brad, I want to I'm going to listen to your segments. Does that mean, Brad, I want to have you as a consultant in my life professionally or Brad, I'm just going to follow you on apps and we're going to talk and it's going to be fun. We're going to stay, we're going to stay together. So, man, I think, I think what Breakfast with Champions is really trying to innovate and then articulate. For sure. No, I I love it. Innovate and articulate. Wow. That's, that's like a hashtag right there, Brad. I'm curious, what does this mean then to the small business owner? Yeah. You are as as a newly a CMO of, of a brand new company. What can we learn, especially as we think of the end of this year mm. or of the new year? What does this mean for that accountant, for that lawyer, for that consultant, that coach, that speaker, that consultant who's still struggling, Brad? Wisdom yeah. just came out. Clubhouse is what two years old. Now we're told nobody's on Facebook. Uh Chandler and Nate are telling us to use mm. TikTok. Yeah. What what is your message to them? Should they be worrying and running and trying to catch up? Should they calm down? What do we do, Brad? There's just so many messages thrown at the small business owner, yeah. and they're still trying to eke out more money. Any thoughts yeah. on that broad question? I think I think first recognize that the thing that the 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 environment, the atmosphere that brought me and you together, that created in essence Breakfast with Champions, that has allowed the springboard and the connectivity all at the same time, is a year old. Hmm. There's a lot of clubhouse rooms that are celebrating, oh, I was one of the first users, and they mean November. Right. That's true. So so when we're talking about small business and what your small business can do, like um, personal story, when 2020 started, I had so many good plans for my business. I had... (laughs) <laughs> strategies and funnels and all these other great things. And then obviously what happened happened. But as a company, we hold very loosely, loosely to our methods. Sure. We don't ever want to be um, accused of methodology over mm-hmm. solutions. So we won't make idols out of our methods. Instead, we'll make heroes out of our clients. That's kind of our goal. That's our, that's our core ethos. And so when we when we look at that and we realize, well, if we're nervous, right, what's this gonna mean for our clients? And I did what I never do. Now I know you only know me in this way, sure. But in early 2020, no one knew Brad Caldwell's name, and everyone who knew Spark just knew Spark. Right. I talked like there was a big old team. It was me by myself and a couple of 1099s. Sure. And it changed because I said, well, I got to get in front of the camera and tell people it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Cause that's what I was telling my team. And so we were working like dogs feeling great yes. and we were doubling and then we tripled. Then we quadrupled and then we quintupled. And I think the only reason we quintupled and it stopped there is cause I don't know how to say whatever after quintuple. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I'm from the South. I don't know what that is either. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to say six toppled and it's not but- right. It's not right. Six topple is not accurate. It's not right. what it is. But when we when we looked at the strategy that we executed, it was very simple. Mm. We knew who we were sent to serve. And we knew how we were. That's a lot of children, a sex tuplet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we knew exactly who we were going to help. Yes. And so when a problem ro- arose, we just made a pivot. Now, I want to be real careful with that word. Because I'm a, I'm a little averse to the word pivot. I got you. Because if you're here now and you're a solo entrepreneur as a response to 2020 and you worked in the healthcare industry and today you're a digital marketer, mm. friend, yeah. you, didn't, you didn't pivot. You moved. Mm. Stop saying pivot. That's disingenuous. The reason it's so hard is because you hold up earth and walked away and then replanted. 
That's what that is. And so make sure you know the difference. A pivot for me in the branding and marketing space is to represent a larger brand as a part of their company, which right. is what we've done with Breakfast of Champions. Because up until now, we haven't had companies that really went far above five million annual. Sure. And it's been it's been really good. So I think that's an excellent way to state it. Because for some of us, it's we need to we need to move. Yeah. You know, some of our prayers uh, are often like, man, I I just pray God gives me a pivot. Mm. Sometimes the prayer is, Lord, move or move me. Like, yes. I, and he'll do that. He'll do that work. And so I think, man, um, the biggest the biggest opportunity for the solo entrepreneur is to recognize that the secret sauce is the entrepreneur. It's not yeah. the product. It's not the service. It's not the mission. Mm. It's the person who's doing the work. Yeah, because things may change and when things change or it's going to get dark or it's going to get hard. Right. It's going to be tricky. You're going to lose the client or lose the bid or you're going to have a great event and then it's going to hit a flat note. Yep. Something's going to go bad. You're going to get your shot to say that thing in that clubhouse room and then you'll get the red bar of death. <laughs> and you you have a connectivity issue and if you know anything about business you know it is riddled with connectivity issues yeah. Mm, yeah. all the time because right now in order to do this there are four human beings downstairs sure. that I'm not with connectivity sure. issue and, and mine are two, do, two of my human beings upstairs yeah <laughs> and in, order to, in order to do this I'm not doing this yes yeah, yes yeah. Or this, yes. working on the book that's on that whiteboard over there, or answering copious emails from Sarah. Yes, yes, indeed. You know what I mean? And so when when we make that, I'm going to tell you what we do. We choose to cheat. Yeah. Because everybody cheats something. And we yeah. have to reckon with the fact that all the choices of entrepreneurship are on us. It might not always benefit us. It might not always work out for us. It might not always be our jam. However, it is my call. Wow. wow. I'm not where the buck stops. I'm where it gets manufactured. I'm where it, I'm where the buck gets discussed. I'm where the valuation of the buck came from. And I'm where the buck stops. Yeah. And then when I create a team, the ne- and that's the next step is learning how to let go of some of the yes. responsibilities of that leadership. Even when you're hiring VAs and event coordinators. And like you said at the beginning, you know, could you do the graphics? Yes. Right. What did you say? They might be busted. Um, they can be busted. I said I could do the graphic. Be busted. <laughs> I can do the, the, the event. It'll look terrible. I can, I can do it all. I'm pretty talented, but it won't be as good as other people. You're so true, Brad. I'm curious. How have you learned how to let go in that? Because you said as your business is growing, that's one thing that's hard for solo business owners. We're so you. Seth Godin said it. You know, I interviewed him on BWC some weeks ago. That as we do it the cheapest, the fastest, the bestest, everything yeah. to our to our chagrin. So mm-hmm. anything that you've done, Brad, where you've had to say, you know what, I've asked Becky to do this. I've asked, you know, George to do this when you've had to say, yeah, what do you, what do, you do when you've had to let go and delegate and move yeah. on? Because you, So you're not back to the same place. Any thoughts on that? There's really no reason to execute listening if you can't execute understanding. Oh, okay. It's a waste of time. Like we, we waste so much time hearing people talk, not listening to what they say. Yes. We will ask our team the right question but we don't listen for the answers. And then we don't listen for the answers because we don't want to affect change. We don't want, we don't want to do something different. We want to do what we've done because we know our own capacity to increase it. So we right. think we can get more. And that the f- most frustrating thing about old adages is that they're old and we still don't listen to them. That is true, Brad. You know that what I mean? True. Like I do. How do, what's the definition of lunacy? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different. Oh, the same result. result. Yes, yes, yes. Correct. You know. Yes. And and so I think if we're going to take the time to listen, we need to take the time to understand. And as you develop teams, as you develop strengths and weaknesses within your own infrastructure right. and your own your own leadership. Yeah. Because the first person you're leading every day is you. Yourself, yep. And, and that's not going to change now that we have a team of five or six and there's another company with partners yep. 
and I'm the CEO of that one, but I'm talking to equal people yeah, yeah. and I'm not the boss in that room. I am not where the buck stops. That buck gets passed around like craziness, right. which is something new for me to learn. But the people who were invested in that new, in that new venture, when I ask them a question, some days they're going to listen to me like I created it. And some days they're going to listen to me like I'm equal. And some days they're going to wake up with the bad knee and be in a bad mood. And I got to understand it, especially in circumstances of change. I think the biggest lesson we learned in 2020 is that we suck at adjusting. Mm. We're bad at it, man. That's true. We're bad and, ho and hopefully this time has, has caused us to get better and better for sure. But Absolutely. listen, Brad Caldwell, what's a great place that people can go to to learn more about you, to connect more with you? What's your best Please. I know there's a few different places, but uh, any particular place you'd like to uh, again, if you are if you are a Ramon Ray, I say this with all all sincerity. Okay, if you are a Ramon Ray impersonator, it's Brad at SparkBusinessStrategies.com. Please, please email me. If you're not, you're welcome to check out my website. This is BrandStrategy.com, or just find me find me on them social media yeah. streets. Follow Breakfast with Champions. I'm always around. Absolutely, Brad Caldwell. I I. Really appreciate your time. I, as you said, you have a lot of things to do. You have a huge priority. And you said yes to me. It means a lot. I appreciate it really more than you know. So thank you, Brad Caldwell, for joining me today. I appreciate it. My pleasure, buddy. Uh, thank you for this. And you and your team have done a great job, man. Keep it up. Be blessed, man. Yes, Love sir. You, Take care. You too, man. All right. Hey, everybody. That was my friend, Brad Caldwell. You saw the link earlier there. He's an amazing, amazing marketing strategist and has a pretty cool career, done some stuff with Chick-fil-A, his own branding company, CMO of Breakfast with Champions, where I hang out just about every single day. I wake up at 425 a.m. to be there for our show every day, 5 to 11. So Brad Caldwell, Man, thank you so much. We see the kudos flying in. And Regina and Tara, thank y'all for being here holding fort. I know y'all may not be able to be here all day. Maybe you can, but we're glad you are here for the time being. My longtime friend is up next, someone I've looked up to, who builds million-dollar women and more articulate, amazing, and smart, and that is Julia Pimsler is up next. Julia, thank you for being here. How are I you? I'm pumped. I am so excited to spend this time with you. Thanks for having me on. You guys are having welcome. too much fun. I've been watching. There is too much fun being had, and <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of becoming the yes. impersonator, so be careful. <laughs> I, did a, I, I took a stand-up class, so you're not safe. <laughs> okay, okay. And by the way, Julia, I love the, the your white background and your shirt. It looks baller. I just, oh, I'm just telling okay, you, I like the colors. Man. It looks nice. Well, you know, you were talking about like learning to delegate and outsource, and I've known you since some of the early days of the Smart Hustle Summits. I used to come to those in person. They were always right. fantastic. You always brought that amazing energy. But I see the leveling up, and it's friggin' awesome. And kudos to you and your team for putting on this incredible online summit that, you know, feels like a real summit in a lot of ways. So yeah. nice. And thanks nice for to saying that. yes. I know that you are, again, we're all busy, but again, we're all busy, but since Julie is here, I know you have a lot going on, Julie. If you're mastermind, you're coaching, you're speaking, you have books. One of is back there, I think, or one of my shelves. So many things you're doing. So I really do appreciate you saying yes to me. My pleasure. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, but Julie, Julie, let's dive right into it. First, uh, do you mind just telling people a bit about what you do? You do so many things. The founder of Million Dollar Women, New York-based online membership community. You have your book that's come out. I know you do some coaching, consulting, a lot of things, Julia. But I think it's important in our conversation of how to scale how to do better, to introduce who you are a bit, because I think it, it, it dovetails right in to how you can help the Smart Hustle community and grow their own businesses. So introduce yourself a little bit, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm a scaling coach and a mindset expert. And those two things go together because in order to scale up, I specialize in helping women get to 1 million in revenues. You usually have to work through some pretty big mindset challenges. And so I started out as just a straight up business coach, but I found so many women had to overcome limiting beliefs, had to work on negative self-talk, had to do a lot of mindset work, as I did, frankly, right? I was absolutely one of the women I'm now coaching, which is why I love them and I just pour everything into helping them overcome these obstacles. And once you do, once you make these big mindset shifts, it becomes so much easier to get the skills and join the networks 
to grow your business. But, you know, I do want to say, because I know that you're helping, you know, solopreneurs and Please. grow your solo, love the new book, love, love, love. Thank if you, you haven't read Ramon's new book, grab <laughs> it, grow your solo, read that tonight. Um, you. But, you know, one of the things that we talk about is you have to have support, right, to do all that. Mm -hmm. And you pointed out a lot of the things that keep entrepreneurs small, right? And we're working on that too in Million Dollar Women. We just created a community, a membership community, so that women across the country can join our community, Million Dollar Women, and hopefully your community too, and all mm -hmm. these communities that can support them. You should not be part of just one community. Yep. I'm probably part of five. I don't know about you, right? <laughs> and I got I to be part of Breakfast of Champions for that yeah. one fun night. So thank you for having me on the Indeed. rooftop. That was amazing. Um, so that we're bringing high growth women together so that they can support each other. I think that is powerful. And you're right about the communities. It's funny. Uh, BWC, Breakfast of Champions, just launched their Breakfast uh, Champions Roundtable. I signed up for that. I'm a paying member. I know you have a community of women and there's several. And I think you're right. You can't doing just one. You know, you don't want to do 20, but I think it's important. But Julia, going back to mindset, I mean, that's one thing I struggle with. Um, I, I hear this over and over and over again. Why can't I just focus, Julia, on Facebook ads? I don't know. You know, hiring a VA, Right. Whatever tactics. Action. Lots and lots of action, right? <laughs> right. Well, here's the thing. Every single thing we have in our life, whether we yeah. like it or don't like it, if you look around at your life a minute, try to suspend judgment and just say, okay, what do I have that's working? Maybe you've got a loving family. Maybe you've got a community who loves you. And then maybe what's not working. Maybe you're not making as much money as you want to. Maybe you don't feel like it's easy to close sales. You get on calls. Half the time they say yes. Half the time they don't say yes. Why is that happening? Well, those are all just results. Hmm. And if you can suspend judgment and think about, okay, well, the results I like are coming from thoughts I had at some point. And if you have a thought over and over again, it becomes a belief. And all beliefs have a positive or a negative emotion attached to them. Right. A belief with a positive emotion, like I love running online summits. I love connecting people, right? <laughs> then you're going to take lots and lots of action. Look at all the things you do, Ramon. You know, you're writing, you're inviting people, you're connecting people. You have a very positive emotion attached to that belief right. that you can convene people and help people. And then that leads to your results. So I actually have an acronym for this. So to help you remember it, if you're listening and you want to kind of use it. Okay, everybody, get your pins right out and your keyboards out. out. <laughs> Here comes the acronym. Unless Go you're ahead, driving, do that. Case, in that case, do it later. And it's, it's T-Bear, T-B-E-A-R. You can write that in a column down a piece of paper. The T is thoughts. A thought you have over and over again will always become a belief. If you have the thought over and over again, I'm not good at selling. Other people seem to be good at that, but I'm not. That will become a belief. Uh, no one in my family really makes a lot of money. Think that over and over again. That becomes a belief. I can't make a lot of money. Nobody in my family ever did. So that's the T is a thought. It becomes a B. That's a B of T bear. The E is emotion. Because once you have a belief, it's either the positive or the negative emotion attached to it. Mm -hmm. Depending if it's positive, then you take the A, right? Lots and lots of amazing action. Mm -hmm. Or if it's negative, you take very little action. If the belief is, I don't like selling, and that's got a negative emotion attached to it, how many emails are you going to send out? How many networking events are you going to go to, you know, to try to sell your services? How many times are you going to call a client just to see if they might want to work with you? Not very many, right? So that's the A you're going to take. And then you get the R of T-Bear, the result. If you want a new result, you have to go all the way back to the thought, change the thought, and you'll get a new result when the chain goes again. Wow. That is powerful. And I see that Tara and some others have been quoting. Oh, thank you. Thoughts, beliefs, emotions, action. Whoa, I think I hope the Smart Awesome Media team did that. Thank you. There we go. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, this so, has been a game changer for so many people in yes. my community because, you know, we're just going through life thinking, well, you know what? If I want the same results as Ramon, right, I'll just do what Ramon does. He put on an online conference. I'll put on an online conference. Well, it doesn't work because you have to have the thoughts that person had, right? Mm. If we want to just go be Oprah, well, we have to have the same thoughts and beliefs <laughs> Oprah has, and then we can have that kind of a huge impact in the world. Right. So this is why I'm so passionate about mindset, Ramon, because when you do that work, you know, sometimes one big mindset shift just changes your entire life, personal, professional. It's really, really exciting. Yeah. This may be, Julia, a duh question, even though I know no question's duh. No, but I'm not. curious, what is it like to, uh, for, for ladies or anyone for that matter, especially because you deal with uh, women entrepreneurs, to work in a coaching program? And people listening, this is no thing that Julia and I worked ahead where I'm trying to sell her thing. I don't get nothing from it. But I'm generally interested in somebody joins a program. 
where it's a mindset issue, Julia. This is not something like eat a bowl of cereal, jump twice, and you'll change your mind. These are things from your mama, your daddy, your school, kindergarten, being bullied, I'm guessing, all these things. So yeah. how long does it take? How does it work? Is it just over time, over two or three years, you begin to lose that? Bad no, stuff? no, we're too impatient for that. We're entrepreneurs. Okay. <laughs> so how does it, 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 you get my point. How does it, what is that yeah. like, that process? Well, I had an amazing experience back in 2015 okay. with a mindset coach who used NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, which some okay. people might've heard of. It's often used in sales. A lot of Olympic athletes use it. Coaches, Tony Robbins draws from it. It's very, very powerful. So I went and got trained in that because I wanted to be able to give people big shifts in small amounts of time, right? Mm -hmm. I did 20 years of therapy and then I did NLP and I had these massive breakthroughs in just, you know, a few days, a few weeks. Mm -hmm. So when people come into our program, we start with mindset always because that's the foundation on which you build your mansion. And to be honest, we don't even care if you get to a million. A million is a placeholder mm -hmm. for a set of dreams, right? Some of our women want to get to 500,000, 800,000. Frankly, I'd rather they make 800,000 and pay themselves 400,000, right? Than make a million and pay themselves 80,000, right? It's not- I'll go for 975,000, Julie. That's what I'll go for, 975. <laughs> and, and pay yourself 900,000 of it. Although I don't know how much your team's going to like that who's listening. But. <laughs> but the point being that you have to start with the mindset work because back to what I was explaining with T-Bear, if a woman comes to me and she says, I'm stuck at 100,000, well, I know she has mindset issues because mm. if she didn't, she would be at 500,000 or at a million. So that's the first thing we have to do is say, okay, what is influencing your thoughts? You know, we don't right. have to like unpack a full Freudian on the couch thing, right? Mm -hmm. But we can ask a few targeted questions when you're a trained mindset coach to get at those limiting beliefs and quickly shift them. So then we can start teaching and you're asking what happens in the program. We start with mindset. We get everyone into the go big mindset so that they can clear the highway, right? So they can right. get on that path. And then we teach strategy, finances, marketing, sales, execution and efficiency, building teams. It's basically like a mini MBA is right. what we're doing. But we're bringing it to women where women are at. Because here's the thing, Ramon, men tend to start their companies in their mid-20s, yep. but women start them in their mid-30s. And what are women doing in their mid-30s often? What are a couple of things women are sometimes doing in their mid thirties? Some are raising kids, some are home, some are in the in the in the work career. But many, like my wife, has been. You know, she she wanted to, she chose. I'd like to raise my babies for a while. She chose well, and you know what? The lot of women entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs because they want that flexibility to spend right. time with their kids. So they you know they start a business, they're all fired up, they're amazing solopreneurs, they're doing yep. everything themselves. And I've heard other people talk about this here today, but then they hit this wall where there's only one of them right? And they're working way too hard. They're trying to take care of their kids, some of them parents as well. And they can't drop everything and go back and get an MBA. Right. One, it's, you know, I looked into an MBA because I hit that wall myself, right? I had two little kids at home. Mm -hmm. I was growing my language teaching business, little Pim. Uh, I got the <laughs> 400,000, but I was like up at 5 a.m. with the kids and then at work, you know, from nine to seven and then back home and put them to bed and back at work. And it was exhausting. I was totally burning myself out. So what we decided with Million Dollar Women is let's bring it to them because they're not going to drop their kids and drop their aging parents sure. and go do an MBA and they don't have time. So we created an online program where they can just do it on their phone or right. on the computer. And it's a combination of asynchronous. So watching videos yep. that I teach and then meeting in small groups with other women and with me and with mentors who are women who've built multi-million dollar businesses and with financial mentors. I love that, Julia. I'm curious, Julia, uh, your program, but in general speaking, um, where does the blend go or how do you know someone's unlocked? I kind of sound like going back to what An Amelia talked about, unlocking your yeah, genius. Yeah, I love what Amelia was talking yes. about. And Brad, yes. Between the mindset and the tactic. You're working with Ramon. You're working with Becky, whoever. How do you know if, if it's a fair question? If not, reword the question. But, you know, between if it's no. His Facebook ads or there's no pixel on his website. That's the problem versus no, you need to just you know, deal with this grief. If you understand my question, how do you kind yeah. of know which one it is? Well, look, I think the beauty of specializing, you've specialized, I've specialized. I only work with women who are making between 75,000 and 750,000. So I know those issues so well wow. that I can see it, right? It's like mm. when they say, well, I love my company, but you know, I feel kind of icky when I'm selling. Like I feel mm. out of integrity. That's just the part I hate, right? 
that's a mindset issue. Or if it's, you know, I've hired all these people, but they didn't work out. And you know what? Hiring people is awful. I hate it and I'm not going to do it. That's a mindset issue, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, how do you become a better manager? It's not the people's fault. <laughs> you hired, yep, yep. right? So it's it's pretty easy to tease out. Is that the question you're asking? Yeah, like, that's the question. Yeah, how, question how, mindset question. Yeah, how to know? Because I, I in my own business, I wonder, meaning, how do I know when it's something? Ramon, stop whining and move on and just press through. Versus, no, Ramon, you hired the wrong person. You can press through all you want, but or you know, or the website shouldn't be blue; it should be green. It sounds maybe silly, but. That, that's what I'm always curious. Well, and that's where being part of the communities is so right. helpful, right? Because if you have a forum like Amelia was talking about, or in our community, we're putting women into what we're calling mastermind tables, sure. because we love that quote from Beyonce, where she says, you know, I didn't see a lot of tables for black women. So I went mm -hmm. out and cut down my own tree and built my own table. So we're mm -hmm. putting our women at their own tables and they'll be in a group of six to eight entrepreneurs where they can, you know, compare notes, see, wait, is this just me? Plus, you know, they have me as a coach. But if you don't have a coach and you're listening and you're wondering, well, how do I know? I think checking in with other entrepreneurs is the way to go. Ramon and I check in, right? Yeah, absolutely. These are calls where it's like, well, how are you doing that? I don't know how are you doing that. That's right. And that is amazing and so great to have those resources. Yeah. Can you talk, Julia, to the, uh, again, we're talking about the solo business owner um, focusing, at least for today. Talk to that solo business owner. As you said, those who are 75,000, 50,000 even. It, uh, there's some- yeah, That was a pre-pandemic number. <laughs> pre okay. Uh, yeah, 75,000. Now we're helping sure. people with 50,000. But my point though, are those who are, and whatever you can make, God bless you, we're happy for you. But are there key things you're seeing, Ramon, here's two or three things today that those who are trying to hit a hundred thousand and generally speaking, especially in the Northeast to feed their families better, to have a little better apartment. Are there any two or three things you're seeing Ramon? Here's some common things that we're always telling them if they do it, they may start to be on the right track. Anything like that? Well, uh, I'm Julie? glad you're asking. We're about to share a brand new PDF, which is an adaptation of an article I wrote in Entrepreneur that okay. was called The Top 10 Mistakes That Keep Women From Scaling. <laughs> because Hello. people want to know, right? So I'll just tell you five of them. Sure. So mistake number one, doing it all yourself. That's come up a lot here today, right? You cannot yep. control every single piece of your business. Got to delegate and outsource. Mistake number two, lack of internal systems and processes, mm -hmm. winging it, writing things on yeah. paper, yes. doing it different every single time, not scalable. Mistake number three, busting, not busting, limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. That's back to the mindset. A limiting belief is an unconscious belief you have that you can't do something. But I said unconscious, so you don't always know it's mm -hmm. there. Like when I needed to raise money for my company, Little Pim, I had a limiting belief that I couldn't do that because I didn't study finance. Right. I wasn't great at math. No one in my family is in banking or venture capital or anything like that. My parents were academics. So my limiting belief was, well, I can't go raise money. I'm not from that world. Once I got rid of that limiting belief, I busted yeah. that limiting belief, I was able to take action and did go raise that money. So that's just one small example. Mistake number four, not understanding the scalable part of your business. I get a lot of women who come to me with businesses that have a scalable part and a not scalable part, and they don't know the difference. So we help them in the strategy, tease those out. Yep. Mistake number five, not working with coaches, mentors, and advisors. It's you know maybe the best kept secret that just about every woman who has made it to a million and beyond has worked with coaches, mentors, and advisors. So why would you deprive yourself of that? That is one of the best things you can do is find people who are in your corner. You don't, they don't have to be paid coaches, right. right? They could be mentors, they could be advisory counsel, but that is a game changer. So those are five of the mistakes wow. that keep women from scaling. But if you want all 10, please reach out. We're, we're sharing this PDF literally tomorrow. It's like hot off the presses. I love it. I'll be sure to push that out and you can see Julia's website. I think that's correct, right? Julia, is that correct? Um, yes. Be? Okay, good. That's uh, well, the community. Good. I love the domain name. Congratulations on that. Um, but you. listen, this has been fabulous information and we will be sure, remind me team, to point to Julia's article wherever it may come out. We will be sure to do that. But Julia, this has been, I think, a powerful discussion because indeed, I like to talk to people who know strengths that I don't have. I've only learned recently about mindset and things, Julia. A lot of that's been, you've been there, Breakfast with Champions, this community I that you that were at. I love that conversation on there. Yeah. yeah. And, and if and people are you know, on this mindset journey, you know, like, look, yeah. we all are, right? It's not a once and done. I wrote the book recently about mindset called Go Big Now. That's right. 
eight essential mindset practices to overcome any obstacle and reach your goal. But I'm still learning every day. There's so much that we all can help each other with on mindset. So I really just want to get the conversation going. And thank you for, you know, sharing your work so that we can compare notes and help each other and help more entrepreneurs to go big. Julia, you are a refreshing breath of fresh air, always spicy and full of knowledge and information. <laughs> and I, I honor you and I thank you for saying yes to me. I oh, appreciate it. Always, always Ramon. You're amazing. I support everything you do. And thanks for having me on and bringing all these incredible people together. I'm going to keep listening a little bit awesome. and, you know, carry on, bring more fabulous people on yeah. and I'll see you soon. Mwah. I appreciate it, dear. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Hey, everybody. That was the amazing Julia Pimsler, million woman, I believe it was. You can put that link up again. I always want to say dollar, but then it's millionwoman.com. I believe it is. Julia Pimsler, yeah, millionwoman.com. Thank you so much, millionwoman.com. Amazing, amazing insights. Helping half the planet are amazing, amazing women who are growing their businesses. I'm Ramon Ray, founder of smarthustle.com, and this is the fourth Survive and Thrive Five hours live, five hours live. And once we're done with this, my team will be cutting up these videos and we'll be sharing this widely across the planet with all of you who want it. The focus of today, the focus of today is helping small business owners grow their solo business. I'm an author of four books, but now with Grow Your Solo, five books to help you grow your solo business. I encourage you to check out, get the PDF, the audio experience. If my voice is annoying you, get the audio experience. If you like my voice, get the audio experience. Some of you may want to say, Ramon, we'd love to work with you. So definitely check that out at growyoursolo.com and see how we can help you uh, grow your business. But again, I'm having fun. I am having fun. I got my bottle of water here. All I'm doing is staring at it. Do you think I'm going to slurp on a bottle of water when I got five hours of live content? You must be crazy. But I'm having a good time here. And our speakers are only going, getting more and more and more. Tara says, who doesn't love your voice? <laughs> Thank you, Tara, for being here. Tara's a rock star. And so many people have been with us for these for this time and really appreciate it. Again, whether you're here for an hour or, uh, or five minutes, whatever it is. But listen, let me be quiet because there's two amazing gentlemen who I've had the chance to. We're not like golfing buddies like that. But on this app, Breakfast with Champions, many of us have become brothers and sisters and gotten to know each other so well over the last few uh, months it has been. So I'd love to welcome, I think, Brian Hess and Scott Simons already. Woo! Yeah. What's <laughs> happening, brother? What's up, Scott? What's up, Brian? Man, I can't believe Simons is still awake at this time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is not Ben Stock, baby. This is Scott Simons. I'm ready to roll. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Listen, gentlemen, thank you for saying yes to me. Brian Hess, how are you, man? It was good seeing you just a few days ago in Kentucky at the Grow for God conference. Brian, I hope you and your family and who you love are well. Y'all doing okay? Doing great, brother. Thanks for having us here, man. Awesome. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Scott Simons, how are things in your world? Carter Myers, automotive partner and a leader of people. How are things in your world? Scott Simons, thanks for saying yes to me. How's your family and how are the people who are important to you doing today? Man, we're doing fantastic. I mean, how can we say no to you? I mean, with all the energy and how you show up and serve others and give back. And, man, you asked me, I'll be there, brother. And I think you're seeing that today. I mean, two hours of just bombs being dropped. Uh, Julia, I mean, that lady was amazing. And, Julia's uh, amazing. It's a true honor for me to be asked to be on here, brother. You ask and you can count on me, brother. That's what I want to be known as. One <laughs> phone call, you call me, brother. I'll, I'll answer the phone. Brian, we're going to put that on his tombstone, like a phone, picture, phone, like call me. <laughs> Amen, brother. If I got a All phone right. call, that's definitely who I'm calling. I can tell you that. Oh, man. Let's you. jump into it. Brian has, give me the pre brief. I could talk about you, Brian, but it's better you talk about yourself because you'll get it right. Who are you, Brian? Where were you? Where are you today? In brief, Scott, I'm going to ask you the same questions. Then I want to drop science on this Smart Hustle community to give them some of the gems that I've heard from you all over the last few months of growing their business. Brian, first you, tell us a bit. Who is Brian Hess? Uh, well, first and foremost, man, a role model to four beautiful children, uh, husband, man of God, um, you know, most importantly in my life. Right. Yeah. And so in the business world, uh, entrepreneur, been an entrepreneur for about three and a half years prior to that was, you know, always a leader in business. So for 20 years, I was a leader and then finally got the courage to start my own business. So I got a few of them now. That, I'm, that I either own or am involved in, a partner in. So I've got uh, the Pavement Group 
is a national asphalt and concrete company. We serve some of the largest brands. Most of you guys shop at the, the stores and uh, go to the places that we pave the parking lots for and take care of the sidewalks for. Um, top Contractor School, we educate several hundred contractors across the country um, to scale their businesses locally. Those contractors, you know, we teach them and then they also do some business for the pavement group. Uh, and then I am on the board of a digital marketing company. I was a partner in it. And then we sold that off to uh, private equity here just about a month ago. Uh, and so now I sit on the board of an automotive digital marketing company and a uh, construction primarily, but we serve about 13 different verticals in our digital marketing company. So, so you need to sit uh, home sure all day and watch Netflix. Is that pretty much what your day is consisting of? That's my guess. Um, yeah, dude. <laughs> I tell you what, watching Simons is kind of like watching Netflix. So it's very similar. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Scott Simons, Carnival Automotive Group, an investor, entrepreneur. So many things you do, Scott, I've learned from you. But again, give us a one or two liner of who you are, Scott, so we can get to know you a bit before we dive into our discussion, Scott. Sure. I'm a, I'm a husband. Um, I'm a father of two of children I'm very proud of. Um, I had the honor of working with Carter Myers Automotive Group. Everybody knows Liza Borges, you know, I mean, what an amazing human being I get to work with. I'm part of Breakfast with Champions. You know, I've known Glenn Lundy since the very beginning, since we started off in that closet. Went through Rise and Grind with him. Um, I've gotten into some networks, you know, uh, Arate Syndicate, uh, the Apex, and I've networked and I've gotten lucky, to be honest. I worked hard, but I got lucky. You got to have yes. some luck gotten in the right rooms and invested in a lot of different businesses. I talk about it all the time. You know, our family business is involved. I think now I'm in 24 different businesses. I'm looking forward to doing some business with Mr. Brian Hess. I got to hang out with him during this fantastic conference. We just got away, uh, got back from, and uh, we got to hang out and man, I have never laughed and had so much great fellowship with amazing human beings. That's and true. I you know, got to see you serve others. Yes. Yeah. You have a servant heart, brother, and uh, and you light up. You are the energy in the room, and uh, it's, just, that, it's an honor for me to be here. But I'm just a, a, a common guy that refused to give up and, and got around the right people, man, and um, living a, a great, fulfilled life. But I have a lot more to give before it's my time. No, absolutely. I appreciate that. And Brian and Scott, we can have rapid fire. I'm going to ask a few questions. And again, we're here. I'm a tactical guy, as you all get a sense. Um, but Scott, I'll turn to you first. One thing I know about you, Scott, and it's amazing because we all pick up certain things about us. You know, Brian has me say, Ramon, I don't want to be called the concrete guy. Well, that may be what I heard all the time. So, you know, that's, that's your problem, not mine. But Scott, one thing I, what I think about you is leading teams. I don't think about you as a car guy. In a way, I do Ford what is it, TRX? I do think of yeah. that. Because <laughs> that's part of your brand. But you like to lead people and uplift people. At Carter Myers Automotive, I picked that up. So can you talk about that a bit, Scott, to the small business owners who have their small teams? I have a small team. What are you doing right? What lessons have you learned in leading people? And why is it so important for you to do that, Scott? Yes, Ramon, that's a great question. And first, you have to care about others. There's a point in my career I was so determined to achieve my goals that I only cared about me mm -hmm. and I was winning in business, but Ramon, I was failing in everything else in life. I wasn't a good husband. I wasn't a good dad. I wasn't a good friend. And it, it, it struck me, you know, and it, it happened. And I said, wait a minute, I've got to make sure that I serve others and I find out what's important to them. One thing I'll share with you is every associate we find out there are three personal and three professional goals. Their personal goals are first. They have to align with our core values. However, I need to know what makes them tick and why they do what they do. Mm. So when I learn that and show that I care, it enables me to manage them. It enables me to push them. I can push them a whole lot further when they know that I care than if I'm just trying to hit numbers. They're more than a number. We get to know them. If you come to our dealership, I can walk around and I can tell you a story about each person at that store. People came to visit us and they go, you really know all these people. Wow. And it, you know, it's hard because we've grown so much, yeah. but I mentor, we get to know. And I think that a good leader leads by example and puts others before themselves. And then when you do that and you lead with the servant heart and work hard, we don't, don't leave that out. Yep. Don't, I mean, we got to work hard. Then that's when the magic happens. So uh, I love leading people. 
Um, I, I love setting the example. And uh, it's, it's it's an honor to work at Carter Myers Automotive Group and Liza Borges. It's, it's amazing. amazing. No, I appreciate that. I love how you uplift her in every chance you get as well. Brian, respond to that. And then, Brian, I'd love to talk about your journey into entrepreneurship and what you learned that we can learn from you to avoid some of your mistakes. But first, feel free to give feedback to what Scott just talked about leading people and how important that could be to you, Brian. Yeah, I think, you know, leading people is is an art, man. And it's an art that never you, you never stop learning, right? Every single time you uh, go through an interaction, you get to know new people, you get to know uh, different points of view, things like that. Um, you know, one of the things that's most important to me is, like Scott said, getting to know our people on a personal level. Um, we do something in our company called a how I want to be coached form. So we mm. fill that form out. Um, and it tells, you know, tells us what motivates them, what demotivates them, uh, what their goals are and what they're striving for. And to Scott's point, if you don't put their goals first over the company, um, you, you got things out of priority. Right. And, and it comes down to uh, we all work for a living. Right. To live. That's you know, right. we go to work so that we can live. Uh, it, it, if you get it in the wrong order, man. And uh, I believe a lot of companies do. It's what drove me to become an entrepreneur. Uh, a lot of places that I worked, you know, they were great places to work, but they weren't exactly the culture that I wanted. Uh, and I wanted to be able to create a place where people felt enthused. And not only did they make money, but they became better people, right? And they became better members of our communities and um, able to give back, able to see things and grow and just, you know, be better people. And, uh, and be excited about coming to work and being part of a mission. And uh, that's what we've been able to create at the Pavement Group. And um, it all starts and ends with everybody in the company's ability to lead, right? Mm. Because we don't just have leaders. Everybody leads each other. Powerful for sure. And when you were starting out, Brian, can you any tips that you can think of that, hey, Ramon, this is something universal that I did right or you did horribly wrong, which we'd love to hear more so, but either one, right or wrong, that you can talk about that we can learn from today as you were starting your business or businesses, Brian? Yeah, I'll tell you, man. One of the things that always comes to mind is uh, if I were to go back and do anything over again, it would be to think bigger sooner. Um, mm. You know, every time I look back, uh, you know, I, I hate people ask me what my five year goal is. And I don't like responding to that because every single time I do it, I feel like I sell myself short. And so it, it's a, the most challenging thing to do is to think bigger when there's nothing in front of you. So those people who are starting out, you know, the best thing that they can do is get a mentor uh, who has been there, who can pave the way for them uh, and help them stretch that vision that they, they have. And so for me, when I was starting out, um, I didn't have that. Right. It was it was me trying to create and trying to figure it out. Uh, and if I would have known people like Scott, uh, even though we're not in the same industry, mm -hmm. it would have helped me be able to think bigger sooner. Um, and we would be further ahead than we are right now, right? And so mentorship is one of the most important things that you can do. Um, and for me, I was always looking for that mentorship inside of our industry. And it took me a little while to figure out the value of, you know, not just being in the industry. In fact, the, the value of being, looking at things from a different perspective right. can be incredibly valuable to a business. Well, that is powerful. Um, uh, Scott, I'm curious, one, feel free to respond to that, the aspect of mentorship, because I know you do that. But I'm curious, have you also received that, Scott? I know, as you mentioned, you hang out in several groups. I'm sure you don't just do it because you're bored to death. It seems like you learn from it and network from it. Pour into us. Talk a bit about that mentorship aspect, Scott, uh, please. Yeah, Ramon, it, it's extremely important to invest in yourself. I spend hundred thousand dollars plus a year going to masterminds and groups it's probably more i haven't counted it because i don't want to know how high that number is you know what i mean so it's probably higher so you know i'm around the andy forcellas the ed Milets, the grant cardones the danelle delgados and i want them to push excellence out of me i don't want to get stagnant our great friend glenn lundy says we're most comfortable before we die i don't want to get comfortable so I put myself in uncomfortable situations. And when you get around people that are further than where you are, mm -hmm. it's hard not to be critical of yourself. It's hard not to have um, get kind of upset at yourself. I did that at first. And it's very short term thinking. And I put myself in rooms and I listen a lot. One of my favorite pictures I have on my Facebook cover is 
a seat at the table with Jesse Itzler. I think mm. Jesse Itzler is one of the yeah. best entrepreneurs out there. Jesse has won across multiple different industries. Yes. So he's sitting there with Dan Fleischman, Aaron Wagner, all these Arte people. And I'm sitting there just fixated on him. And someone captured that picture. And his whole thing is get a seat at the table. Yes. yes. So many times we get around those people and the immature Scott would talk because I want to impress them. No, you listen, you listen, you learn, you implement, you take action, take action. You know, I want, I want to learn from so many other people, you know, like Ramon, like I'll give you a perfect example. Please. You are a servant leader. You, I know you don't like people, you know, talking about you, but you're a servant leader. Hmm. You showed up at Grow for God. You know what you did? You served everybody else. You, you cannot be in a bad mood around you. Your whole exactly. world could be falling down. And you know what? You still got that beautiful smile and that positive energy. People feed off that. You're a natural leader, Thank natural you. leader. And I saw it in action this past weekend. Sure. So I learned something from you. I got to mm -hmm. vibrate. I got to make sure that no matter what <laughs> I'm going through, I got to be the person that has the most positivity and I have to serve. So yes. I learned from anybody. Anybody and everybody. But Ramon, if I'm sitting in the corner and I'm not engaging and I'm self-enthralled, I won't learn. I learned yes. a lot from Brian Hess. Brian Hess and I are going to do some epic things together. You heard it here. And when I okay. do it, I won't brag, but I'll say, hey, remember I told you about me and my little buddy, Brian Hess? <laughs> I love it. I love it. That Pittsburgh native and my West Virginia hillbilly butt, we're going to do some special things. I'm going to do some great things with you. You know, because I'm going to get in that circle and I'm going to yeah. serve and I'm going to do whatever I need to do. You said, hey, Scott, show up to this epic event I got going on. I said, brother, first of all, I'm honored that you would ask me Two, I'll be there at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., whatever time. Yes. I will be there to serve you because you serve others. Wow. I'm going to record that and just, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, Brian. I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to make it an NFT or something like that. Thank it's, you, Scott. It's true, brother. I mean, nobody's going to say no to you ever yeah. because of how you it. vibrate. I mean, that's the, that's the truth. Nobody's going to say no that. To Thank you all so much. Brian, I want to turn to you and, and then I'll turn to you next, Brian. Criticism. We've gone to a high note serving, but Brian, I'm sure there's been time when people called you an idiot, said it didn't work. You failed. Why did you do this? You screwed up. You can take it where you want to go. But how do you deal with, with the low parts of life uh, Brian, and then Scott, I'd love for you to, to chime in on there because of being a small business owner, a solo business owner, our family doesn't understand us. Sometimes our wife doesn't understand us. Our husband doesn't understand us. You know, where, and you all have been there, understand what I'm saying, where you, you nobody knows the check didn't clear. Your rent's due tomorrow. So it's a big question, but I know y'all can answer it. What do you do at the low points in life, Brian Hess? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think, you know, everybody has them, number one. I think for those people who, you know, maybe sometimes look at the personalities that they see on social media or the people that, you know, seem to have it all together. Everybody has those days where, where everything seems to go wrong. Sure. And, you know, when it comes to criticism specifically, um, you know, as you rise the ranks, as you create success and as you choose to be more public, um, with being more public comes more opinions. Mm. And, you know, I think when you're first starting out, you know, you have this idea that you you genuinely, I think we all as human beings want everybody to like us, right? Sure. And, and as you, you know, try to serve others, uh, there's going to be opposition to that. There's going to be a lot of opinions about that. And so for me, you know, it, it took me a little bit to realize that uh, to do something great with your life, uh, it is going to require you to face opposition. It's going to require you to have uh, people that doubt your motives, people that have, you know, significant opinions, uneducated opinions about everything that you're going to do. And so for me, uh, dealing with that criticism got easier and easier as it mounted against me, if that makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. the, the when it first starts, you know, that one person that doesn't like you or that has an opinion about you, probably harder to deal with, uh, you know, my, my advice for anybody that's dealing with that one person or those two people that don't like you is get busier because mm. as you get busier, as you make more progress, as you're making more waves, those people kind of all blend together, you know, and, and you, you mentioned this, but I think entrepreneurship in general puts us in a position to be misunderstood. 
Uh, you know, we, we as entrepreneurs, we dedicate our lives to solving a problem that we see. And that's not a normal thing uh, for most people in the right. world. You know, I talked this weekend about unrealized dreams and people that are in jobs. They have a dream. They see a problem that they want to solve. And maybe at this point in their life, they just don't have the courage to step out. Right. Hopefully everybody on this planet has that courage to go pursue that, to solve it, because that burning desire that we have inside of us as entrepreneurs to solve that problem, to connect with people, to make people's lives better by taking this problem away from them, that's what gets us going. Uh, but it's important to remember as an entrepreneur, not everybody's going to understand that and they're not supposed to. And so don't take it personal, focus on what you need to do and what the mission you have at hand. Um, and all that noise uh, just becomes you know, some, some cheers eventually, right? Ooh, I like you know, first, <laughs> first they, they ask yeah. you why you're doing it. And then they ask you if you, they can join you. And yes. that, that's usually how it works. That is, that is true. And I thought about that doing this five hour event uh, in 2020, when I launched it, a lot of people said, no, Ramon, nobody's done five hours, but I said, great, I'll do it. Um, Scott, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question to what Brian said. It's probably not fair, but I do that sometimes. Um, <laughs> Scott, what if you are wrong? Brian Hess is right. The naysayers. But what do you do, Scott, at CMA? What do you do? How, how do you know when you should say, whoa, Brian was right. How I talked to that customer was terrible or whatever it may be versus this is a naysayer and I need to keep going. How do you do that? Judge Scott, you know, be, to, to, to the opposite of what Brian's saying, which I know you're right, Brian. But how do you do that, Scott? A great leader is self-aware. They're very self-aware of their strengths their weaknesses, how they impact others. And you have to be very self-aware. You you have to, I've been around people before that were high producers mm -hmm. and they were not a good culture fit and they're no longer within our company. Production wise, they were at the top. Mm -hmm. They were not self-aware. They only cared about themselves. They couldn't build a team around them. When they weren't there, things really went down. You know, when, a, when the leader is out, how does a team perform when they're not there? That's a true mark of a leader is, is in his absence or her absence, what, what happens? The, the biggest mistake and criticism that I had was I managed other people as though they were me. Mm. And I lost some really good people. Okay. Um, I made some mistakes. That person that is no longer with me can never say, I'm sorry. Can never say I apologize. Can never say I'm wrong. I fail almost every day. I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm not afraid. The biggest mistake I made in my career, bar none, was I managed other people as though I was managing me. And I didn't understand why they didn't want the best and why they didn't want to make the most money and be at the top of the board. That's where I pivoted. And that's mm -hmm. when I had a revelation. And I said, okay, what's important to them? Ramon, what's important to you? Mm -hmm. Brian, what's important to you? Sure. Do we have some similarities? But no, we're all on our different journeys. We got to learn the journey that individuals on and fit it within what we're trying to accomplish. Right. But Ramon, you need to know that what you're trying to accomplish is important to me. I need to know what Brian is, is trying to accomplish is important to me. That way, the days you feel like not doing something, I can say, hey, Brian, you know, those kids will go to college. Yeah. I know you want to max out that 529, brother. We got to get it. <laughs> yeah. Ramon, I know you want to impact the world. Yes. And I know probably you don't feel like getting on Clubhouse and being the highest level energy person on that app. But guess what? The only way you can impact the world is you've got to do it. Yes. And there's maybe a day that I text message say, hey, man, you good? You're not vibrating substantially higher than everybody else. I mean, you're higher than everybody else always. No, no matter what. But, I mean, you're not. So I've got to find out what's important. And I manage people based on what was important to me. And that's a real, I, I hope if anybody listens to me tonight at all, the one thing that you take away from this is, you know, don't manage people, don't manage other people as though they are you through you, yeah. you know, so. No, that's powerful indeed. I appreciate that. And uh, Brian and Scott, I'd like to also talk about time management. By the way, anything you all want to jump in here, feel free. Hey, Ramon, talk about something else. But there's a few things that I think will help the solo business get to the next level. Talking to Brian Hess and Scott Simons, uh, who have built and are building successful companies. Brian, you're doing a lot. 
a lot of things. And again, we're all doing a lot of things, but you're, you're multiple boards and businesses and et cetera. Scott, you're doing the same. Brian, how do you manage your time day to day? Because I find that one of the challenges of growing a solo business, you know, especially with limited money, I'm blessed to be at a, you know, I've not have arrived, but God blessed us. We got some systems we're growing, but man, especially when you're scraping by, you're trying, trying to get to a hundred thousand revenue, manage your time is even more difficult. Brian Hess, what are you, what are you doing in that respect? Yeah, I, I think uh, the first thing is, is you got to screw it up first. Uh, you know, you, you got literally you have to you'll never know how much you can do until you overpack your schedule. Right. Until you figure out you you overwhelm yourself and then you start to figure out how. So for me, uh, an example of this is, you know, I juggle a lot of things. And so I try to use ways for people to be able to book time with me uh, that I don't have to schedule. Right. So I use an app called Calendly. A lot yep. of people use it. But when I first started using Calendly, I didn't block off any time. Like I just, you know, left it wide open. That's a rookie mistake. hundred <laughs> percent. And so I, you know, I was eating Chipotle lunch, you know, three minutes before the next call, yeah. cutting the first one short so that I could, you know, shove some food in my mouth. And so I think that it is, it is literally just, you know, pushing the limits of that. You know, I, I always use managing time, like, you know, learning how to juggle. Mm -hmm. You don't just pick up balls and start juggling 10 of them at a time, right? You, you have to start with two, go to three, go to four, you get comfortable as you go. And so for me, uh, taking that approach to time management has worked the best. Um, you know, I, I always steal from myself and never from my family. So if mm -hmm. I need to do more, I need to wake up earlier. Um, and, and it really comes down to just figuring out how to block that time. So for me, the different businesses that I'm a part of have different demands. And so I have different time blocks of where that time is dedicated. Uh, if that time's not needed, then I can give it to somewhere else. But uh, making sure that you are just highly aware of how productive you are, because, you know, a lot of people work a lot of hours, but they don't get a lot done. Yeah. And I think that it is about challenging yourself, not on the number of hours that you work, but the number of hours that you're productive. And then, you know, what, level of productivity can you get to during those hours and how do you make that all work and so it's really it's a game of self-analyzation and i think a lot of people aren't honest about their time to be truthful um, i think that you know people say they don't have time uh, but they're just not being effective enough with their time yeah no i think you're so true on that uh scott what are you doing with time again you're a person who's doing a lot of things, flying a lot of places, managing a lot of people, people like Ramon pulling at you. How do you manage your time weekly, daily, monthly? What's Scott Simon's doing to manage his time and, and still live a great life, sit in a pool or barbecue, whatever you want to do? How do you do all that? Uh, getting the early start most definitely helps. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm up at, uh, if I'm moderating that morning on Clubhouse, I'm up at 4 a.m. If not, I'm up at 4.30 consistently. Yeah. And um, I have an assistant at work, which helps keeps me keep me straight. And I have a, my wife left her job that she worked for and loved for many years. And we started a family business to um, manage all the companies that we own. And she came to work with me. I don't have any virtual assistants. Someone sent me a message and goes, we can't believe you responded and not a bot or not somebody else. And I'm like, no, I, I respond now. There might be a point I need to come up with with you know, some of the automated sure. um, messaging and replies. But, um, you know, I sit and I look at my schedule and that Sunday afternoon, evening is when I plan mm -hmm. my week. You know, I try to plan it out and, and pack in as much as I humanly possibly can. Obviously, the car dealership. First of all, my wife comes first. My children come second. The car dealership comes third, period, the end. Um, then these other businesses that I'm involved in, they have to come in an additional time. Uh, they have to come in on, you know, Saturday afternoon. But the first and foremost is I run car dealerships on a day to day. Now I meet and I network and I, you know, I invest in these other businesses. But, you know, time management is extremely important. You know, we all can sit there and say we're busy, 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 busy. We can get in a busy contest. Who's busier? That doesn't matter. Who's the most productive? Busy like Brian hit it right on the head does not mean you're productive. I know a lot of busy people that don't accomplish hardly anything. So you've got to right. be, you know, you, you've got to set that calendar. You've got to make sure, you know, old school pad and paper. You know, that's what I use. Brian got yeah. on to me about it, told me about, you know, uh, 
the technology, you know, kind of laughed at me. I mark it off, man. I mark it off. I mark it off. And then obviously I use Calendly and other things, sure. but, but I'm old school, but time management, Ramon, is so, so important if you want to accomplish things. Because, man, think about it. Think about the summers we got left. Yeah. Think about the birthdays we got left. I think, you about, said, it. think about it that way. We don't have that much time left. That's right. So if you're not where you want to be, you better get super focused and super busy in structure. You're right. Scott, Can wow. I get an amen. amen. Yes, amen. <laughs> and talking about waking up early, you're right, Brian and Scott. I woke up, I wake up now at 425, going back from I don't steal time from others. Why do I do that? Because as we know, that the, the, the community we're in as of this today, 5 a.m. it starts. Some of us, you know, here or there. But the point is 5 a.m. I wake up at 425. You know what? Because I realized when I woke up at 5, I only had time for BWC. But I wasn't reading my Bible and praying in the morning, spending time with my daughter. She's an adult, but going to work. So I have to wake up at 425. So I'm downstairs out of my bedroom at 430. That gives me 30 minutes to spend time with God. Then the rest, whatever happens, happens. I can go to the gym and put headphones on and all that. But that time is important. So I had to do 425. So I hear what you're saying, Scott. Um, Remember, multitasking, not to interrupt you, sir, but multitasking, no, brother. Multitasking is the key. If you, I'm never hardly doing one thing. Hardly ever. Yeah. When I'm on a Clubhouse, I'm on a Peloton. I'm yes. I'm on a Peloton, I'm on Clubhouse with an iPad, yeah. and then I got my iPhone, and I'm working, I'm shooting emails, I'm pedaling. The next thing you know, it's 20 miles later, you know, and it, you've got to multitask when it's appropriate. Sure, When sure. it's not appropriate, put that phone down and get down to business. Stay, Brian says it all the time, be very present with your time. Yeah. No, it's true. Brian Hess, Scott Simons, we have to do this again where we can have y'all for five hours, two and a half hours <laughs> each or something. I am grateful for you saying yes to me, Scott Simons and Brian Hess. I am grateful and honored. Uh, this is live event right now, five-hour live experience, but this conversation will reach thousands because we'll be sharing it over the next several days, giving it away to everyone. So, Brian, Scott, thank you. Thank you, brother. Come on. It was my pleasure. You and I'll see you. Appreciate you, you creating this space for us, man. Thank you. Yeah. Scott, you call, brother, and I'll answer it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. See y'all on, what's it called? Clubhouse in a bit. <laughs> Scott Simons, Brian Hess, thank y'all so much for joining me. That was a fire discussion. Two gentlemen that I've learned from so very much. <laughs> Thomas says, I thought I was doing good waking up at 5.30 or 6. Nah, man, nah, man. My alarm's at 4.25 a.m. Next up with about a minute over, that's on me, is Coach Brown. Coach Brown <coughs> is someone I've met. What's up, Coach Isaac Brown, over the last oh, several months? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, man. There's so much on our community where many of these speakers are breakfast with champions. And every time I hear Coach Isaac speaking, I feel lazy. My legs oh. hurt. <laughs> I feel out of breath. I feel I need to punch a wall or something. Oh, so I said, you know what? On. Let me just talk to the man himself. Come and have on. him bring him to the Smart Hustle community. How are you, Coach Isaac Brown? I'm great, man. I'm awesome. Thanks for having me on here, man. Love Absolutely. the energy. Love Thank the energy. You. And I'm so glad you're, you're here. Coach Isaac Brown, uh, best known for his unique coaching style. Coach Isaac is the head strength and conditioning coach for two professional teams. His 10 years of experience working with NFL, CFL, and pro soccer players helped lead his teams to the Grey Cup and two back-to-back soccer championships coach Isaac Brown that's a big thing can you take a minute or two and unpack your story but more importantly than your story I'll I feel I'll guide you in that but I want to lead that into what does this mean for business owners that we can learn for you but it would be unfair to not hear a bit about where you've been and where mm -hmm. you are today can you take a minute or two and share that mm -hmm. with us please yeah of course uh well I, I grew up in Saginaw Michigan big family sports family um seven kids four boys three girls um uh, uncle was the first pro player in our family and he's he he was a younger uncle he was only he's mm -hmm. only 15 years older than me um so he was kind of big brother slash uncle but yes. you know that kind of changed as we got older but so my my hunger for sports and all that it came from him um especially football my brothers played uh, cousins played, grew up playing. So my journey into football started at the age of seven. Uh, well, I started watching when I was three and I started playing <laughs> when I was seven. And, uh, you know, 
went up, went up through the ranks, you know, high school, college. Uh, my brother, Jacob, who's just a year, year and eight months older than me, uh, we ended up playing college ball together at Central Michigan University. Um, so that was that was a blessing. My parents didn't have to split trips, you know, sure. on on uh, on games. Uh, so I, from there, went to the Atlanta Falcons. From the Falcons, went back to school because I did not graduate. Um, I left a little early, even though it was five years. School was not it was not a thing for me. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> went back to school, and then I ended up getting this call, getting this call to come play out here for this this team. Oops, this team, the okay, Amazon yeah. Tiger Cats, right? Um, so I played out here four years. After that was done. Got a call from the University of Tennessee. So what happened there was uh, a coach that was coaching me in college. He took over as head coach there. So it was just the right timing for my mm -hmm. career. And uh, he called me. And I, of course, I said yes, because I had just walked off the field. So spent five years there. We had a bad year, a bad year and a half. <laughs> they let us go. And then I ended up back up here. I ended up getting the call to come back up here to Canada. So right. I've been back up here since 2018 um, nice. as a pro coach. So it's, it's you know, that's a that's a really, really quick, <laughs> quick. I love story. it. That's there's good a, enough. There's a lot in there. There's a lot in there. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's that's a little a little blimp of, of my career and how how I ended up back up here. So, no, I are. appreciate that. Coach Isaac yeah. Brown, thank you so much. And I hear your shares all the time in the common community. We're with Breakfast with mm -hmm. Champions that I tell the world about because it's upgraded my life, my family, my yeah. business, uh, my relationship and all kind of things. So it's helped me yeah. so much. But Coach Isaac Brown, I wanted to hone in on one thing and we'll see how much time we have. But as a coach, strength and conditioning, grit and hustle. There's the body, there's the mind. And feel free to reword my question. I just just what I see. Talk about that a bit, the physical dimensions of it, how you're coaching people, what you're going through, maybe a story or two. But can you parallel that to business? Um, yeah. The need for coaches, the need for someone to push you or pull you or yell at you. If you get what mm -hmm. I'm trying to get at, when I think of you, that's what I think about. Help us understand that. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Well, when it comes to the weight room, when it comes to athletes, you know, I, I honestly tell athletes, you know, you go through things that a lot of people don't go through in 10 years. They'll go through almost the same type of adversity at a higher speed. So they'll go through it in, in one season, they'll go through it in six months. And other people who are not athletes, it'll take them 10 years to go through those type of experience because you deal with so many different teammates, number one. You, you, you can work with five or six different people a week. The transition, in pro sports is very fast because there's money involved and if you're not performing you're easily interchangeable and that goes for coaches too mm -hmm. right so you can have five different bosses in three years right you can have 50 different co-workers or teammates or whatever you want to call it in two months right so you're dealing with all that adversity not to mention week to week is a game Right. And, you know, we talk about hitting your marks in business Well, you have to hit a, sing a mark every single week. Yes. Right. So there's there's so much at stake as an athlete and the mental stress that. I don't want to say wears you down, <laughs> but that, it, does. That, it, it does wear you down some people, but right. some people build the resistance. Yeah, right. Totally. Some people take that mindset and they build that resistance and it takes them farther later on in life, you know, and not to mention, let's throw in the injuries. Sure. Let's throw, in, let's throw in the things that you can't even plan for. Right. So you have that going on. And if you're a, if you're a college athlete, you're juggling school, you're juggling training table, you're juggling workouts, you're juggling games, you're juggling fans talking yeah. bad about you on social media, you're juggling your social life, you're juggling your family, you're juggling all these different things and you're between 18 and 21 years old, right? So that mindset starts to get built at a very, very young age. But I think the big difference between those who let it wear them down and those who don't is mindfulness. Hmm. The ones who don't let it wear them down, they're mindful of what's going on and they're using those things as fuel to build resilience, to build grit and things like that. 
right? And, so, and how do you define mindfulness? That means self-awareness, same thing or something different? Just exactly. Mindfulness, exactly. okay. That's exactly what I meant. Yep, self-awareness. I love that. And then how do you see that translate to the business world? You know, business ownership, it's kind of things you're saying. It's grit, they're disappointments. People talk about you. People don't yeah. understand you. Your, your yeah. own family may say, you know, Coach Isaac Brown, you want to build a lemonade stand? You can't do that. So right. I guess what I'm hearing is to take that and maybe leverage it and propel you to do more. Is that what I'm hearing say, or am I off base in that? Uh, similar, similar. Uh, you know, what I really mean is the things that the things that you see in sports and the things that you see in business, they're just they're just in different shades. Mm. Right. I, I believe football is it's just at a higher speed. Right. So if you're if you're a business owner and you were a former, let's say you're a former athlete. Right. And now you're and now you're a business owner. You understand how to just keep going, because when you are an athlete, there's the next game, right? There's the next practice. We say on our team, what's the most important play? The next play. Mm. What's the most important practice? The next practice. What's the most important game? The next game, because you don't have time to sit and wallow in disappointment. You got 24 hours to get the crap right. out of your head and move on. You got to start preparing for the next opponent, right? The clock is ticking, mm. like. You can take a loss, but the clock's ticking. In seven days, there's someone else suiting up across from you and they're trying to kill you, right? So the same thing in business, <laughs> but, in, but in business, it might be even more cutthroat because it's day-to-day, -day, right? In business, it's day-to-day. -day. So as an athlete, you understand that, okay, if I don't get my stuff together, I can, I can just be out of here. Mm -hmm. I can get called up to management and say, ah, we're going to go in a different direction. And now you're packing up your locker and you're gone. Yeah. Right. So that mentality, it kind of it sort of numbs you to the adversities outside of football, outside of the game, because mm -hmm. you see them on a day to day. I'm talking day to day so much. Sure. And however long you play, you build a certain callous and resilience to it. So then when you step out onto the real world, some problems that people complain about, they're like, is that really a right. problem? Yes. Like, it's yes. not really a problem. Yes. Right. The, the so. fame, fame David Goggins, uh, multi special forces, is known as saying his mind was like a steel trap. What helped him through the special forces was that everybody else, they were tough guys and gals. The guys were there, but is that he was abused so much when he was younger. He went through so much. It was like cold water, mm -hmm. you know, as it were. He didn't, right. this was an example. My mama abused me with cold water. This ain't nothing. So right, that was his right. thing. So I'm curious, Coach Isaac, um, uh, and again, thanks for so much for spending time with us and sharing your sure. brilliance with the Smart Hustle community. I'm curious, is there a level, though, where you don't want to be too calloused or too used to pain because maybe you're insensitive, especially you as a coach. You want to slap the players up a bit, get them pushing yeah. forward, but do you have to slow down a bit and say, oh, your dog died. Let's 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 slow down. Any mm -hmm. is there any balance there? Mm -hmm. You know? No, no, I don't I don't think. I don't think you have to I don't think you you reach a level where you don't want to be too callous, but I think you just need to have emotional intelligence. Mm. You know, like there's going to be there's coaches that have been coaching for 30 years and they played for 15 as a player. Right. But if those coaches have emotional intelligence, if they're mindful, if they have great people skills, interpersonal skills, great if they're great at communication, then they know when and when not to let that callous mindset come in. Sure. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it really depends on you as a person and, and what's the content of your character? What's the content of the way you handle and manage people? You know? Yeah. yeah. No, that's powerful. Somebody asked a great question here. And again, those who are on Facebook, if you wanted to see your name, feel free to do the integration. But I think it was very interesting. And I'm hearing the question about small things over and over again, if you understand what they're asking. You know, just lazy your sneakers, just brush your teeth in small business. Just every Friday, look at your profit or loss. Nothing more. Mm -hmm. Just do that. What does this principle mean if it's a fair question? I see you nodding your head, so you know what I yeah. mean. Of just yeah. not trying to get complicated, fancy, and trying to get the Encyclopedia Britannica. Just just do this two things. Can you help us understand what that means? Yeah, it's funny you ask that because <clears throat> every practice, uh, I warm the team up, break the team down, and send them off into practice. And today, mm -hmm. the first thing out of my mouth was, you start to lose when you think you're above the basics. Mm. Nobody's nobody's above the basics, right? You got to do small things with a great attitude. And I think when you start to see success, when you start to see yourself 
winning, you kind of, you get that broom and you sweep little bitty things yeah, under the rug. Right. But if you're losing, those little bitty things are this big. But if you're winning, they're this big, right? But regardless, win or lose, they matter. That's the point, right? They're the common denominator. They matter, right? So I think you have to understand how to stay focused on the details at all yeah. times, no matter no matter how far along you are in your success, because those details are the foundation, right? So the little things matter. Even in the weight room, I keep that place spick and span. I'm sure you right? do. <laughs> I don't like the dumbbell. So we have the logos on our dumbbell. I don't like the weights twisted. The logo goes up, right? Like this, I keep reaching to the wrong I side. I got you. This, yeah, yeah. This, this logo is on our dumbbells. If this logo is flipped upside down, there. what kind of pride is that for your team, right. right? That's not pride. That's a little thing. That's a little thing. Before I got there, they didn't do that. I picked that up at Tennessee. They didn't let the T be upside down ever because the rival, our rival Vanderbilt, they flipped that upside down. Yeah, really they take right a picture of it or something. Yes. Right? So it's just those little things. The details matter. Discipline and details is what I preach to the guys all the time. I love that. Details and discipline. I think that's that's so yeah. important. Curious to know also, Coach Brown, uh, what do you do about team unity and team cohesion? You're dealing with, depending on the sport, X number of, you know, whether it's men, women, boys, girls, whatever it is, on a team who have to work together to fight, as it were, a common enemy. Okay. How do you keep the team together? I'm sure there are different opinions, different mindsets, mm -hmm. different upbringings, different goals, different somebody pissed off at you today, not pissed off at you tomorrow. How do you keep them working as a team towards a common goal? And any thoughts on that, especially as a coach? We work on it every day. And that's something that on every team that I've been on before this, before this one, it was unheard of. Mm -hmm. Like no one takes time to do team building, even if it's two minutes every day, every day in training camp. We work on it even more. We spend even more time. We don't work on the X's and O's because it's so tough in, in, in life, in business, sure. in family, in sports. It's hard enough just to work together with 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 people. Yeah. Right. So you better be able to like them. Right. You better be able to respect them and you better know a little bit about them. So we don't skip the steps. We We take the time and we work on team building every single day. It doesn't matter if it's okay, everybody stand up, tell the person next to you something you appreciate about them, right? Tell them something you're grateful for, right? What's your, ask them what is their way what, and that stands for what are you working on today, mm -hmm. right? So every single day we're saying something or doing something that contributes to team building. And that's not when we get on the field, that's in our team meeting every but single allow, day. But allow me to push back on that a minute. Allow yeah. me to push back on that. Why do I got to ask Johnny what his favorite ice cream ice cream cone is or how his kids are doing when all you want me to do is throw the ball 75 yards? Mm -hmm. Why do I mm -hmm. have to care about where he lives or how he's upbringing? If I can do my job straight, does it matter if mm -hmm. I know this dude or gal? If you get what I'm asking, mm -hmm. why is that so important? It, it matters because in the closest moments of the game, the team that works together as the best team, those are the ones that's going to win. It's not the talent. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you can throw the ball 75 yards if Johnny doesn't run the right route. It doesn't matter if you can throw it 75 yards. You won't be able to throw it 75 yards if Peter doesn't block for you and you get sacked. Mm -hmm. Right now, like there's there's 11 men down south in, in the NFL, 11 on each side. Up here in Canada, we play with 12 mm -hmm. on each side. Right. So that's it's just one more body in the chaos. So which team can work together best in the chaos? It's the team that's closest. It's the team that knows each other the best. It's the team that cares about each other the most. Yes, there is, you gotta have some talent, right? Yeah. You gotta have, you gotta have skills, <laughs> but that, but that's almost a given. This is pro ball. Everybody's paid, right? Yeah. But the difference is which team can work together the best. And that starts from the coaching staff all the way down. Sounds like marriage too. I need to call my wife in here to talk to you for a bit so I can I can be a better husband. <laughs> if, if you're gonna go through it, you get you, if you're gonna go through it, you gotta like them, right? It's it's too hard to do it with people that you don't like. It really sure. is, you know. Nah, Coach Isaac Brown, this has been 
Uh, fabulous. And I am excited and I'm honored that you said yes to me. I know there's a lot of things you can be doing today, but your message is going to be reaching a lot of people. There's our live component here, but we're going to be spreading this out to most likely what will be thousands and thousands of small business owners across our ecosystem to share your message with others. So I'm grateful you came today. Is there any website or anything? Are you performance only or can people work with you for other things? Can you come to their home and beat them up a bit? Or if their kid's rebellious, can you come and like <laughs> stay in the room for a day or something? I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not just performance, which is, which is funny. A lot of people yes. see me and they see the physical and sure. I'm not, I'm not just performance. To be okay. honest, I would much rather just do my life coaching piece because I get, I get enough of the physical at work, working yes. with a hundred football players. I get enough of that <laughs> at work, but I am also a certified life coach. So okay. my website is coach Isaac Brown, uh, dot com. So there I, I work with people all the time, self mastery, you name it. So I love, love that piece. I'm, I'm all it. about here, man. All well, Regina, just Regina physical. Carey says she wants that workout. She may be your next uh, I can write uh, you customer, or maybe I'll I'll, I'll see I'll your do, rates. I'll maybe I'll, I'll gift gift that to her. You'll you'll beat her up in a good way a little bit. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> She's right. a baller, That's it right. seems. So That's thank right. you, Tara, so much. I appreciate you, Tara, being here for these hours. Coach Isaac Brown, everybody, yeah. check his website out. Check him out, and thank you so much for joining us here, hey, everybody. This is Ramon Ray. We are three hours and nine minutes into the five our live experience, the Survive and Thrive Growth Summit. We're celebrating the launch of Grow Your Solo, how we can help serve you to grow your solo business. Many of the speakers here today are part of a community that I've been in for the last several months where I've, uh, I think I've upgraded my family, my life, my business, my health, and so many things more. And I've touted breakfast with champions to so many people. And I can't wait to have many more people join me on that platform. I'm having a good time. I hope you're having a good time. Big shout out to Tara Murney for being here and joining us. I don't know what she's doing. She could be cooking, washing her cars. She could be with somebody with doing this, that, and the other. But Tara, you're here. Regina Carey's here as well. Thank you, Regina. Appreciate it. We got about two hours to go. Loving every bit. Somebody says on Facebook, this is awesome. I'm having a good time too. Listen, I love serving. I love helping others. And uh, I think y'all heard Coach Isaac Brown was so good uh, talking about performance, grit, hustle, and so much more. Thank you so much, Regina. I appreciate that very much. My friend, Jean Stafford, also is here. She says, great time, and I'm so glad you all are here enjoying it. It's not too late to share this with others and let people know, but we'll be cutting these up and sharing these across social media so uh, long. My friend, my mentor, someone I have learned from, and one of the smartest people People I love, one of the most, hanging out with, I got to be careful, like the most, the most, is Sarah McCord, uh, president and COO of Breakfast with Champions. Sarah McCord, thank you for saying yes to me. I know you've been sitting all day just laying in bed waiting for this call today. I'm telling you know that. You know, we actually, uh, working with Glenn Lundy, in less than 24 hours, we fully conceived of and launched a coaching tier, which you're a part of. So yes. I've actually been digging into the marketing of that today. And I'm so honored by your introduction. You're welcome. Sarah. So Thanks not laying in bed, just to clarify for anyone yes, who's no, I, That's an internal <laughs> joke. Sarah is one of the most busiest women in the world, waking up at early in the morning as all but BWCers do, and uh, get in the bed when we can, or our families and all that. But let's dive right into it, Sarah. For you sure. bring so much knowledge, and I don't even know. I have so many things I want to ask you in the next uh, 20 or so minutes we have time together. I don't know whether to ask you about leadership, Sarah, because how I've watched you bring people together, massage people together, you know, people's thoughts, and, and bringing a team, like I just asked Coach Isaac a team, or to talk about marketing, Sarah. I'm going to try to do both. Let's because do it all. You do Yes, you do both so well. Let's touch on marketing first, Sarah. Every okay. time I hear your segments and Breakfast with Champions, I learn something. As you know, I'm a marketer. I've been doing this for 20-something years. I learn something from your segments every time. Like, I'm, I'm like, what? What'd you say? So, Sarah, I'm just going to shut up. Talk to the smallest of small business owners. What are you seeing in the agency you have, BWC? What's some of the challenges like, Ramon? Here's what they're always doing if they would just stop doing this and start doing this. Can we start there, Sarah? Is that a fair question to give you some, sure. some hook, please? Absolutely. So I think the biggest advice that I would give a small business owner who doesn't have a marketing team, who's trying to figure it out for themselves, is in everything you write, I want you to think about who you're centering. And here's what I mean by that. Are you centering yourself 
as the business owner or are you centering your audience and your customer and what they need and what they're coming to you for? And that shift will make a massive difference. So I'll give you a perfect example. I know that you started this um, incredible live summit as a response to the pandemic. And that's such a clear example because you saw two different messages coming out of small businesses who, thank you so much. Uh, we saw two different messages coming out of small businesses who are struggling. The ones that center the small business owner would say, um, we're struggling with this, we're struggling with this, we're struggling with this, and we really need your support. Right. And um, certainly that's powerful. And certainly your most engaged customers will respond to that, but you wouldn't get anyone new. On the flip side, if you were centering your audience, you would say, here is everything that we are doing in this moment to make you feel safe, to make you feel served, to show up for you, to be a place that you can come to. This might be why our hours have changed. This might be why our processes have changed. This might be why our prices have changed, but all of it's to serve you in this moment. Hmm. Which of those messages is going to get you new customers? Yeah. To serve you. Right. So what right now, because, but, but it can be confusing. And those are the things that I like to dig into marketing because people think mm -hmm. that in order to build that rapport and that relationship, you know, we hear so much about personal branding. They should be I, 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 I. Mm -hmm. But some new business owners lean so far into that that they're talking at their audience instead of serving your audience. So that's a big shift that I would recommend. I think that is powerful. But Sarah, to, to push back, as a <laughs> word I like to say, <laughs> Sarah, well, what do you say though? And again, I see my, uh, wi I'm not on Wi Fi, but you know, you know these apps, Sarah. Sometimes the Wi Fi comes up and says you're on one bar, even though I'm wired. So if this is a little green, everybody, bear with me. It'll you look back. great. You look great. Okay, to me. Good. So, uh, what is the thing you say to small business owners that are saying, Sarah, I don't have time to we and I and all this. I need money. So I need to tell them. I'm selling pen, Sarah. Buy my pen. Buy my pen. I'm desperate. I need money today. If you understand what I'm getting at. What do you yeah. say to that small business owner? You know, I think that what I would say is I always like to differentiate for any business owner the difference between a communications goal and a mm. business goal. Mm. And it's really important that your um, communications efforts support your business goal. Your business goal comes first. So if you're saying like, I need to write 10 posts about pens, Sarah, leave me alone. That's a communications goal. And that's not your ultimate goal. Your ultimate, your business goal is to sell a thousand pens. So if your business goal is to sell a thousand pens, that's going to give you the breathing room to step back and say, how am I going to sell a thousand pens to my audience? What do they want to hear? Why should they come to me instead of Staples? Why should they not just go to Amazon Prime? Are my pens you know, better than the, they last longer. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's an incredible origin story about the fact that I'm making them in my garage and they can support the local community. Mm -hmm. And maybe that aligns with their core values, which again, serves the audience. Um, is it because, um, the power keeps going out in my neighborhood and we need this like return to old school forms of communication, <laughs> like come up with why they need to buy your pens. And then that kind of like the content will follow. I love it. I think it's so true. I think it's important. I think sometimes it seems, and I know I get caught in this, Sarah, is that we get so much into the tactics. My friend Seth Godin always pushes back against the tactics, but I think we forget what I'm, if I'm right, what I'm hearing you say, we forget about the principles and the story behind it. Is that, is that one nugget, one lesson to stop focusing so much? Let's run a Facebook ad. Let's do Twitter, but let's step back and go a layer higher of why we're doing it. Is that a fair, what I'm trying to say there? A thousand percent. You absolutely have to, um, you know, in order to be successful, you have to know what you're driving towards and, and you have to know why you're doing these things. And that actually helps you um, when you have to make those tough calls of where sure. does the ad budget go? Um, should I be advertising more? Should I be leaning into Google? Should I be leaning into social? Should I be going, you know, should I be going back to more traditional quote unquote forms of marketing? Should right. I be doing short form videos? Should I be writing blogs? Where's my audience? What do I, you know, small business owners, especially if you don't have a marketing team of 150 people, you're going to need to choose where to allocate your resources. So the very first step is your business goal. And then the next step is to create a communications and marketing plan. That's going to advance that business goal and also be willing to pivot when you need to. Sure. There's a lot of tools out there, Sarah, that small businesses can advantage, and you are the outlier of it. So we're not going to use you as an example. But there's a I'm lot a super outlier when it comes to tools. I'm exactly. I love Google, and everything else confuses me, <laughs> and, and I'm the first one to admit it. Indeed. But what are your thoughts on it? As you know, you've been involved in Wisdom, new audio app coming out. Sure. We are on you and I building breakfast with champions on Clubhouse. 
there's still Facebook out there, I think. I don't think it closed yet. You know, Twitter, Pinterest, which I haven't heard a lot of Pinterest out there. TikTok, our common friends, Nate and, and uh, all the others are talking about TikTok quite a bit. Yeah. Any tactical guidance there, Sarah, for the small business owners? They're like, I thought we were supposed to get email marketing done well. Wait a minute. I have to, oh, video, audio only? Any guidance that you're giving to that small business owner? Her name is Becky. She's making soap and facial creams, trying to make 150000 a year, Sarah, in her business. Any thoughts? Okay, Becky, I have two questions for you. Okay. If you are getting new customers, I want to know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And that's where I want you to lean into your marketing. If they're coming from a newspaper ad or a mom's group locally, you're going to work locally. If they're coming because of your guest blogs on parenting articles, you're going to go there. If they're coming through your Facebook ads, lean into your Facebook ads. If there's an Instagram influencer who goes crazy over your soap, then you're going to lean into influencer marketing. If your viral TikTok videos is what's driving people to your website, then lean into that. So if you're getting customers right now, lean in. If you're not getting customers, I want you to look around to all of the people who do something similar to you who are and mm. see where they're finding success. Do they are they in the Facebook mom groups? Are they um, you know, uh, where are they? Where are your people? Where are your people being served? Find them. And then I'll add one more thing, which is that too often when we try to be a one man or a one woman show and we go straight to the platforms, we overlook strategic partnerships. And strategic partnerships yes. are huge. And so if you sell soap, then what I want you to do is I want you to find the most popular candle, mug, and sock makers in your community and try and all access each other's client base because that's going to be huge for you. I love it. And Sarah, let me give an idea to them. Uh, yeah. Several people today I've talked to have said, Ramon, or no, when we were at BWC, I flew and I'll just tell you, I, I took an overnight flight. So I wore the same clothes on Friday that I wore on Saturday all day. But I won't I just, tell uh, anyone. We'll just, it'll just be our little secret. Yes. Nobody's watching. But Everybody's I put watching. The on so somebody could hire Ramon as an influencer and be like, cleanramon.com or something. That's just a crazy idea to throw out there. Um, Sarah, let's shift the conversation to leadership and managing people. One thing you do so well, that's why I call you a quadruple threat. You're a marketer in a good way. You're a marketer, Sarah, as a marketer in so many things you know, but you're also a good people leader. I'd love to know, A, where it comes from, but any tips or advice you so well just I, massage people's, bring us together. Can you help talk about that as best you can? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to get maybe a little bit, I don't know if this is woo-woo because I'm not a woo-woo person, but I'm going to share a couple of quotes that have been like very um, just meaningful for me in my life. Right. There's a quote by Edith Wharton that you've probably heard me share a few times before that says, um, there are two ways to spread light, to be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. And mm -hmm. I think as a leader, that is a quote that you have to lean into. You can't always be about the limelight. You have to see how you can have um, literally be that mirror and uplift the strengths and the opportunities of the people um, around you. We talk about it as servant leadership, as serving them. I think when you highlight them, I think when you allow other people to shine, that makes a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, I think I think it was Benjamin Franklin who said, there's no telling what you can do if you don't care who takes credit for it. Um, I do think as a powerful woman leader in particular, um, or if you're in any underrepresented group in leadership, you do have to lean in and say like, no, I did this so that people know. But at the same time, um, uplift what other people did. Don't be a credit hog. Whenever your people do something amazing, tell them privately, tell them publicly, tell the world so that they want to keep doing something amazing. Um, and then the final thing that I would say is that there is, I think, a really important balance between showing people a lot of love and care mm. and kindness and friendship, but also letting them know that you're not going to take any stuff. Mm. You got to mm. do that a little bit too, I think. Yeah. No, I think you're right. And, that, and that's a balance. Again, I don't think it would be unfair to do that in one hour, but I just, I would acknowledge you do it so well. And I think the lesson for small business owners, I think is that we have to do that. I think to echo what Sarah said is that you can, you know, be kind and be, et cetera. But if what I'm hearing, if the line is crossed or if something goes wrong, then you, that's where you can lovingly or whatever levels needed to come back and say, I think the line is, you know, you need to <laughs> chill mm -hmm. a bit or whatever word you want to use. Um, and let's talk a bit about breakfast with champions, Sarah. Yes. Uh, we're, we're building you and Glenn, Glenn's vision. You're with him. You all are building. I'm part of it. This You're a major part of it, Ramon. Thank you. I, <laughs> this global media company, what is it like? What is it all about? 
And everything we say, I always like to say, what does this mean for somebody else's business? And that's what I always like to do that lens. So tell us about it. What are we building? What are you building? And um, yeah, what lessons have you learned? And then how does that apply to small business owners? I think I asked you 47 questions in 30 seconds, but I know you can handle it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and answer them all. So I'm actually going to start because Breakfast with Champions is at a really special evolutionary moment. So I'm going to kind of spend one moment on our foundation sure. and then a moment on where we're going and then how we can help small business owners. Love it. So what's really special to me about Breakfast with Champions is that we are solving a core problem in media. Um, which is that we have seen that we have been siloing um, opinions and beliefs and thought leaders for too long. So people tune into the networks of people that they agree with. And because of that, they never learn and grow from people who they don't automatically hold every single same political, religious, ideological perspective with. We have very intentionally brought together thought leaders across the political, ideological, um, and industry spectrum to just expose people to insights and experiences um, from people who don't, you know, vote, pray, think, walk, love, eat like they do, um, which is extremely powerful, I think, in the community and the movement that we're building. And then the other problem that we've come together to solve was a problem in social media, which, as mm -hmm. you know, is so often a net negative. It was actually Seth Godin, when you interviewed him on Breakfast with Champions, who said, um, you know, we, he had said something along the lines that really inspired me and clarified this for me, where he said something like, we spend time, you know, gaining friends who aren't our friends and followers who aren't our followers. And on too many platforms, that's the truth. But what's incredible about Breakfast with Champions, when you were just talking about coming to Kentucky, is that it's a space where the relationships that you make are real and yeah. meaningful and profound and carry over and all of the time that you spend in Breakfast with Champions uplifts you. It will uplift your business. Um, and so actually, when you're saying, what can a small business owner do? I'd love to talk a little bit about um, the Champion Circle, which Please. we just released today. Absolutely. So we actually just released um, a membership opportunity today. Um, it's called the Champion Circle. And um, for $1,000 a month, we are building in the access um, to take it a step beyond Clubhouse, to have weekly trainings on Zoom, to have free access to our in-person events throughout the year, um, to have just really community um, and trainings um, and networking opportunities that take it a step beyond Clubhouse. I think that would be a really worthwhile investment for a small business owner. If I was saying, I want to learn from eight elite coaches mm -hmm. and, you know, people the who best, want to learn from them the and meet best. every single week. Yeah. I mean, I actually know the names of who signed on. We're going to be announcing tomorrow and I'm super Good. excited about it. Um, so, you know, where we're going is we're building in that access. We're building in those experiences. And I would say to small business owners, I hope it's breakfast with champions because as Ramon said, I spend all day, every day thinking about how we can serve. Um, but no matter what, it's actually like Danelle Delgado, one of our um, moderators mm. says, she always says never grow alone. And mm. so that's probably my biggest advice. And what I think is so special about Breakfast with Champions um, is that we're all growing together. And I think, and I actually think that you were saying this to Scott and Brian when I was listening, when I first signed mm. on. So hopefully we're pulling this through with some continuity. Please. This idea that sometimes mm. actually your family, your friends won't understand your entrepreneurial journey. It's and true. so finding those people who can understand and who can really um, cheer you on and teach you things is extremely powerful. Yeah, no, that's powerful. And I think one thing I like so much, uh, Sarah, about Breakfast with Champions and about what well, the model that's being built and small business owners can learn from it. My friend, John Jans, Duct Tape Marketing, uh, you know, know, like, and trust. Once mm -hmm. you've heard somebody over and over and over again, you do know them a little bit. You may not know how they're at home. You don't know whether whatever, but you get a 60%, 50%, Sarah, you get an idea, the consistency. Mm -hmm. Glenn Lundley talks about this, right? You know, come on, six months, I'm hearing Sarah two hours a day, as it were. <laughs> There's something that's going to be consistent. I'm going to want to work with her. So I think I like this about BWC is that maybe day one, maybe not. But three weeks, you've heard Elijah Bowie. Four weeks, you've heard Coach Isaac. Six weeks, you've heard Susie Miller, whatever it may be you're going to build up that trust and knowledge. I think I want to do that. So I think, A, join Breakfast with the Champions for sure. And I think, two, for your own small business, how can you build a relationship and increase the trust index? Something else Seth Godin talks about. Does that make sense, Sarah? 
Absolutely. And I just also want to take a moment to tell everyone listening live, everyone watching the replay, that Ramon is the real deal. I cannot wait to check out growyoursolo.com. You are someone who brings so much value, not only to your segments, but behind the scenes. The way that I've seen you support and uplift our business, I know that anyone would be privileged to have the opportunity to work with you Thank on you. their business. I appreciate this. So I'm going to say that as a clip and run it over and over again. Any Me day too. I feel yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Testimonial. Anytime you want one, Ramon. I appreciate that. One more thing I want to touch on, Sarah, is the aspect of um, scaling and growth. And I think that, you know, Breakfast with Champions is a good model of that. We started out, or, or let me reword this, building the plane while it's flying, which mm -hmm. is something that we're a startup, right? Is that fair to say? We are a startup. Oh, heck yeah. Like any other dot com, scrappy and like a Google Airbnb and figuring things out. I can ask you a more specific question, but anything on that aspect, talking to that small business owner that's like, we know we want to make black water bottles and have this, that, and the other. That's all we know. Yeah. Next year, it could be half the size. That iterative process, what are you going through? What have you learned? What can we learn? Running a company, building the plane while we're flying. And I must yeah. say, it is with thought, though, and intention. It's not like some Absolutely. crazy people here. Talk about that, Sarah. I would say you need a partner who looks at everything like the same, but completely differently than you mm. do. Um, so Glenn always says there's no growth in agreement. And um, like it was actually really funny because there was something that we were talking about last night where he was like, you know what? Instead of A, we need to do B. And I was like, you know what's really funny is that when we talked about this four weeks ago, I said, instead of B, we need to do A. And you and we, we flipped over the course of the four weeks. And I was like, so we're always agreeing just at the opposite time. From the beginning, we said that we were like two hemispheres of the same globe because we always came to the same point, mm -hmm. but completely differently. So, you know, to your point, you're, you're saying, how do you build the plane and fly it at the same time? Like Glenn is very like big picture, mm -hmm. visionary, like, let's just, we just need to know what we're going to build. And mm -hmm. I'm writing all of these strategy documents yeah. and you know what I mean? Or like, so, but we're always, and I say this to anyone, if you're working with multiple professionals, you always have to be rowing the boat in the same direction. Yes. There's no question about that. We are always rowing the boat in the same direction. When we were talking about the future of Breakfast with Champions, as soon as one of us said the word access, the other one was like, that is it. That is what um, we're leaning into. How it happens? We may disagree or figure Exa that out. Exactly. I actually. actually think that we had thought about something like pretty yeah. significantly earlier on in the day. And then we came to the conversation about the future and we had an hour where we were just like, so we're thinking the same thought, but we're thinking it entirely differently. Yes. And that's how you build the plane and fly it simultaneously because each person can catch the other one if they miss something. Wow. Sarah McCord, it's been an honor to serve with you. It's been an honor to serve under your leadership. It's been an honor to see a massive marketing person. I can go on and on and on. You already know how I feel about you, Sarah. But uh, Sarah McCord, uh, sarahmccord.com, but also breakfastwithchampions.live. We encourage all of you to, to join. And Sarah already knows I'm one of the biggest fans. I blab about Breakfast Champions all the time, 24 hours a day. So, But Sarah McCord, thank you for joining me today and saying yes to me. I know you have a family. Well, your physical family. You have us as a family. and. <laughs> You got I, Ramon, family. I will always say yes if you ask. You are the absolute best. Thank you. Sarah McCord, thanks for joining us today. Uh, President and CEO of Breakfast with Champions. I appreciate you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Bye-bye. Everybody, that was my friend. That was my friend, Sarah McCord. Thank you for this kind comment. See how Ramon and Sarah Peter Miriam's energy resonates, builds their confidence and enjoyment. Enjoy the process and see what leads you. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That was absolutely amazing. We're taking a really short, short, brief break just to relax, get in the mojo, get in the mood. We're going to have Nate Forrest coming up here in four minutes. But I hope you all have been having a good time. I appreciate you, those of you joining me here live, and those of you, the thousands, thousands, hundreds of you who've been watching this after the fact as well. We're here to celebrate launch of Grow Your Solo, growyoursolo.com, small little book I launched, small little book I launched, dispelling or, or dispensing the, the, the insights I've learned over the years about how to grow your solo business. You definitely want to check it out at growyoursolo.com, how you can grow your solo business. It's a thin book you can read in one hour, but more than the book, you can download the book on growyoursolo.com. You can get the PDF. You can get the audio experience. Audio experience is cool. Got some sound effects in there, all that. We also have a workbook that you can upgrade to get to. And some of you may want to say, you know what? 
I want to work with Ramon. We're just going to have fun week to week, month to month, year to year, pouring into you, answering your questions about how to grow your solo business. As many of you know, my expertise is in marketing, pretty good at technology as well, learned a lot about finance, and just overall, I like to have fun and help people grow and succeed. So definitely check out GrowYourSolo.com. And y'all know Gene Stafford's here as well, where you can find me and her and others at Breakfast with Champions as well. So I'm really happy, happy to have this day. And listen, we've been here three hours and 32 minutes. I've been sitting right here. I love hosting events, shining the light on others or wherever it may be. But I love, love, love what I'm doing. And I'm glad you all are here. Big props to the Smart Hustle community. Thank you to my team for making this event possible. Jamie Frayer. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Costa Teen. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you, Josh. And thank you, John. And thank you, Deborah, members of the Smart Hustle team. And remember, Smart Hustle Nation. That's the place you can go to where you want to ask questions of Ramon or others or our team. Just check it out at Smart Hustle Nation. Tara, indeed, they are a great team, indeed, that I'm honored uh, to be a part of for sure. But listen, it's 728. We got two more minutes to go. I'm going to give myself a little stretch right here live. You can join me. Do a little stretch with me. Raise your arm, raise your hand, twist your head. I'm not going to go too long because I want to hear everything from Nate for sure. He's going to be on in two seconds or so. Got to know him over the last few months on Breakfast with Champions. A gentleman who's an expert in affiliate marketing, an expert in smart hustle. Whoa, why did I put that up? Regina says, I need a smart. Oh, I thought she said, I need the smart hustle team. I was about to quickly take that down. Um, but she said, I need a smart hustle team. Yeah, you know, Regina, that's a good point about music. Next time we may pipe that in and have that. <laughs> Absolutely. I can do a bell. How about that? And don't forget to join me tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. on Breakfast with Champions. It's going to be an amazing, amazing episode. My top 10 list, how you can grow your business as well. So uh, thank you so much. Rub your hands and release. Thank you so much, Tara, for that tip. But I'm having a good time and I enjoy you all. Get ready to bring up uh, Nate Forrest. Let me just check the background, make sure it's all good. Yeah, Sarah is like legit ninja smart Nate. 100% to the core. I've learned so much from just watching her. But Nate, if you're ready, brother, we can dive into it, man, and bring you up as we dive in. Nate here. What's up, Nate Forrest? How are you, man? Let's make some noise and have some fun. Let's go. Let's go. Absolutely. Nate, thanks for being here. Believe in yourself. Indeed. I love your shirt. It's good to have you here. I'm good to get to know you over the last uh, few months on Breakfast with the Champions. Just seeing you in Lexington, Kentucky. Saw you earlier in Dallas at our mutual friend, Marcus. And Ashley, you're a giver. So thanks, Nate, for being here, man. Listen, Nate, tell us hey, a little I'm bit about who you are and what you do. Tell us a little bit about that first. Well, who I am, I'm a believer first. I'm a believer in Christ. And uh, I'm Amen. a fan, you know, I love my family. But when it comes to business and marketing, I try to be a solutions provider. I try to uh, have conversations, offer solutions, offer ideas that lead to, um, you know, that lead to more results for business owners. So I love to have those conversations, but I'm a marketing strategist. And marketing strategy can involve many different things. It can involve implementing uh, sales funnels, better lead generation, uh, making more noise in the marketplace, creating new ideas on ways to make more noise in the marketplace. So I'm a marketing strategist for home business entrepreneurs and small business entrepreneurs. So you and I should talk for the next six hours, Nate. You, you want to go get some potato chips let's and go. dip or something? Well, <laughs> All me, right, so Nate, let's just pour into it, man. My... <laughs> <laughs> I'll put mine up too. Listen, let's just start, man. What are the, some of the common things you talk to small businesses? I know it's a broad question, but just drop science on us. You have that big, first, let's ask this question. Why are people coming to you? And, and, and as you're answering this, people, yes, I want Nate to get out of this, but I'm asking him questions because when he talks about his clients, what he does, it's going to help us. So get your pins on and listen. So what's the pain point you're finding? She's a smart person, I assume. She knows her customers. She's she's not an idiot. What's that pain when she's saying, Nate, I need your help? What's that first step? Why she's coming to you? Just uh, well, people need help with lead generation, but not just okay. leads, not just Nate. Can you help me uh, find 300 names to talk to? I mean, there's people everywhere. But by, by increasing the quality of their leads, honing in on their exact target audience, honing in on the, the people that are most likely to buy their things. So it all starts with their messaging, the types of noise that they're making. So 
people come to me when they they hear me making a little bit of noise in the marketplace mm -hmm. and they want a little bit about you know they hear you talk about an idea they they they'll hear you uh and sarah and coach isaac and glenn lundy and everybody here tonight uh, scott simons and and, and brian hess yeah. they'll hear an idea and that idea will spark a question in their mind okay how do i create that same type of messaging so people come to me they ask me questions about marketing lead generation and messaging and just improving the quality of their messaging so that they can tap into maybe not just a new audience but uh, uh, get closer to the ear holes, closer to the uh, get more attention from the people that are already there, already in their circle, but maybe they want to get get their attention sooner than later. Got it. One thing you talk about on the whole team on social media show on Breakfast with Champions, Nate, is social media. Can any, and again, we could talk for hours about social media marketing. Talk to the person that's using Instagram, probably the most basic tool that everybody's using. Any common things you're saying, Ramon, Here's what they're doing wrong. Then after we tackle that, I want to talk about some funnel things. But I think social media, I think, but you correct me, Nate, is kind of the top of the funnel. What are yeah. those two or three things you're like, Ramon? Here's what people are doing wrong just in using Instagram. Anything that comes to mind, Nate? The first thing, the interesting thing, I love talking about this because I'm not a social media expert, but sure. I've learned a lot by hanging around people that, <laughs> that know the craft. And yes. I understand the, the 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 foundational parts of social media, and first of all, it's uh, treating people on social media like they're not people, like they're just mm. some uh, some robot or somebody that'll just click a button and buy their thing. So, just not understanding that social media is a place to meet people, as simple as that sounds. So, understanding that social media is like a party. I say this a lot. It's you walk into a party. You wouldn't just walk around and be like fist bump, fist bump, what's up, right. what's up, what's up? And then after you do that with 300 people, you're like, okay, I'm going to go home and then wonder why three of those people or, or 10 of those people didn't call you and uh, and and, and want to go hang out with you the next night. So if you're at a party, treat social media like a party. You would stop. You would have conversations. You would ask questions. You would engage. You would be funny. You would maybe you you talk about things that interest other people. And so treat social media like a party. That's a mistake that people don't make is they just don't treat people like they're people in the social media world. Hmm. They think they can just set up automated things. Auto, we'll talk about funnels in a, uh, in a minute. But the automation comes after you build relationships with real people. So you hit the nail on the head when you said social media is the top of the funnel. Social media is the place where we meet the people and it just starts with one person. We don't have to go do everything that Ramon Ray is doing right now. We just need it. If we're a small business owner and we're doing 100000 a year and we want to scale to, to 500000 or a million a year and we want to do it through social media and online marketing, let's just start with a couple of strategies that can help us reach one or two or three new people today, one or two or three new people tomorrow. And then once we're having relationships and having conversations with those people, you know, whether that's Instagram, Clubhouse or Facebook or YouTube, then we can start scaling and, and add new ideas to connect with more people. So the, uh, another mistake that people are making is they're trying to uh, do too much at once, you know, trying to set up too many, too many things, talk to too many people. And we do want to talk to everybody eventually. I get it. Um, but talking to too many people and, and with with too much of a, a, a confusing message. Let's hone in on a, on a message. Let's talk about one thing right now in this video. And then maybe tomorrow we'll talk about a new thing. But we don't have to show everything in the store. We don't have to show our, our poker chips, our footballs, and our and our cups in this video. Let's hone in on our message and let's just talk about our footballs tonight to, in this video. And then uh, maybe the people that are interested in buying our footballs or they're interested in our messaging about footballs, maybe those people will come back and be interested in our cups tomorrow in a different video. So I hope that makes sense. It does make sense. Are you finding that people may be doing that because they're in a rush because they feel they're so desperate and they don't want to take the patience to do it right? Could that be possibly one reason which has that perpetual, I got to rush and rush and rush? Is there any other reason? We're humans. We're humans. So we're interested in what we're interested in. But yeah. marketing, I learned a long time ago from a mentor of mine, marketing is the art and science of communicating to our target audience based on their needs, wants and desires and not our own. It's the it's the art and science of making noise on social media that changes the belief patterns of our audience. So they believe that this product is their solution. We already mm -hmm. believe it's your solution.
but we want them to say, oh, not only they believe it's their solution, but they, they transfer a belief and think that they can do it. They think they can throw the football if our if our product is football throwing coaching lessons or whatever. Right. If Coach Isaac is teaching people how to throw a football. <laughs> so not only do they think that Peyton Manning can do it, but we want to sell them on the idea that we can teach them how to do it. And so that all comes into messaging. And so uh, we need a, we need a laser in on a step by step messaging formula, if that makes sense. It does make sense. So, uh, you know, again, social media, such a big topic, but let's say we're doing that okay, Nate. Now, this other thing you're expert in, Nate, I would like to spend some time on it, funnels, because I think it's something that small businesses, they do a lot of DMs and they sell this, sell that, and the other, but funnels is something different. First, what does funnel mean to you? And that was understand an example of how it could mean for our business. And then let's dive a bit more into how we can maybe do this better. So what are funnels and, and why should businesses care about what funnels are? Well, to answer what are funnels, this is you know one of my favorite topics is, first of all, a sales funnel is a sales process. Your sales funnel could be meeting somebody on Facebook and saying, if you're if you're open to learning how to throw footballs, leave a DM and say foot or leave a comment below and say football. Now, you might just reach out and connect with them in the DMs and then t and call them on the telephone. Mm -hmm. That's a sales process. That's a sales funnel. But now when we get on online, when we start generating more and more and more leads and we have too many people to talk to, and maybe we don't have the sales teams in place to make all the phone calls yet, then we, we create automated pages. And all it is, all an online sales funnel is, is it's like a virtual 24 hour salesperson because the best salesperson in your business and Ramon's business is who? It's Ramon Ray. The best salesperson in my business is Nate Forrest, but I can't talk to a hundred people in the next hour on the telephone. But I can I can do a one minute, two minute, three minute video and throw it on a page and have one or two buttons that say, if you'd like to learn more about throwing footballs, click this button. If you'd like to learn more about the drink that I drink to help me throw footballs, click this button. So as long it's a it's a simple process that guides people where you want them to go so they don't mm -hmm. get distracted. Whereas a website, a sales funnel is a Web page. But a website in general has too many options. People get distracted. Oh, I'll come back later. You send them to a website and there has you can buy this, 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 this. Right. You can learn about this, 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 this. And those websites have a place. They have a place uh, eventually as you're building a brand. Websites have a place. But a sales funnel is a simple guided process where you can take your audience, whether they're leads or they're customers and you want them to buy something else, something new. You take them through a process that you want them to go through that you think will help them understand your your solution in a, a better, just in a better way. No, I love that for sure. And are people are coming to you, Nate, are they coming to you because they have a funnel already that maybe needs fixed or are they coming to you because they haven't even started it, you know, at all? They haven't even mapped it out. Talking maybe it's about two different types of people or is it two different questions? Yeah, no, that's a, a good a good question because some people, they're already using programs like Kartra, ClickFunnels, sure. uh, Kajabi. They're using funnels and maybe they're kind of confused. Maybe they've gotten lost. So people come to me that are looking for a simpler solution or a more inexpensive solution. Um, and and they come to me and they don't they just like you said, they don't have a sales funnel process at all. So I teach people how to set up just a simple one or two page funnel. That's just, hey, my name's Nate. Welcome to our Web page. Let me tell you. Let me tell you about X, Y or Z. And then you can add as you learn about funnels, you can add different pages, different steps. So a little bit of both. I have people that are looking to to understand more about building simpler funnels that convert. And then I have people that come to me that just don't even have a sales funnel process in place. They're doing all their lead gen in their DMs and telephone, and they'd like to add a little bit of automation. I love that. One question came in, uh, Nate, and I want to, you know, I think I'm asking, but Udin, if you want to uh, redo the question again, but what do you do if your message only attracts other coaches? And I thank you for allowing me to go kind of all over the place here, Nate, but I think it's an important question. Sometimes I find small business owners, and I'm going to interpret this question, Nate, that they're attracting the wrong audience. I'm saying, hey, blah, 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 I want you, but yet this person keeps coming to me. Is that good, Nate? Is that bad? Help us understand what Udine is asking. I think it's a, if I understand her question, I think it's a very important question. Oftentimes, a small business owner is attracting people that they don't want. Why does that happen? You know what? We do attract people that we don't want. And uh, uh, we just, it's important to have those conversations and, and send them to a, a solution and let the rest take care of itself. What do I mean mm -hmm. by that? Uh, we attract other coaches, other business owners. And if they ask the wrong questions, 
I like to, I, I have enough automation in place, enough where I can just send people to the back office and say, give this a try, give this a look for 30, 60, 90 days. And if it makes sense for you and your business, because what I do and what any business owner should do is we should provide solutions that help another, uh, our customer, especially if they're a business owner, that should help them where they're at right now, what, where, where they're mm-hmm. at right now. And if we can't, then we, we, we refer them to Ramon. We refer them to Sarah McCord. We refer them to somebody that can help them right now. We don't want to just make money from them if we can't help them right now. So when I attract coaches, other business owners, I'm pretty confident I can help them right now if they're focused on building a list, you know, uh, building sales funnels, uh, you know, increasing their mess, uh, having better messaging in their marketing, new marketing ideas, all that stuff. So um, I can have conversations with just about any business owner and give them at least come away with some fresh ideas. They might not become a client, but at least give them fresh ideas to where they feel good about the, uh, the conversation or the relationship, even if that's all it ever is, is a 30 minute or a one hour consultation. Sure. Nate Forrest, this is great. And I think we have your website going to come up soon, I believe, but feel free to verbally give that out. Regina said, thank you very much. And Nate Forrest is surviving thrive free gift at nateforrest.com. Love it, love it, love it. So definitely check out what Nate Forrest has at nateforrest.com. And thank you, uh, Smart Hustle team in the background there for being Johnny on the ball or whatever example and getting that up. Thank you so much. So uh, Regina says, um, how do we manage all of it? It's like a part-time job. Um, it's a broad question, Nate. I understand that. But I think it's a common thing I hear from many small business owners. And again, we wouldn't need a social media club if it wasn't true, right? Because you hear the questions all the time. Your room is full of people, you and, and Tom Chandler and Alexander and Brooke and everybody else. This seems so overwhelming, Nate. Is the answer only just to hire somebody, get a consultant? Or are we just not smart enough to understand these tools? Anything you're seeing to help us demystify over wisdom, IG, Facebook, TikTok. Oh, we got to do reels, short form video. What do we do, Nate? This is a good (laughs) question because I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going through that right now. I'm trying to dive in and and, and build out my YouTube channel. I'm trying to figure out how much time I should spend on wisdom. And I think the question was directed like building sales funnel sounds like a part-time job. This is what I take pride in. I show the simplicity I can show somebody how to build a one or two page sales page funnel in in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just as simple as branding you and your business on your pages so that when they go to your website, eventually some of you may already have a website, but let's give them clarity and understanding about our mission, our messaging, who we are before they get to the website. And if so, if they know, like, and trust us when they get to the website. And so I say that to say, yes, it can feel like a part-time job, just tackle what's in front of you right now. And I show business owners how to just just build pages one at a time. Starts with one branded capture page. It starts with attaching an email autoresponder to that page. And we have uh, tutorials uh, at nateforce.com that show people step by step by step how to do this stuff one step at a time. We don't have to build a 10, a 10 step funnel that Russell Brunson has, or maybe Ramon has a five page funnel. You don't need those starting off. You just need a place where people can get to know you and your mission statement, your your values, and may, it might be a one minute video, it might be a three minute video, and then that has a button that goes to your website where they where they can buy your thing. So you, the fun thing about funnels is you get to play with it and determine what they look like. The, is there pictures? Is there videos? What does the process look like? You can play with it, and it, and it changes all the time. And you can have, you know, you can have one or two funnels. Now that you have one or two funnels, now you're marketing messaging, which is where Mm -hmm. the money is made. The money is made in your marketing messaging, not in, okay, you have a solution. You have a, you have a, uh, you're an entrepreneur. You came up with the best solution, the best drink, the best weight loss drink, or the best way to throw a football. The solution doesn't make you money. It's the marketing of that solution. And so now you can create multiple campaigns. You can have an Instagram campaign. You can have a YouTube campaign. It can be educational videos. It can be entertaining videos, whatever it is. It can be an interview with Ramon Ray. And you take those campaigns and you send those to the same one or two funnels. So you might only build one or two funnels this year. Maybe you build 10, but you only need one or two. And all your messaging goes to the same funnel. I hope that makes sense. It does make perfect sense, Nate, for sure. We got about four minutes to go, and they're bringing on. I don't know if you know Glenn Lundy. You may, if you don't know him, I'll introduce you to him. Uh, but let me write that name down. 
<laughs> yeah, Glenn. <laughs> G-L-E-N-N-A. Well, how lucky am I? I'm right in between Sarah McCord and Glenn Lundy. I mean, I think I just made a million dollars just to be able to go live and tell people I was between Sarah McCord and Glenn Lundy. I think you did. I think you did. But one another thing I want to talk to you about, Nate, or find out, you know, but is that when do we know it's time to hire someone? There's a lot of people who are trying to do it themselves, and I think that's fine. Some of the digital tools we have are very easy to use. But I know sometimes even my own business, it's like, you know what? I could do this, but it's time to hire somebody else. Can you help guide us on when we know it's time to hire somebody? Because as we talk about how to grow people's solo businesses, that is a question. There's money considerations, there's time considerations, and I believe there's expertise considerations. Any guidance for how we know it's time to invest in hiring somebody to help me get this done? Each, each time I catch myself getting overwhelmed and I, like right now I have things that I can't get to. I know like right now I need to hire a couple of people. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a small team. I only have two people that I pay to help me. So I'm a small mm -hmm. team of me and two people. And, and then every once in a while I pay people to do tasks. Mm -hmm. But uh, I need to hire a couple more people right now to do to do things, to write, to help me uh, write more emails, to do more videos, to do editing on videos. And because uh, so my, my next focus is a YouTube channel. So I think when you if you have the cash flow coming in, and focus on the marketing activities that can create the cash flow. Maybe some of you listening, you have the cash flow, but if there's things, uh, be willing to spend that money coming in on help to scale. That mm -hmm. that's held me back for a long time. Is like, do I spend this money on my own? You know, do I invest it or do I invest it in my business? You know, by hiring new people. So I think it's just anytime you feel overwhelmed and there's things that you know will scale your business, hire somebody to do that thing. And uh, uh, if you catch yourself. Uh, not focusing on the creativity and the marketing, then uh, you know it's time to hire somebody to do the other stuff. Because as a business owner, you need to be all in on getting attention and, and marketing, which is kind of the same thing. Get attention. My football says, get more attention, nateforest.com. We threw these out at, at, at Grow for God. It says, get more attention because as a marketer, that's your number one focus. Where can you get attention? Ramon Ray's doing a summit because it gets attention from people that are looking to add value to their life. And uh, tomorrow he'll be on Breakfast with Champions adding value, and uh, that gets attention. That's how I know who Ramon Ray is because he's full of energy and he makes funny noises sometimes. He gets attention. <laughs> so part of getting attention is just being you. My shirt says yeah. believe in yourself, but it says be you. So yeah. be you, but uh, add a little bit to you every day and get attention. Nate Forrest, thank you for saying yes to me. I know there's a lot of things you could be doing right now, but I am so grateful you said yes and spent some time. I wanted to introduce Nate Forrest to the Smart Hustle community at the Survive and Thrive Growth Summit. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time to be I'm here. I'm grateful to be here. I'm blessed to be here. I'm all in. Ramon, are you all in? Absolutely. You know it. <laughs> Nateforrest.com. <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me, man. Indeed, and Nate has a, has a daily show, may not be him each time, but a daily show, social media show on Breakfast with Champions on Clubhouse and beyond, breakfastwithchampions.live, but definitely check him out at nateforrest.com. He can help you grow your business, so for sure. Thank you, Nate. Appreciate you, brother. Hey, everybody, this is Ramon Ray. Thanks for joining us. We're on the final stretch of being here five hours live, five hours live at the Survive and Thrive Growth Summit. So many of you have hung out with us live for all five hours, and we know many, many people will be seeing this after the fact as we share this video to thousands and thousands in the smart hustle community and beyond. And Tara says to Nate, we love you, Nate. Absolutely. So I am so glad that you all are here today and join me uh, for this time and really to help you grow your business. Definitely check out what we're doing to help very small business owners grow your solo.com. And I'll talk more about that in a bit, but I want to make sure I give plenty of time to my friend, uh, someone I consider a mentor, someone I've learned from so much. And thank thank Glenn for saying yes the second time, Ramon. First time I had him on a podcast, but I wanted to bring him live uh, to the Survive and Thrive Summit. So Glenn, if you're ready to go, Come on up. Glenn Lundy, thank you so much for being here today. God bless you and your family. How are you, sir? Bro, I'm fantastic. How are you? Are you kidding me? Glenn, I'm oh, doing no. great. I get to hang out with you and Nate Forrest, Sarah McCord, Tara Murney, like all these people, man. Are you kidding me? I'm I am 
I am absolutely fantastic, my man. Yeah. Tara's been here for sure for a, for a while with us, so she sends you her warm greetings. She's but Glenn, one I wanted the, to one in a trillion, brother. One in a indeed. trillion. Indeed, I wanted to bring you, Glenn, to the Smart Hustle community, Glenn. Uh, mm -hmm. I've followed this journey you've been on for the last several several months. You've been doing it for four years, uh, and I just wanted to introduce you to the Smart Hustle community because I've been bringing people <laughs> to the Breakfast with Champions. Glenn, what's it like to build a brand new media company? where there's 80 or so uh, influencers and hosts pouring into people. Can you just talk to us about what that journey has been and why you're building it and why people should care? I think it's kind of like, um, I think it's kind of like getting married, getting divorced, having a, um, you know, putting, putting together, uh, build, building a new home, and uh, moving across the country, all, 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 at, all at the same, all at the same time, man. It's the craziest up and down roller coaster I've ever experienced in my entire life, ever, Ramon. It's, it's nuts, man. I wouldn't wish this on nobody, not a single person. Would I wish this on? With that said, it's one of the most impactful things I've ever done in my life in my career. And we are on a mission to help people change the way they start their day. Uh, I firmly believe that for the last 70 years, at least since the early 1950s, uh, the way that people have woken up has been uh, a series of programming, right? News is on from five o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock in the morning. And it's always violence and politics and racism and all of these things, right? And so I think it's time that humanity have a safe place that they can go first thing in the morning, a place where they can get motivation, education, and inspiration, a place where they can get access to information that they wouldn't get anywhere else, access to thought leaders, to experts, to incredible entrepreneurs and business owners and celebrities and influencers and all of those things. And so we are on a mission to change the way people start their day and ultimately help them become the best versions of themselves that they can possibly be. And along that mission, of course, we want to make sure that people feel seen, heard, and significant. Right, Ramon? Yes. I think right now, that's a big problem that we've got going on. Yeah. Um, my partner, Sarah McCord, she talked about it earlier, how the social media spaces have been really siloed. And it's created a lot of division. People are just lining up with those that they um, agree with. Right. And there is no growth in agreement. As a matter of fact, it, it, it causes constant separation and division the more we hang out with those that we 100% agree with. And so Breakfast with Champions is our opportunity uh, to change the narrative, to move things forward in a new and positive way, and to help people feel seen heard and significant like i said earlier but we do that through like it's from the inside out Ramon. Yes. it's one thing to be seen on your instagram page with your filters and your makeup and so on and so forth um, but we want people to know that there's a seed that was planted inside them that they were that they matter that their life has value and it has worth and it's not about uh, a picture it's not about a lamborghini it's not about any of those things we want people we want to see people for who they are where they are and do everything that we can to elevate them no and you're doing a very good job at it uh glenn for sure is there any concern whoa okay I'm I clicked the wrong button there. sorry no i i clicked the wrong button is there any concern glenn uh, as you build breakfast with champions that uh, that there's too much positivity meaning we get comedy shows but, you know, the news of the day is it doesn't say uh, donuts were delivered safely. Doesn't say politician didn't steal money. It's all some, you know, Britney Spears and, okay, is Michael Jackson dead or not? You get what I mean. <laughs> so do you find that this, there's too much positivity and excitement and now we want to go back to hearing that man bit dog. You know? Man, there was this, um, there was this guy uh, a long time ago. They, they wrote a book about him. Um, but ultimately the most popular human in the history of the planet and the most impactful human in the history of the planet. Uh, the book that they wrote about him has sold 3.6 billion copies uh, uh, globally. 
which to give you an idea, uh, a comparison, the second best selling book of all time is the Harry Potter series coming in at about 700 million, which is a phenomenal okay. job. It's nothing compared to 3.6 billion, right? So if you've never read that book, it's a book called the Bible and it's about this guy, Jesus. And Jesus literally shifted the trajectory of the world and all of humanity uh, through a message of hope and love. So to me, there's no such thing as too much positivity. There's no such thing as too much encouragement. There's no such thing as too much love, right? That's all, that, that, that's all positivity is. It's a version of love. It's a energetic component of love. Um, people have a hard time with that word love though, right? So we yes. say, just be positive. Yeah. Uh, but really what we mean is, is love one another, you know? And so what you touched on is actually the problem. The problem is that the headlines are always negative. Words have power, man. Words have power. And so it's real simple, Ramon. Like, it's real simple. If I were a scientist mm -hmm. and I was going to do a test to get to a particular result, right? Or maybe I'm a click funnels expert right. and I want an A, B <laughs> test. I want an A, B test, right? I would look at these tests and I would say, okay, we've done this, 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 mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, E, and the result is the whole freaking world's on fire. Yes. So how about we don't do that, A, B, C, D, E, because it clearly doesn't work. It clearly has not brought us together. It is divided more than united, right? right? It is separated. The wealth gap is the largest it's ever been in history. There are people with mental disorders, depression, anxiety. I mean, we are such an unhealthy species at this, at the, in this period of time, right? So clearly the formula we've been running with doesn't work. It doesn't work. So just like our click funnels, AB test, if you ain't getting conversions, you don't just double down on that, right? You get rid of it and you figure out what works. And what works is if people can start their day with a solid foundation. I'm not saying news isn't important. Sure. I'm not saying being abreast of what's going on isn't important. I'm not saying having discussions about these issues that are going on in the world are not important. It's the exact opposite. But do we really need to be gang banging on bacon, Ramon? It's 6 a.m. <laughs> bacon. I mean, come on. Get a solid foundation first. One filled yes. with gratitude, with positivity, with love and yes. encouragement. And then that way, when the storms come later, we've got solid foundation. And if we could literally flip humanity upside down on that, it would change everything, man. It would change yeah. everything. No, I think you're right. How did you feel, Glenn, when you were in Lexington, Kentucky? We were at the Grow From God Conference together, and so many people I saw, and, and I imagine they were coming up to you, just appreciating the positivity. Because now arguing against what I just said, it seems like people need it. Either people were either lonely or they're looking for an outlet. They wanted people like to touch and hug and want to be around people. How does that feel, Glenn, to see that vision? Uh, and, and I guess my question is your dedication started four years ago in a closet, you know, part of Rise and Grind, and now it's this. How does that feel to have people coming up to you and you're realizing, huh, Glenn, was it wrong that people do need this? They need it. How does that feel, Glenn? It feels heavy, Ramon. Um, you know, Friday, we did the last episode of Rise and Grind. We celebrated this weekend. Uh, in, in Lexington, Kentucky with hundreds of people. Sure. And there were tears and there was laughter and uh, there was just this energetic magic that existed, you know, across, across, across the three days. And halfway through um, the second day, halfway through Saturday, mm. uh, this guy named Grant Cardone um, swung by mm -hmm. and, and, and made a little visit. And right after he left, my son, went on the stage and my son sung, uh, sang, is that the right word? Mm -hmm. Sang, my, my son sang um, a beautiful song, right? Yes. And so basically we flew Grant Cardone in to open for my son. Yes, yes. Right? And my son is such a spiritual, spiritual person. And when he sang, I think everybody could feel it, right? We could Absolutely. feel it the presence of something bigger than self, whatever that looks like. And 
in that moment, as soon as he got done, I realized like, dude, what we're doing matters. Yeah. And it's not a hobby. It's not just something fun. Like this is war, bro. This is war. It is an all out war that is going on around this planet. And there are lives at stake. And so before it was kind of like, all right, we're doing the thing. We've been doing the rise and grind thing. And that's been impactful and it's changed people's lives. And that's fun. But all of a sudden I just felt the weight of like, okay, wait a minute. Mm. This is serious. And we've been called now at this point, we've been led to lead the charge, right? It's almost like if you're, um, I was never in the military, shout out to all my military sure. people. Our family was military except for me, but it's almost like if you were, you know, in the military and you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're hanging out with your buddies in the uh, in boot camp or, not, you know, wherever it is, yes. right? You're stationed somewhere and you guys are playing Pinochle or whatever the heck it is. I, I just aged myself with Pinochle. Yeah, that's all, I, I know the name. <laughs> right? You're playing spades or whatever it is that you're doing. And then all of a sudden you get the call. And they say, hey, we're shipping you over right now. Jump on the plane. We got to go over to Iraq. They're, 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 uh, they're murdering small children and women. And we got to go in and do something about it. And so that's what that moment felt like to me is it felt like all of a sudden we've been activated. We went from reserves to active troops. And there's a lot of weight that comes with that. But it is exactly what I've asked God to do for me for the last seven years. I said, God, lead my steps. Allow me to be a soldier in the fight. And so, yes, it's awesome. Yes, it was fun. I loved seeing you. I loved the sure. dancing on the stages. I loved every single aspect of it. Um, but we've got work to do, my friend. We've got, we've got great work to do. And so it's a combination of joy and exhilaration as well as very 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 heavy weight and responsibility yeah i can feel that i can feel that for sure and i'm curious glenn as well how do you see yourself you know throughout history there's elected officials you know they are what they are many are good i'm sure uh there's spiritual people right mother Teresa or others who are the spiritual mantle like a mission and a calling like that then you have civil rights leaders right who've been there for a time as this and they have one particular mission Anywhere, maybe you haven't thought about it, but have you thought about it where Glenn fits in? Is it a celebrity personality, a business person who just happens to want to do a show? Or is it, I know it's a mission for sure. You've said that, but where do you see yourself? Or is it something new, if that makes sense? I see myself waking up every single day and asking God what he wants me to do. Mm. Um, if he wants me to, you know, in a season, run out and, and, you know, and be a spiritual leader, then I'll, that's what I'll do. If he wants me to be a celebrity on television, I'll be a celebrity on television. If he wants me to be a politician, I'll ask him five times if he's really sure that that's what he wants, but I'll do whatever he says. I really hate politics, yes. but, <laughs> uh, you know, so far, so far, every time um, he's given me direction, I've, in the past you know decade of my life sure. every time that he's given me direction i've responded with yes sir and it's always ended up right right so as far as putting anything into a box you know i have my own visions dreams and ideas and plans of what could be and where we could go and and so on and so forth and i'll move in those directions um, but ultimately I leave it, I, I leave it, I leave it to him. And and I don't believe our God should be put in a box and, and, and I'm not gonna, I'm not interested in putting myself in a box either. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. I think you're right. You're open to, to the spirit and whatever uh, needs to be done. Uh, but clearly breakfast with champions is a vehicle. I've seen it working for the last several months. First met you in uh, July, I believe it was. And uh, definitely it's impacting uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of and Ramon, that's what's great, man. That's I want to say this real quick. Mm. I'm sorry to interrupt please. you. No, please. Uh, I don't I don't want anybody to misunderstand the direction of Breakfast with Champions and the and the uh the the direction and the uh whatever word I'm looking for, but we know where Breakfast with Champions is going, right? Uh that lane has been illuminated. We understand that path. Uh Glenn Lundy himself, what I am so grateful for 
is for the last four years, this has kind of been a, a, a solo mission mm-hmm. where Glenn was showing up and doing the show every day. And I had a group of people around me that were fighting with me, right? But it was kind of like a solo mission. Whereas now we have Breakfast of Champions, which is this massive con- con- uh, collaboration. Yes. Of just in- incredible humans, right? And so I, I am in a position where I get to step back and say, maybe Glenn ends up on TV. Maybe Glenn ends up in an office. Maybe Glenn ends up wherever. Um, but Breakfast with Champions trajectory, that's what I'm looking for, Regina. Breakfast with Champions <laughs> is heading, heading into the space of 14 billion ear earlobes that exist ar- ar- around the planet. Uh, Breakfast with Champions is going to continue to lead and dominate in the areas of all things audible, right? If you can, if you can listen to it, if you've got ears, then we're going to end up in those ears, wherever that is around the planet globally, so that we can really whisper into the ears of people and let them know that, hey, we see you, we hear you, you are significant, you are a child of God, right? So I just want to make sure there's no misunderstanding there. It's not like Glenn's going to wake up tomorrow and say, oh, Breakfast with Champions, no more. I'm running over in this direction. No, I've been given the opportunity now to stay more in flow with that path because I have so many powerful, powerful people around me in the Breakfast of Champions world that can make sure this ship right here is going in the dire- in the direction that it's meant to. No, for sure. Glenn Lenny, this has been powerful. And I just wanted to bring your voice to the Smart Hustle community uh, to shine and amplify it. You know, further, we're going to rip this apart. Uh, so I'm so grateful that you said yes to me. Uh, breakfast with the champions. Live. I wake up now at 425 so I can have time with my guy. And Glenn, I wanted to ask you. Uh, I brought I your energy so far down because we got so serious. You were wanting like, <laughs> you know, absolute ding, 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 ding. And I like brought you. That'll be 730 tomorrow. Lift it back up. Lift it back up. Lift it back up. No, we are good. We are good. But Glenn, I want to tell you, listen, um, do you, I, again, I, seriously, if you can't see, so you got to run. I respect time and family other commitments. But we have some superstars who are in the waiting room right now. Do you have 10 more minutes to hang out with us and have a group discussion with some people you know, or you got to step away right now? If you do, no problem. Let me know. Would I'll you tell think? you the same thing I told your people when they emailed me. Okay, what do you think? Anything for Ramon. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I just, but I do ask to respect that. You know, you may have. Okay, so in that case, team, uh, I hope everybody's ready. We're just going to have a discussion now. I see Amelia smiling, Nate smiling, and Brad smiling. <laughs> Boom, here we go. <laughs> this is a treat. Wow. <laughs> All right, let's go. Amelia! This is like a family reunion. This is awesome. Let's go. Brad, Brad P O V. What's up, Mr. Nate Forrest? I think what we'll do is do this for uh we'll do it for 15 minutes or so. We may not go too much longer than that. Amelia, let me know when you can hear us okay. Probably a wire or something like that there, but we will uh stand by. Oh, so my team will DM you in the back in the comments there. But I think what we can do, but let my team let me know. A, I can bring the questions up. Uh, but I think what I'm also going to do, if you have questions for Glenn or Amelia or Nate or Brad, put them in the comments. It's only going to be for a while. I want to respect all their times. And we do have some questions that came in already. So I may bring those up, but it's rarely that we get to have these four humans plus one together. And so if you have a question, ask it. And I will bring, I will not bring you up, but I will ask it right there live. Other than that, though, if my team can put up some of the questions, actually, I can do it in the banners. Hey, Ramon, I just want to say thank you, bro. Please. This whole thing together man sitting here for five hours pulling people together serving humanity bro yeah Uh, that's really good good. yeah the work that it takes like you're you're amazing bro you're amazing so thank you so much i received that thank you love you and i appreciate it very much thank you so i think team what we can do is uh let me know real quick here shall i you know bring the questions up in the comments or do you all want to bring the questions up liz and uh Jennifer and or Jamie, uh, I can. Should I go ahead and do that? Just let me know in the private chat real quick here. Uh, I think they're trying to help Amelia, so I will do that. Let's see. Ryan, hit your office, bro. It's sick. Okay, man. weekend, good. Fashionably late as usual, man. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> office is sick, though, dude. For real. Thank, thanks, man. How about how and about we sh- start with Ramon? What's it like running a summit for four four years in a row? 
Oh, yeah, I'll tell you that. But you can keep the question up. I'll answer that one. Then we'll get to the people's questions. Um, Yeah, I enjoy it. Listen, we're, we are all performers, servers in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Brian does his morning show every morning. I've watched that. Brad is uh, his reluctant speech at BWC following, was it Amelia? That was amazing, Brad. Now. Now, you're, you're a performer. And Glenn Luddy's been doing this for years. So I enjoy it. I could sit here for hours except for biological issues, but I love it. But thank you, Nate. Christy Talley says, and we'll just go round robin or whoever wants to just shout out. Uh, we'll do it for till 830. We'll do that. How about that? We'll keep the time short. So what is your best advice for growing a team and transitioning from solo entrepreneurship? Who wants to take that? Transitioning from solo entrepreneurship. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I'm doing in this moment is developing two things that I've never had to develop before. It's the speed of trust and the speed of implementation. It's figuring out what are the tactics, the tactical moments that I need to execute immediately and who are the people that I, I don't have to look left or right. You know, like I feel like when Glenn and Sarah reached out to me, I feel like they were like, Brad, we want to link arms. Let's walk forward. And in Spark, we're doing the same thing. If they watch this on the replay, Zach and Ryan, you know, I'm talking about you. It's just we've been doing this for a year now, two years now. And as it's time to move forward. How do you know who you can trust? Lean into them because there's going to be a wider circle. Glenn can speak to wider circles and circles and circles and circles. Brian and Nate can speak to it as well. And, and when, you, when you think about the speed with which you can trust a really nuclear group of people, it makes implementation almost like a handoff in a relay. And, man, it's been, I think, for, for, our, for Spark, as we've moved past – Brad and some 1099s, and now we look at teams. Um, that's been the that's been the game changer. Trust and implementation. I love it. One or two others can feel free to share that I'm gonna team. I'm gonna bring up the question from Savvy Seth. Anybody else want to add to that or feedback to Brad before we go on? Uh, yeah, I would just add to that that Please. delayed gratification uh, is the mm. key to transitioning. You know, right. uh, the big the worst thing that a mm. startup entrepreneur can do is pay themselves too much uh, to try and keep up with other people. And it's an easy thing to do in today's world. Uh, for me and my business, uh, you know, what success we've created has been from delayed gratification. Every dollar we leave in turns to five, 10, 15, $20 in a year or six months. Um, so just be patient uh, and that money will multiply. Yeah, I agree 1000% and Christy, <laughs> I remember going from solo to team, and I remember the fear and concern of making that move. And I will, I will tell you <clears throat> that the moment the universe is crazy, right? So, if you're used to or have created a pattern of generating at a certain level, when you hire somebody else, it creates a void that void then gets filled. So every time I've added somebody to the team, all of a sudden that money I was afraid to give them because we weren't, you know, I wasn't sure. All of a sudden that it's like a vacuum. It just fills up, man. It literally just fills up and you're right back to where you were before. Uh, profitability and now there's two and then there's four and then there's eight, right? Uh, but you can get so much more done and you make a bigger impact. So if you're mission matters to you the best thing that you can do is like brian said have delayed gratification like brad said make sure you know who you can trust and add people to support what you've got going so you can scale further and faster i love this next question i'm going to bring up and amelia thanks for joining i said we'll go for about 15 minutes to respect everybody's time here but i'm just so tickled to have these five humans is amazing uh brian you were called out of this brian but i'm going to shift this first to nate and amelia and then anybody else can add on savvy Soph asked what advice would you give to a single mom that started a successful small business but still holding on to the j day job because of income security nate amelia want to pour into her briefly and then we'll see what everybody else has to say about leaving a single Ladies mom first. that has a, has a small business, still holding on to a day job because of income uh, insecurity. Amelia, go for it. You know, I think it's it's to be unbelievably clear what needs to happen to quit the day job, right? You can't go in two directions at the same time because you do neither one well. 
And so what can you stop doing, right? To really get as tight as you can, right? Below your means, take everything out to be able to say my first step is to be doing my business full time. And so as you gain in the growth of that business, you're like, well, how many deals do you need? How many calls does that mean you need to make? Who can help you? And then what can you at the same time, right? The hardest part of this is, is the, the releasing part, right? It's not the gaining part. Like we have the mindset, I'll just sell more. <laughs> I get that. But what do you stop doing is where the difficulty lies. There's so much extra that people do that is just a waste of money. And every dollar needs to be working for you, every dollar. And so even the small things, you know, become habits over time, right? I make my coffee before I leave. Can I afford a $6 Starbucks? Yeah, but the habit is in me for so long that I'm like, I'd rather take that $6 and have it go work out in the street for me, right? And so you really, really have to understand that the people that you see I mean, Warren Buffett's a perfect example. I mean, look, look, look at how, what his daily allowance is on stuff. He still has money working is a bigger gain for him than any short term uh, win. Right. This is what, what Brian is saying. This is what Glenn, Brad, everybody's saying here is that you really have to be committed to really pay attention that every time is working for you. Every resource is working for you. Every dollar is to its highest and best use. So the, the single mom portion of this, I get it. I get it. I mean, when I did this and I have four, right. I was working nights. Like, I mean, I mean, nights like 11 to two in the morning and then getting up and getting an hour in before they woke up. And then an hour during my lunchtime, like any moment I get was building that business so that I could quit any paying day job. Same thing to when I transferred out of client work into what I do now was how do I, how many clients can I stop so I can focus on the main objective? I love it. I love it. I love it. Anybody else want to add anything? One, one or two more persons and we're going to move to the next. I, I can just say real quick, please also get creative on, is there, how can you increase your cash flow by maybe adding one extra product line, maybe some uh, training on something? I don't know what kind of business she's in, but how are you spending your time? If, Like Amelia said, if your number one objective is to quit your job, find a creative way to increase your cash flow faster and then use that cash flow to, uh, you know, to pay the bills, to do all the things so you can quit your job and, and get creative. Consult with some people around you, show up in Breakfast with Champions and ask the questions and find one or two ways to increase your cash flow outside of maybe where your business is right now. Uh, so I show network marketers how to, how to use tools how to, how to sell affiliate tools, affiliate marketing. There's a thousand different affiliate marketing uh, cash flow generators. You can you can uh, throw Amazon links up in front of your videos. So there's so many different ways to increase your cash flow. Get creative. You might find one little thing that uh, is enough cash flow for you to quit your job way way sooner. I love it. We got 11 more minutes well, to go. You just put that kid to work, man. <laughs> yeah. Put kid to work, dude. Double, double, double up your income right there. Freeloaders. Yeah. I future speaker there. I was like, woo, he's trading them young. <laughs> Real quick, Ramon. <laughs> I, would, I would say this, man. Pressure <laughs> is a privilege. Don't mm. lean away from it. Mm. Um, you know, wow, wow. many, many people look at it and say, I can't. Uh, don't be your own judge when it comes mm. to that stuff. Get a mentor that's going to keep you straight. You will lie to yourself. You can't lie to somebody that's a high performance mentor. They will it. figure you out. I love it. Brian Hess, thank you. Glenn Lundy, is this uh, similar? This is a preview of Breakfast with Champions Roundtable. What's the new offer that was launched today? Um, circle. Yeah, the that's Champion circle. circle. Is this a preview of it? I mean, people can have access. This is kind of not it. I don't know exactly how to roll out, but isn't this kind of it? Like a preview of it? No, this, like this, this, this is very much um, what it'll look like in the champion circle. Wow. And we bring together uh, amazing experts from all around the world. Uh, the only wow. difference would be right now your audience can send in a little sure. uh, question, whereas they'll actually be able to jump in and, and we can we can dive into their business. You know, like Nate was saying earlier, he's like, I don't know exactly what type of business they're in. We like, we can ask those questions, right? What is your business? Where are you at? What is your revenue? What are you doing? That way we can really dive in and extract and, and help people level up. So, yeah, we're super excited about that. 
Um, there's there's room, there's additional seats at the table. So if anyone is, wants to be a part of that, they can go to uh, championscircle.live, championscircle.live, and they can come join uh, that launch. It launches next Monday. Super excited about it. I love it. Absolutely. Another question came up. We got nine more minutes to go. Uh, I will be here a bit longer, but I want to expect all these superhumans, as Glenn Lundy says, time. How do I get out of my own way? Ask Andrew McEwen. And we do this limited. Who thinks they have a good answer for Andrew? How do I get? At, please, Glenn Lundy, all yours, brother. Go. First thing I'll say is um, move. <laughs> you want to get out of your own way? Move, dude. Like, move. I see too many people sitting on the couch watching Netflix saying I can't get out of my own way. Get your friends up and move, right? I want to start there. It takes action, man. And then the second thing I want to share is a little trick like this. Can you see this on my phone right here? What does it say? Can you read it? Stop hiding on hiding the margins. On margins. Oh. Yeah. It says stop hiding in the margins. So I was on a call with, um, and Brian mentioned this a bit ago, like getting getting people in your life that'll really freaking punch you in the face every once in a while, yeah. right? Because uh, I guarantee you get punched in the face, you'll move. You have, you have no choice, right? Unless you're like Tyson or somebody like that, right? But I was on a call with Bill Hauser and um, Bill Hauser, uh, is a is a beast, and I was talking to him about my business. And uh, on the automotive side of my business, we have very little um, overhead, right? Like it's a it's a it's a consulting thing, so there's not a whole lot of expense structure. And my consulting business has been relatively flat for the last like six months or so. We have, we haven't added as many dealers as we were when we were first starting. And I said, Bill, you know, I, I haven't been adding as many dealers. What do you think? You know. Um, you know, what am I doing? And, and he said, bro, you got to get out of your own way. I said, what are you, I said, what are you talking about? He said, dude, your margins are so huge that you're just, you're just comfortable. You're, you're hiding in the margins. You don't have to go add new dealers, right? Because you're, because your expense structure is so profitable. He's like, dude, you got to get out of your way. You got to start freaking flipping that money, spending that money, getting rid of those cushions, getting uncomfortable, putting your back up against the wall. Right. All of those things. And so a, a tip to Andrew, I believe it was, is mm -hmm. get some advice from somebody who cares about you enough to punch you in the face. Take that advice and stick it right there on your dang cell phone where you're scrolling on Facebook every day so that it smacks you in the face. I see that 500 times a day. Stop hiding in the margins. Stop hiding in the margins. And it gets me moving. Yes, sir. All Brian Hess knows. What's all up. of my goals are on my lock screen of my phone. Wow. Every single one of them. My okay. too. Up a level my world. Well. Wow. Yeah, my life board is the first thing that I see on it. And I think the other thing that's important is, you know, yeah. take the emotion out of it. Like that drives me crazy when people are telling me about how they feel. I don't care how you feel. Do it, right? Don't wait to feel like you want to. Don't wait oh, yeah. for some feeling. Don't <laughs> wait for, is this right? Don't, we don't care, right? Your business yeah. doesn't care how you feel. Money doesn't care how you feel. They're all resources and tools. Start, tra treat it like a tool. That's it. Just you got to do it. And that's what happens. People wait because they're waiting for some awakening, you know, mm -hmm. some secret. No, the secret is to move. Even if you start moving in the wrong direction, life will give you that information and you'll pivot and go there. But you, if you're not moving, you're just slowing a slow death. That's what you're, yeah. you're dying and nobody's told you. Yeah. The only reason you're not moving is, is fear. It's fear based. It's the fear of failure. It's the fear of being embarrassed or it's uh, arrogance. I mean, at the end of the day, the only reason any of us never jumped was the uncertainty of where the leap would land or the disbelief that we could land it. I mean, that's it. And so, like, you know, right over here to, to my left, your, I guess you're right, I don't know, is about five pages of chip crap that I've got to turn into the marketing strategy for, for Breakfast with Champions, right? And, and it looks crazy to me and overwhelming and enormous. And if I didn't have someone like Glenn Lundy who said, yeah, but that crap's been in my head for years. And, and, and Brad, we need to execute now. So I'm, I'm tabbing you. I'm, ta I'm tapping you in and saying, let's execute. And it's the, same, it's the same goals that we had at Spark. It was, hey, dude, it's, it's time to execute. Let me, let me tell you the number one thing I really, I really fear more than anything um, so I don't remember the name of the, of the young man that asked that question, Andrew. but Andrew, thank you. Um, God, you're so good at this, Ramon. Um, it's 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 simply this, brother. 
you know, the one thing I fear most of all is my kids seeing someone who didn't try. Mm-hmm. That's good. I'm, o- I'm okay if my kids see me fail. You know, the Hall of Fame is filled with people who strike out seven times out of ten. So There's nobody that. in the Hall of Fame who didn't get in a bat. Nobody. <laughs> nobody. And so I'm going to. I'm going to, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to swing and I'm going to swing for the fences. And so I think the big Ramon, we talked about this earlier, move or God move me. And I'm going to walk in, in the direction I believe is best until I trip and fall. And then I'm going to fail better later. And so that I, I would think whatever it is that's holding you back, you know what it is. You can name it, name it. Don't put it on your home screen. Cause it's what you're afraid of walk away from it and put what you're, what you're most desire right there, man. Brad, I love that. One more question. I do want to respect three minutes to go. We will try to end right at eight 30. Probably won't be impossible. This will be the last question. I'll be here for 30 more minutes, but I want to let these amazing people go back to what they have to do. How, and by the way, Amelia, I wasn't making up those comments about pit bulls and skirts. That was all from your fans. Um, that was for Glenn. <laughs> have any of you had to hit the stop button to attend a family struggle? What was for me? Were you able to jump back into the <laughs> daily hustle after that? <laughs> who wants to tackle that one? All or one or two, whoever it is. Who wants to stop, stop button to attend a family struggle? Like your business is going, but you got to put it on pause because something happened with the family and you had to move on. Uh, I mean, I'll go. I mean, if you want to go right into the, like, the down and the deep, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, my mother committed suicide, my older brother committed suicide, and my goddaughter committed suicide. And each of those were, I don't know, soul-stopping, Sure. right? And so what I had to come into full awareness is not is me not doing my work here. The work that I was put here to do is even a greater pain than that. And so, yes, grieving has to happen. And yes, your family needs you, but your purpose, your God-given purpose Mm. is bigger than all of it. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. Highest and best use, right? So I always, like Glenn says, I really feel deep in my, what is that calling when I stand before God and he says, did you do what I put you there to do? I want with every part of my being to say, I tried, I did my very best and I wasn't distracted by the monstrous things that you threw at me. Yeah. Thank you, Amelia. So true. What I'd like to do now, if maybe Brian... Brad and Nate, give a short closing comment here. Glenn, if you don't mind, close us out. This has been a great evening. Amelia, thank you for that. Brian, last comments, Brad, Nate, and then Glenn. I'm just honored. Wow, what a panel. Wow, what a panel. Brian, please, one or two tips, close us out. uh, Thank you to you, Ramon, for having us. And uh, to everybody out there, man, don't don't sleep on your dreams, man. Everybody has them within them. And, uh, you know, the scarier it is, the bigger the bigger draw you should have to go chase it. And uh, that's, that's my advice. Don't sit around. Don't waste a day. You never know. I love it. Brad Caldwell. Talk to us, brother. Man, I golly, brother. I think um, I think it, it's so, so many great questions. I think, man, know your non-negotiables. It's, it's so much better to trip when you're alone than to trip when people trust you mm. in, in the journey. You know, now that now that Spark has a team, and now that I'm 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 partnered with, you know, I mean, I, I'm 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 playing in, in deeper waters than I've ever swam in before. And you know, four or five months ago, man, my mom had a stroke. Right about the time Sarah asked me to speak at something called the Breakfast with Champions Consortium, and oh, I put my notes in my bag, but I packed my bag, trusting that the last two and a half years of my solo entrepreneur life, I had done the work. I was ready. I could execute. If I got eight minutes, 20 minutes, if I got to speak in between Dominique and Danelle and right before Amelia and Glenn over in the corner trying to figure out who I am, I can execute. I'm going to execute, but I'm going to, I'm going to be true to who I am. Know who you are, friend. It's wonderful to be an entrepreneur. Um, it's better to know who you are as a man or a woman. 
I think that would be it, brother. Brad, thank you so much. Nate Forrest, talk to us. Thank you, Brad. Nat, uh, Nate, talk to us. Yeah. Uh, know you. That's so big. Know who you are. And I'm wearing this T-shirt that says, believe in yourself, be you. So believe in you and what's on your heart right now, whatever God's calling you to do, just take the step that's in front of you. Um, sometimes it gets confusing, confusing and murky because Glenn's doing this and he's doing big things and Adelia's doing big things. Well, I want to be 13 steps down the road, but just do what's in front of you and maybe add one step each day. Go all in on yourself, what you know you can do right now and what God's calling you to do because the journey of 5,000 steps is just taking one step at a time. And when it comes to marketing, just understand that you might have the best product in the world. You might have, you know, the solution that people need, but it doesn't matter because solutions don't make you money. Products don't make you money. It's the marketing and how you share that message. So get out there. We're talking about social media. Get out there and share your story, your message. And it's how you uh, transfer belief patterns in other people's minds and hearts mm. that will ultimately lead to them buying, uh, seeing you as the solution. So uh, don't be afraid to make some noise out there, guys, and uh, go all in on yourself. Wow. Love it, Nate. Uh, Glenn Lundy, uh, visionary founder of Rex with Champions, please bring us home. Last closing thoughts for tonight. And I really appreciate all of y'all's times. Two things I'll say. One, there is no more valuable capital than relationship capital. Mm. The second thing that I'll share is when you see the green light, step on the gas. Mm. We're right now in a crazy season with Breakfast with Champions. We saw a green light this weekend. We stepped on gas. But luckily for me, I followed rule number one. And rule number one is that there is no stronger capital than relationship capital. And so Sunday, I was like, green light, go. Monday, I woke up and said, holy crap. I mean, I'm, somebody done threw me in a 12 feet of water. And I don't know how to swim. I'm black. Black folks can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and you have been the guy who ran marketing. And, and then I called Brian Hess. And I called my Amelia. And I called Danelle. And I called Brian Benstock. And I called David Meltzer. And I called... Uh, Judge Graham, right? I called these people that have been in my life over the last four or five years that have supported Rise and Grind that I know I can trust will punch me in the face if I need it. They'll, 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 they'll never slow me down. They'll never slow me down. Get around people that'll never slow you down. Um, these people will never, will, like the people I just mentioned, will never slow you down but they might throw a helmet on you because you're about to go through a brick wall and they're going to make sure you don't, they gonna make sure you don't puncture. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So that, that would be the two things that I say, you know, is, is when you've seen those green lights, you got to step on the gas, but make sure you have a security blanket in your relationships of people that'll be there for you as you are, uh, as you go plowing through brick walls. Wow. 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 Glenn Lundy, yeah. Nate Forrest, Brad Caldwell, Brian Hess, and Amelia Antonetti. Thank you for joining me today. You all are released back to your lives. I'm so grateful you spent time with me today. Thank you so much. Brian Hess, good night. Brad, Amelia, thank you. Hey, everybody. Again, this is the Survive and Thrive Growth Summit. We have about 20 minutes to go, 21 more minutes to go, I believe. Team, you can chat me in the back if y'all are tired and want to go, but I got 21 minutes to go. Uh, and we're going to end it with taking some more questions. I am so glad. Wow. Glenn Lundy, Amelia, Brad, Nate, and uh, Glenn uh, joined us today. And Brian Hassan, that was so much fun. All right. So let's get to the questions, team. I can bring these up. I'm just going to do this one by one, I believe. And we're going to have some fun. With working a full-time job that I don't like and being at a retirement age, how do I organize my days to be more productive in business? Wow, 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 wow. I know that feeling. I worked full-time at the United Nations until I was fired. I worked there for many, many years, building two companies. As you all know, I've started four companies, sold two companies. No, they haven't been billion-dollar empires, but I can definitely build a company to several hundred thousand dollars or more in revenue, and I've done it several times. So here's what I would say. Um, to organize your day, A, wake up earlier, as Glenn Lundy says. Two, definitely use productive software. Three, you have to prioritize. Four, you have to be able to say 
No, that's it. You have your full-time day job, which is providing you all of your income. That is most important. That is very important. So make sure you don't let that go until you're ready. And then your side business, you only can bite off what you can chew and take what you can handle. So that's my two cents on that. Moving back up is what I suggest you do. Moving up to the next one. Let's see. What's a great company that can manage multiple social media accounts, create posts and schedule without breaking the bank? That's a great question. And that was by Satoria Low Heart Matters Marketing. Thank you for the question. Listen, there's a number of great tools that work. Agora Pulse, Buffer, uh, Zoho CRM, and I could list many, many more. TweetDeck, I think, is still around. So there's a number of tools that can help you with multiple uh, social posting. Um, uh, CoSchedule is another tool. So several tools you can use for sure. And uh, some of them are very, very low cost. Satoria, great question. And feel free to post that more on Smart Hustle Nation to get more ideas. Well, what is your best advice for transitioning from solopreneurship? We answered that question. Awesome. What is the most difficult obstacle that you had to overcome to move your business forward? That's a great question. I think the most difficult obstacle I've had to do in the last few years is one, the finance is a smart hustle. I've been following profit first and I've had to have direct alignment to the revenue generated and what return that's getting back to me. That was upside down for many years. That's why I was in a lot of debt, losing a lot of money until I right-sided that. Now we're a profitable company by God's grace doing okay. Second of all, I was selling Ramon as the product for many, many years, which is okay, but I've tweaked that to offering services that are more comprehensive for our base, such as Grow Your Solo. So definitely you all want to check out Grow Your Solo uh, so we can pour more into you in the Smart Hustle community. Another question comes in, what is the key way to attract clients in freelancing business more so what is the best thing to do when things slow down without clients? Well, first of all, what do you do when things slow down? Don't let them slow down. This is for sure. And one of the things that I do in my business, I'm a small business owner. I make sure I reach out to clients all the time. That's one. So my face, my name, my services are in the forefront of their brain when they have a need. Point number two, I produce so much content. If you're in the right market segment, you can't help seeing Ramon. So I have the large tech brands reaching out to Ramon all the time to do a variety of things. So my my funnel is always filled by God's grace. What is the key thing to attract clients in a freelancing business? Do great work. Do great work. And I do suggest you check out Seth Godin's course about freelancing. But if you're a freelancer, that means you only have a few set of clients that you can work with at any one time. So if you want to attract more clients like that, do great work and telegraph what you're doing to the world. Hey, my name is Becky. I just crafted a great handcrafted pen for... Jane Doe, tell everybody what you're doing. You got to be a little bit of self-promotional. It's very, very important. What are the easiest automation tools to use for a small company? Love the question by Melinda Majube, BJM Speech Language Therapy. Thank you for asking that. What is the easiest automation tools? You'll find one question I don't like, but I'm going to answer it. I don't like questions that are absolute. There's no such thing as a tool that's easiest, and there's no such thing as a tool that's cheapest. It really all depends what tool is best for you. Some people, you need to use Kajabi. You need to use ClickFunnels. You need to use WordPress. Listen, I've used all those tools. It really depends on what your needs are, what works for you. But I will give you a few automation marketing tools that could work for your business. One is Keep, K-E-A-P, Keep. That's a great tool I use. They've done some sponsorship with Smart Hustle. We have a relationship with them. So I personally like Keep. But there's a number of other tools you can use that may work for your business. And if you post that on Smart Hustle Nation, I'll provide you with a whole list of tools that you may want to use. But one I use is Keep. Their heart beats small business success. Next question comes in as we have 20 more minutes to go. Tips for introducing new inventions to products to companies for licensing. Love the question, Kimberly Walker, Skylight Home Decor. Few things I can think of mind. One, I recently or some years spoke at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office in Washington, D.C. I spoke at their big, 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 big conference. So the USPTO is a great source of information like that. Um, you know who's the former boxer who has like the waffle making machine, black guy with shaved head, George Foreman, that's who it is. He is related to a company, I believe, that does something like that, Invent Tech, Inventor something, you can Google it. And his company helps you license your products. I know that... Um, the Kevin Harrington, the former shark on Shark Tank, he has a company that does things like that as well. But Kimberly, if you post that in Smart Hustle Nation, I will do my best to provide that guidance to you. 
Woo! We got 19 more minutes to go. Tips for selling real estate with no money by Will Wagner, Citywide Transportation of Syracuse. Well, I highly suggest that you look at a video that Grant Cardone did. It's about 30 million hours long, but it's really, really good about some tips he said. Now, I'm not a real estate expert, by the way. I'm just answering questions as best I can from things I've learned. I don't know if it's good to uh, sell real estate with zero money. But what Grant Gardone talks about is that if you have $5,000, that means you could get a loan for $25,000. Now you have $30,000, and now you can invest in that to make money back. But you got to be careful. Real estate can be very tricky, but that's my two cents, what I'd say about that. And by the way, I'm a new investor in Cardone Capital, my first real estate investment. I invested money with that, Cardone Capital, so you may want to check that out. Key items you don't want to miss in the start by Adil Rizvi, Global Tears. Great question. Key items you don't want to miss in the start. I'm going to assume this means in the start of your business. Well, one, is your business legal? Have you started it on the right step? Two, do you have a separate bank account? Three, are you focused on your finances and cash flow and bringing in the money? Four, are you focused on your marketing, being very, 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 very clear on who you're serving and who you're not serving? And five, do you have the right team that can help you grow your business? As I said, I started four companies, sold two companies, made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes in business, and I have a lot to learn. But that's one thing I'm only recently learning as we grow the Smart Hustle team. And as I must say, I've learned from others in Breakfast with Champions is those few things. Because when you're starting, there's a lot of things you don't know. But as Dave Ramsey says in his beautiful Southern accent, we don't fire employees when they make non-fatal errors. But we don't like them to make fatal errors. So that's what Dave Ramsey says. So key items you don't want to miss in the start uh, for sure. Thank you for that question. I want to know how to gain more audience that would be interested in my services. I render Yudak Edek of Ken Premier Logistics LTD. Awesome. So the question you're asking is, how do you get more attention? There's a company called Blend Tech. They're a blender company. They blend all kinds of crap, bricks, Corvettes, iPhones, all kinds of things. They get a lot of attention. There's a lot of things I can tell you, but one thing you're trying to do, if you want to get more people uh, interested in your services, take your services and see how you can integrate it in an interesting way. Let's say you're a Broadway singer. Maybe you go to all the historic districts in your town and sing, and no! or whatever it may be. You feel me? So see how you take your products and services and blend them into something else. But that's a great, great question. And I do encourage you to um, uh, a follow up with us on Smart Hustle Nation. Let me look to the comments here real quick. Love the rapid fire. Thank you so much. Great, 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 great. Any other questions you have, by the way, feel free. And we're going to put them in there. Our team can put them in there. Hootsuite, a little humor. Good, 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 good. Okay, good. I'm glad that this is useful for you as I continue to answer the questions. All right. So um, how do you stay in the mindset of your vision? Damien Gullion says this, Cowtown Insulation. Ooh, the mindset, mindset, mindset. I gave a talk one day at South by Southwest about entrepreneurial depression, sharing my story of wanting to commit suicide and being very depressed for a number of years. Mindset is essential. It's everything. I'm going to recommend one book to you. John Acoff is a Nashville, Tennessee author, and he has a book called Sound Tracks. I highly suggest you get this book. It's called Sound Tracks. It talks about what are the things that are in your mind that are blocking you from success. Soundtrack's a great book which can help you with the mindset because oftentimes the mindset that we have, the negative mindset we have, is because we have soundtracks playing in our mind. We have negative thoughts playing in our mind. So how can we have the right mindset if we have the wrong input? I'm going to tell you this much. One thing that's elevated my game is breakfast with champions. You can't not have a good mindset if you're hanging around 80 hosts and thousands of people every single day pouring positive thoughts into you. So hang out with the right people if you want to have a better mindset. What a great, great question. How to market for more customers digitally by Amen. Thank you for the question. So how can you be a better digital marketer? Well, we've talked a lot about that, but I'm going to repeat it. Get close to your customers and know really, really, really who you're serving and then just talk their language. That's it. If you're talking to 60-year-old retired black guys who shave their head and wear glasses, talk in their language whatever language that is. But you feel what I'm saying? That's how you become a better marketer. As um, 
Ryan Dice said, I was in recently at his traffic and conversion conference in San Diego. He said, the best way to be a digital marketer is just to do good marketing. Not being cute with it, but it's not about digital marketing. It's about being just a good marketer, going back to old school thoughts, old school opinions. Look in here in the comments. Love soundtracks. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Tara, so much. I appreciate that. Gene asked, Ramon, what is your greatest takeaway from tonight's amazing event? Ooh, wow. I'm going to jump to that question right now because we're having some questions coming in live. Um, listen, I, I'm glad I could do it for five hours. I was glad that people showed up for all hours. It was encouraging, Gene, to see you and Tara and Lisa and Regina and so many others that were there and uplifting me as I did it. So that was my big takeaway. I was just glad to do it and serve. And so looking at some of the comments, Brian Hess. Oh, Brian, I appreciate you, brother. Okay, Brian Hess is offering to help others. I'm going to connect you all to him socially. He has a show every day, and he may answer some of these questions. Do you have any tips on things to look for when seeking a mentor? Mentorship is very important. One thing I can say you want people who are compatible with you, but definitely who tell you like it is. So mentorship for sure is very important. We are on Team Ramon. Oh, Regina, you can make me cry. Thank you so much, Regina. Receive and appreciate it. All right, let's get back to some of these questions. Uh, yes, how do you market with customer digitally? Moving on here, question. How do you keep the passion going for the work? Lori Grace says that Dreamtime Property Solutions. Let me tell you what keeps my passion. And I talked about this earlier. There's things I'm running from. I don't want to ever have to go back to a regular nine to five job. I like the independence of working for myself. What am I running to? I wake up every day thinking about four things as far as money is concerned. How do I make a little bit more money for today? Because I want to be at a better place and earn some more money for today. Two, how do I save up more money for retirement? I don't know about investing. I didn't learn that growing up. My father didn't go to a golf golf club, golf course, country club. I didn't learn anything about money. I didn't know about Dave Ramsey. Now I'm only learning that. So saving for retirement, saving for my children, and I want to save up money to give money away to others. So how do I keep my passion? That's how I keep my passion. I know what I'm driving towards and I know what I'm running from. Lori, thank you so much for the question. How do I grow my team and establish systems for my team to run without me? And, and Trinetta talks about that and Trinetta Tillman. I love the question about teams because I'm pretty proud of the team we have at Smart Hustle. I have a team of, in total, I think I've said about 10, but it's fractional people whose skills and talents I can use as I need them. Now there's Jamie, my executive assistant, and uh, um, online business manager who helps in a for me in a fuller time capacity. There's Coast Satine, our social media manager. And then we have Sandeep who takes care of editorial. So that's our core team of three. And then for things like this, as I want to grow and expand, I got Texie Talk, our Liz King events. That's Liz Caruso and Jennifer. I can reach out to them. I got Deborah who does some special projects with clients. So that's how I deal with my team. And this is how do I grow my team? You may not need to grow your team. What you may need to use to do though is use your team effectively. So it's not always team growth. It's how do you use them effectively? How do you build audience with minimum ad spend? Paul Sabaj asked that, hey, Paul, retarget, 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 retarget. If people who are already in your funnel who know, like, and trust you, how can you reach out to them? Because the, the trust index is already high. All right, keep moving on here. How do you find that perfect brand name, Dinesh Kaku? Let's bargain. I don't think you find a perfect brand name. I think the perfect brand name finds you. When I was launching Smart Hustle about six years ago now in 2015, I knew I wanted something with the word hustle into it. I was thinking and thinking, and it came to me, Smart Hustle. So sometimes I get what you mean, but another thing to find the perfect brand name is maybe make changes or think of what others are doing. Ask your audience. Think of what people are always saying. Are they always saying, Dinesh the Firecracker, Dinesh the Firecracker? Maybe that should be the company, Dinesh the Firecracker.com. Who knows? It's 8.50. We got 10 minutes to go. How do you do it all? Mary Lynn Fernu says that. Mary Lynn, guess what? You just can't do it all. It's impossible. You cannot do it all, but you can scale yourself. And I'll tell you how I scale myself. Few things I do very well. One, I say no easily. I have no problem saying no. Or I can't do it now. I'll do it later. Two, I highly prioritize. Today, there was an issue at Breakfast with Champions. Something needed to be done in the back end. I stayed in this seat for about four or five hours from 5 a.m. to 11, helping with something in the back end. And I canceled everything else because BWC is that important to me, the growth of this company. And it's not even my company. I'm one of 80 hosts who are building it. If you know what I mean, it's important to me. So you have to prioritize. Three, get drilled down into your email. 
Know your email code. Prioritize it. Filter it. Move things out. For your calendar, Jamie Frayer taught me that, how to block time on calendar. I'm a calendar ninja. Some days I can look and I can watch Netflix all day because my calendar tweaked that way. Not quite like that, but calendar. So that's how you, quote unquote, do it all by focusing on what you love, prioritizing, but calendaring and inboxing. Those are my go-to. And I train people to communicate with me how I want to be communicated. I get a lot of DMs. But when something comes to it's very important, I say, listen, this is important to me. Can you please email me? Because for me, my best communication tool is email because I've honed it to a science. It's filtered. I have a zero inbox policy. Everything else is low priority. DMs, WhatsApp and all this, but email. But I recognize also that many people, email is not their strength. I got some friends, they got 10,000 unread emails in their inbox. That's just not me. So some people I know also like text. One person I'm working with, we're partnering on something. She only does text. And I text her, no problem at all. So how do you do it all? You really can't do it all, but you can sure pretend to make people think you're doing it all. How do I take my 25 years of content and help it work for me? Regina Carey asked that. Regina, great question. Here's my guess. Half of the content you have is probably worthless. Sorry, that's just how it probably is. Meaning you wrote something 25 years ago that said 10 ways to use MySpace to grow your business. Well, MySpace is gone. The other half maybe is usable. Now, if it's things like how to train your child, 25 years of content about child training, marriage, or how to cut your hair, whatever it is, that could be useful. One, turn it to a book. Two, turn it to a podcast. Three, put it to a blog. Four, put it into a tabletop book. Five, make it into a TV show. Six, put it into a video series. So a lot of things you can do with content. Let me check the chats that are going on. All right, indeed. Thank you for that, Jennifer, for sure. Keep me on track. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes. Savvy Seth says, Ramon, your team did an awesome job. They're a rock star team. They are indeed. Somebody said, oh, thank you for this. Well done. And so I really appreciate the kind words. We try our best to serve you all indeed. Eight more minutes to go. How do I successfully market my children's picture book? You know what? One of the best ways to do that, to have a reading for your book every day. Hi, everybody. My name is Rhonda. Welcome to Rhonda's Picture Book. Today, we're going to read the story of Corey. Do that every day, every day at nine o'clock and see how that is. Bring it to Clubhouse. Remember, you're not selling the book to the kids. You're selling the book to the parents. Seven more minutes. How do I make my business profitable? Read Mike McCallowitz's book, Profit First. End of story. Read Mike McCallowitz's book, Profit First. How do I get to serve more people needing my expertise? George Janice says that reset to reboot coaching. Love it. The way to serve more people reading your expertise, get my friend um, Marcus Sheridan's book, They Ask You Answer. If you answer every question that people had, you'll begin to serve more people because they will see you as a source of knowledge. How do I get in my own way? We answered that our question already. How do I find prospective customers who are in the $1 to $20 million revenue range? That's a great question. If you're looking for places like that where there's a higher level of revenue range for small for businesses, $1 to $20 million in revenue, EO, entrepreneur organization, YPO is another one, Vistage is another, NABO is another. There's many organizations who have businesses focused on the higher dollar range of business. So you may want to check out those places. How do I discover my own voice? That's a great question. And I believe a business coach can probably help you. One person I suggest, Lolita. Lolita with a T, L-O-L-I-T-A. She's part of the Breakfast of the Champions community. Look her up, Lolita. Tell her I said to go see her. She's one person who can help you find that voice that's inside that's breaking to get out. How can you integrate systems and design thinking into your program? Barry Shiat talks about that. Design thinking. The best way to implement design thinking into your business is to see Ram Castillo. Ram Castillo one of our hosts on Breakfast of Champions, he's all about design thinking. See, Ram Castillo, great guy about design thinking. How can one keep oneself motivated when running a solo business? You know what? It's hard to run a solo business. And I highly suggest, Sandeep, get my book, Grow Your Solo, Grow Your Solo, Grow Your Solo, if you want help growing your solo business. It's not hard. It's not easy. But one thing you can do, surround yourself with people who can champion you on to excellence. How can I market inexpensively? Many things you can do. Social media has given you much of the tools you need to do that to market yourself inexpensively. We got three more questions here. How did you come up with the name Smart Hustle? Tracy, great question. I knew I wanted hustle in it. 
because I sold smallbiztechnology.com. And I was looking around. Somehow I came across Smart Hustle. I got my American Express card. I think I paid seven dollars to $15,000 for it. Forgot what it was. I paid it. I bought it. And we have a company. That's how I came up with it. Two more questions to go. How do I package and monetize a library of self-growth, self-development, health information obtained from my personal life journey? Ooh, I love that question. We have on Breakfast with the Champions an amazing person who writes books. Her name is Patricia Wooster. Patricia Wooster. Patricia Wooster. She's great at books. That's how I suggest if you have all this knowledge, turn it to a book, turn it to a podcast, turn it to a video, turn it to a blog series. That's how I suggest you monetize it. Last question. As a one-man shop with limited budget, how can I get marketing sales moving ahead to get the business going? If you're literally a one-person business and you have no money, start doing Instagram videos once a day or TikTok, whatever you want. Once a day, do videos and talk to your core customer and partner with others to share those out in your local, local community. All right, let's see what else here. Oh, yeah, so again, last thing I'll say here, Lolita Walker for sure is, Thank you all for being here tonight. We're launching Grow Your Solo. Grow Your Solo. It's a book. It's an audio experience. It's getting connected to Ramon. It's a workbook. I beg you and ask you to consider checking out Grow Your Solo at growyoursolo.com. We can help you grow your solo business. With that, I'm going to turn it over to our Rockstar Ops team in the back so we can go out on a high note. I'm Ramon Ray, and thank you so much for joining us tonight.